Once in a generation, the time has come. A fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr., Terence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up! Beat him up! Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. Here's the Corona tail the tape for our main event. Spence is 26 years old. Algeri is 32. They're almost identical in height and reach. Spence is putting his perfect 19-0 record on the line. Let's go to arena announcer Ray Flores for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event live on NBC. Ten rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner. We're in the black and the neon yellow. His professional record, 21 wins. Eight of those by way of knockout against two losses. But in out of Huntington, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Algieri. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. We're in the black and the gold. As professional, perfect 19 wins. 16 of those coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of DeSoto, Texas. He is the 2012 United States Olympian, Errol The Truth Spence Jr. Okay, guys, you've already received your pre-bout instructions. I want a clean fight, obey my commands at all times, and most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. And here we go. Errol Spitz is undefeated. Member of that 2012 Olympic team. This is his biggest test. He told us that yesterday. Chris Algieri feels he's been overlooked. He won his biggest fight right here. He won a title in this arena. This is the first time that Spence has ever faced a former champ. And here we go with round one scheduled for down. And Kenny, for all those people that have been begging for Errol Spence to step up, well, here it is. He's got Chris Algeria in front of him, former world champion, a guy who fought Manny Pacquiao, also had a very competitive fight with Amir Khan as well. And uh, this is going to be a nice test for Spence tonight. Only two losses for Algeria, Pacquiao and Khan. Very, very good fighters. Manny Pacquiao, obviously, in a class of his own. Hall of Fame fighter, Amir Khan. Multiple weight bracket world champion. So, we're going to learn a lot about Errol Spence in this fight with Chris Algeria. Because Algeria's very tough, very disciplined, but a pretty good boxer. June 2014, he defeated Ruslan Kravotnikov to take the super lightweight title. It was considered the upset of the year in 2014. Turned things around for Algeria. More of a name, and that landed him eventually the Pacquiao fight. He has four of his last five fights have been here in the Barclays Center, so he's right at home. It was a great fight, the fight with Pavindikov. Algeria had a lot of obstacles early on. He got knocked down twice in that first round, was almost out of the fight, but boxed his way in the fight and, uh, you know, surprised a lot of people when he had advantages on the inside with the uh, feared Rusev Pavindikov. He was able to land those uppercuts, and uh, Chris has short punches on the inside. It's a pretty nice footwork, uh, spinning back to the middle of the ring again. Jerry, a former two-time world kickboxing champion. Good body shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. And that's something we talked to us that he was going to do. He's going to attack the body. He's not just, you know, his trainer told us something very interesting. I said, he's fought Manny Pacquiao, he's fought a near call. Stop, 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 stop. Good work by Errol there in the clinch, but his trainer said, you know, Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan aren't as fundamentally sound as my guy is, and uh, I kind of agree with him, Kenny. Well, Spence, last year the PBC Rising Star of the Year. Great performances throughout. He has been here as one in this arena. We saw him do it last April against Samuel Marcus.
Good body work by Earl Spence a second ago. Banging both sides of the body. Nice to see that investment here in the first round by Earl. Spence's teammate, Sir Marcus Brown, winning a split decision in the fight just before this. He'll be talking live with Todd Harris in just a few moments right at the end of this round. Curious to see what Marcus has to say about that fight. Some would say it was a controversial split decision victory. Final seconds, round one, Spence and Alex. Order my fight against Terrence Crawford on Showtime pay-per-view now and be ready for fight night. Toughest fight yet and Kalajic people will be taking another look at that kid. He looked impressive tonight. As we go into round two, this one's scheduled for 10. Yeah, I thought he looked more than impressive, Kenny. I was one of the people who thought he definitely won the fight. Uh, Marcus fought a good fight as well, but uh, he's, he's got some things he's got to work on. And, uh, you know, we all do as fighters, but Kalachic was uh, in good form tonight, and I thought he could have done it. Olympic teammate, Errol Spence, getting that first round for Eric got a fish. Yeah, he banged the body nice in that first round, Kenny, both sides, and uh, made it some nice straight left hands to the body as well. Algeri talked yesterday that he did not feel many people had been able to get in and push Spence. And he said, I want him to feel how strong I am. He's going to have to let his hands go for that. He's not able to find Errol too much in this first round. Nice left hand by Algeri. Real nice by Algeri. Got him with that right hook as Errol was coming in to land his own jab. He with the hard left hand there, and that hurt him. And a nice uppercut by Spence. Spence going to work against the ropes. Algeria's hurt here, Kenny. And he got hit with a hard left hand. You see the leverage. It's amazing the leverage that Errol Spence gets on those shots. He really turns his body. And Spence continues to do work against the ropes. Algeria trying to hold on here. Round two, strong showing by Errol Spence. And Chris has got to move his head. He can't continue to take those. That's nice right hand by Chris. That's your move. But Chris has got to make Errol miss. Don't just block those punches because he's able to maintain his balance. Now, Jerry's conditioning is amazing, as well as his toughness. Knocked to the canvas six times by Pacquiao. And hung on to at least get a decision with the distance against one of the all-time greats. That was an amazing fight, Kenny. Did you just see a glimpse of the toughness that Chris Algeri has? He was visibly hurt. And, you know, Errol is a very solid, strong puncher, and he was loading up against those ropes. You can hear the impact of those shots, and, uh, you know, Chris bounces back now like it was nothing. in that last round. You see the nice right hook by Errol Spence in a crushing left hand. I mean, he dished out a severe beating to Chris Algieri in that last round, Kenny, and uh, I'm surprised the composure that Chris was able to maintain. And in the Spence corner, they were saying, way to go, keep it up. As we're going to this round three scheduled for 10. And in the black and gold is the Olympian, Errol Spence, he's yet to lose. See that nice wide stance by Errol, the weight kind of on his back left foot. Always ready for that left hand or that left uppercut. He's getting maximum leverage on every single shot. You see, undefeated Algeria with those two losses to Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan. You see in this round, Algeria starting to assert himself a little more. He can't stay on the back foot and wait for Errol to attack. It's too, uh, too complete of an attack. And he's got to make Errol go to his back foot and go to a plan B. up on most of those punches, but Spence continues to be the aggressive fighter. He's not missing because Spence is going to the body. 
Very intelligent from the young fighter. If he were loading up like that going to the head, Algeria would make him miss, but Spence is investing down the body with uh, really big interest up. Position by Chris on the inside. He's getting his head underneath Errol's head to make sure that Errol can't land any good punches in there. Nice count on the right hook. Nice left hook by Chris, Chris out here. Once again, the action being carried here by Spence, reaching out on Jerry. You see Spence still controlling the action, but Algeria's starting to have some moments here in the third round. Definitely the, not getting the best of him, but he's landed a couple nice counters on the inside. All right, keep your head up. And it's going to be interesting if this fight makes it to the seventh, eighth, ninth round to see the conditioning of Spence. Well, that's what Algeria told us yesterday, BJ. He felt the longer the fight goes on, the stronger he will get, stronger even than Spence. Spence has definitely never been pushed in any of his previous fights, and uh, you know, Chris is a very tough nut to crack as far as breaking him down and getting him out of it. Hall of Famer Manny Pacquiao wasn't able to do it, and uh, if Errol Spence can, it would really make a statement today. Spence again with some nice shots here late. Beautiful body shot. Spence doing some work to that body and work along the ropes. Final seconds of round three. Nice close by Errol Spence Jr. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get $150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet five to instantly get $150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? You're looking at Errol the Truth Spence Jr. The Olympian coming in here with an undefeated record of 19-0, taking on Chris Algieri. He said it was the biggest fight of his career. And so far, he has looked very strong here against Algeria. Certainly a tough and well-conditioned opponent. Yeah, this is came out dominant, Kenny. Digging the body, attacking it. Hasn't given Chris a chance to get into this fight. He's been so complete. In all three rounds, Eric Braskin unofficially scoring it for Spence and going down to Algeria. Five, six, seven, eight, okay? All right. Errol Spence has knocked down Algeria here in the fourth. Remember, though, the Pacquiao fight? Six times he went down, six times he got up in Algeria. I'm going to tell you the difference, Kenny, between Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence. Errol Spence digs the body <laughs> more so than Manny Pacquiao. And uh, that's going to make it tough for Chris to survive if he keeps going down like that. Jerry talked about that yesterday, how he fears the body punches of Spence. He had great respect for him. And then he, now he's feeling the body shots throughout. When you get hurt like that, it's, it's, it's much easier to defend against headshots. Errol is a disciplined body puncher, and he's so heavy-handed down there, too, so it makes it tough. I'm not saying Errol Spence is better than Manny Pacquiao by any means. He's got a long ways to go, but he definitely does get his opponent in trouble and focuses downstairs. That's why he's got 16 knockouts and a 19 wins, Kim. Now Jerry just spins him around along the ropes. Jim Earl's one of those kids that the longer the fight goes, you know, the better the opposition gets. He's going to continue to show why he's dominant and why he's better than, better than the rest. He gets better with time because of the body punch. Look at the eyes of Spence. He's on his back foot. Eyes are wide open, watching everything Algeria does. Waiting for any opening. Great use of his body shots in this fight. And a knockdown here in round four. Spence goes on. Good luck. Jared Kenny has had a very rough round. He dropped, he got hurt, he got put to the blow, and then uh, 
Spence just assaulted him again off those ropes. Spence continuing to control this one. And now thrown down. Now Jerry just throws Spence down. Not a knockdown, a throwdown, maybe out of frustration. It was Spence delivering the big blow in this round. Rocking Chris Algieri and knocking him down. And then before the bell, Algieri throwing him down. Let's take a look at the knockdown in the last round. You see Chris bending down and shooting that left hook. Getting a nice exchange there, but Earl hitting him with the left hand on the top of the head. Very dangerous place. Knocks off your equilibrium. Earl very heavy hit again. And we go back to live action here. This is the fifth round schedule for Ted. Spence trying to stay undefeated. He's in the black and gold. Now, Jerry, basically here at home, he has fought outside of the station New York only one time. Now, last time, and he goes down again. Spence does it again. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, Jerry is wobbly. Not too much more. He twisted his ankle there when he went down. He's not going to be able to take too much more of this. And Spence trying to finish it here. He has a wounded play, and he knows it. And Spence puts him back down, and that's it. That is it. Earl Spence Jr. remains undefeated with the knockout of Chris Algieri. Wow, Kenny. Chris Algieri goes 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao, fights Amir Khan tooth and nail. Errol Spence dissects him, assaults him, and takes him out here in round four. I mean, that was just an impressive, impressive display by Errol Spence as a new face in the 147 pound division. Uh, there's Baby Ivy, six months old. And no doubt, happy for her daddy. Uh, Kenny, I cannot say enough about that. That was a complete, complete performance. I mean, he didn't even have any, any lapses at all during that fight, and he just showed he's ready for anyone in the division. Against the very game at top, Chris Algieri knocked down three times in this fight, two in this round to end it. Wow. Man who's been knocked down six times and kept getting up against Pacquiao, but he couldn't get up against the truth. And you see Chris kind of falling in there, and Errol taking advantage of an off-balance Algieri with the straight left hand. Hits him. Let's take another look at it from a different angle. Coming forward, and then Chris just with his hand down, off balance. Errol always in position to punch because he's got that left foot planted. Hits him with a nice, solid shot. And let's take a look at the lot, last knockdown. Chris is in bad trouble here, and Errol just mixing up his attack. Overhand left, a series of body shots earlier, and Chris just didn't know where to defend himself, Kenny. Uh, Errol had a very complete offensive attack, and uh, very impressive. Winds up, lets it go, and runs his record now to 20-0. 17 wins coming by way of knockout. And his most impressive performance. Amir Khan couldn't do it. Manny Pacquiao couldn't do it. But Errol Spence Jr. could. He deals Chris Algieri the first knockout defeat of his career. A statement victory for Errol Spence Jr. He is now 20 and 0 with 17 knockouts. He is victorious here at the Barclays Center right now. Let's go to Ray Flores, the arena announcer for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, a referee in charge, Benji Estevez, waves off the contest at 48 seconds of the fifth round for your winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, Errol The Truth Spence Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford, and on July 29th, I will be undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Order my fight on Showtime pay-per-view. All right, let's go to the tail of the tape for our main event. Well, in terms of their physicality, the numbers are very similar. Ocampo, of course, is the younger fighter at 22, even though he is already a six-year veteran. But you see that he will weigh more tonight when they weighed in this uh, this evening. Six pounds bigger than Errol Spence. He's hoping maybe that will give him some effort. With the official introductions here once again is Jimmy Lennon, Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Ford Center here at the Star as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Man Down Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime, sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. This bout, our main event, is sanctioned by the IBF. The president, Daryl Peoples, supervisor is Anibal Miramontes. Along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations, the chairman, Mike Aris Mendez, executive director, Brian Francis, combative sports manager, Big Greg Alvarez. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. From Newton, Massachusetts, John Madfis. From Bayamon, Puerto Rico, Cesar Ramos. And from Plano, Texas, Jesse Reyes. We introduce our third man to the ring. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions. Our referee is Lawrence Cole. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters in Frisco, Texas, it's Introducing you first on my left, the challenger fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, trimmed in the colors of the Mexican flag, red, white, and green. Hailing from Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico, he weighed in at 146 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 22 wins, no losses, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making his first attempt at a world title and his U.S. debut. Please welcome the undefeated IBF number three contender, introducing Carlos Chema. opponent across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the colors of the Dallas Cowboys, silver trunks with blue and white trim, fighting out of and representing his hometown of Dallas, Texas. He weighed in at a ready 146 and one half pounds with an undefeated record of 23 wins, no losses. He has 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his homecoming, he is making the second defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a pound for pound great, boxing's pride of Dallas, the reigning, the defending, and the Once again, here's our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, right. Lawrence Cole. All right, gentlemen, went over the rules earlier in the dress room. I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves all the time. Espera Olympia y bueno suerte. Good luck. Touch them up. The referee is Lawrence Cole, scheduled for 12. 147 pound title fight. Errol Spence Jr. Last 10 wins, 13 of his last 14 have come via knockout. 22 year old Carlos Ocampo is 22 0 with 13 wins inside the distance. A prohibitive underdog here tonight. From the star in Frisco, Ford Center, Errol Spence Jr.'s childhood dream has come true. He is defending his claim to the 147 pound crown and is expected to take care of business here tonight against a man who, according to the odds makers and anyone you ask, is 
grossly overmatched. But there's a reason we fight, right, Al Burstein? Well, he's a mandatory challenger. The IBF got him to number three, though some wonder because he hasn't fought a top 20 fighter. But this is his opportunity to make something happen. Early in the fight, he said he wants to try to control the distance with Errol Spence. We'll see if he can do that. Errol trying to creep up on him, but Ocampo reactive so far. I mean, he hasn't landed anything, but at least he's, uh, he's live in there. He's reacting to things Spencer's attempting to do. Ocampo leads with the right hand. He's in the black with white, red, and green of the Mexican flag. Errol Spence Jr., well, if you know, you know. He's uh, wearing the <laughs> his beloved Dallas Cowboys colors, and the Dallas Cowboys have firmly embraced Errol Spence Jr. Again, he grew up wanting to play for America's team was a great football player in high school, but he switched over to the sweet science and was a member of the 2012 U.S. Olympic boxing team. And Ocampo, though, not being swallowed up by the magnitude of the moment, taking the fight to Spence. Landing some very good body punches. And Spence lands some good ones of his own. Spence himself, a great body puncher, has had eight knockdowns with body punches in his career. Spence has seven first round knockouts, but Ocampo sweeping left hook upstairs. He's a right hand and again, maybe, you know, the fact he's so young, just 22 years of age, started his career very young, has never been knocked down, but again, Ocampo has never faced anyone in the same the same environment as a guy like Errol Spence Jr. Yeah, I, don't know left. Long, I don't know how long his fight's going to go, but here in round one, Campos is comporting himself well and is firing back when Spence throws punches at him. Yeah, and I, you know that's, that's what it is, being 22 years old and undefeated. You know, you know no negativity, as I said earlier. And, uh, you know, you have that self-belief, even if it's bliss. You don't know what you don't know. Oh, Campos started at 16. Errol Spence Jr. beats the jab. I like his attitude. You know, whatever winds up here, I, I like the attitude he came out with. Less than 30 seconds left in the first frame. Spence beginning to put the leather on Ocampo, but then was stopped momentarily by a shot from Ocampo. And Spence holding on to the, neutralizing the left arm out of the vision of referee Lawrence Cole and going downstairs with a right hand. Carlos Ocampo saying, I'm not going to go quietly into the good night. I spoke too soon. Gets dropped with one second left in the opening round. Spoke too soon, man. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. And man down. Round one. Errol Spence Jr. doing what he was expected to do. And sending this partisan crowd into an eruption of cheers, making short work of Carlos Ocampo. Here I am wanting to give him the benefit of the doubt, Al. Couldn't survive that final second. The body work that we talked about was what got him. I mentioned eight knockdowns before. This is number nine, and this man stayed down. A lot of love here in Dallas for Errol Spence. Remember, Earl Spence has talked about wanting to face undefeated champion Keith Thurman. Gone on record as saying he would love to face the winner of Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter. We know that Terrence Crawford is now at 147 looking to stake his claim. But Earl Spence Jr. and again, overmatched mandatory challenger. Errol Spence Jr. records his 21st knockout, his eighth first round stoppage. Hey, boxing fans, it's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get $150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to instantly get $150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? 13 of the 16 power uh, connects in the first round were to the body by Errol Spence. That was that last body shot that did in Campos. Spence bodied Ocampo to successfully defend his 147 pound title for the second time. And hopefully this sets up some big fights at welterweight.
back and take a look uh, from several angles at the work to the body that would end this fight. Spence had landed a lot of body punches and only a second left in this round. Oh, and right underneath. The first left really hurt him and then the, the second one sent him down. Shot right underneath the right arm. As Ocampo was trying to come up with his own uppercut, if we get another look at it, you'll see it. that first left lands right as Ocampo's throwing. And when, when you're throwing, you're exhaling. So that body shot that hits you as you're exhaling has that, has that double effect. And that would be the end of this fight. And here again, oh, that was a low blow. <laughs> wow. That one, ended, that one went low. Oh, that one's not, not the but one. But that's Let's not see. the one that put him out. Right there, there's right there. The, yeah, there's you can the see punch it. there. You can see it right there. That one was the one that did him in, and. Uh, Right inside the elbow. Yeah. So Campo was not protecting his own rib, rib cage because he was trying to come with his own shot with the right arm. And Spence punched inside him. And yet a third look to take a look. And this will be even the best angle to see just where that punch landed. Spence pushing him off and ripping down Spence. Right that was a superb body right shot. Yep. And as, I, and as I said, eight times prior to this, fighters have gone down from body shots. And this was the ninth, and this man stayed down. Yeah. Punch right inside that right arm. Well timed shot. Errol Spence Jr.'s body of work exemplified by his body work. I seem to have heard someone say that <laughs> once upon a time. And here in round one, Errol Spence Jr., the lone star, returns successfully as expected and even he said he wanted to get his mandatory challenger out of the way and there's jerry jones the owner of the dallas cowboys to have the support of the owner of his favorite team here's jimmy lennon jr Ladies and uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, at the three minute mark of round number one, a referee in charge, Lawrence Cole, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, boxing's pride of Dallas, and still the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Errol Spence Jr. Truth takes care of business in front of this adoring crowd. Once in a generation, the time has come. A fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up! Beat him up! Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. Julius and Terrence Bud Crawford. See the shots that you need to land. Good shot from Crawford right there, but Ndongo still just a little tight for my taste. And then on the back end, a right hand to the bottom. in two different ways. Punch in between them. Another knockdown score with a vicious body shot. Oh my, what a body shot. Eight, nine, ten. Bud Crawford is the undefeated, undisputed champion of the world. Young fighters out there, that's the benefit of combination punches. It's, it's body punching. Body punching is a lost art in our sport. We got a lot of hit. And again, taking advantage of what was in front of the intellect. I'm Terrence Crawford. Tune in to my fight against Errol Spence Jr. on July 29th, live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Well, the wait is over. It is time for our opening bout of the evening. Isaac Cruz, Diego Magdaleno, 
Let's go down ringside. Here's Mo. Thanks a lot, BC. It is fight night on Fright Night. Let's do the time warp again. Fans are back and in masks on this most unique Halloween night. 12-year pro Diego Magdaleno turned 34 earlier this week, coming off a career-saving victory over Austin Dulé in February. Meanwhile, the 22-year-old Cruz has gone 14-0-1 with 11 knockouts since his only pro loss in his sixth pro fight. In February of this year, he looked good, defeating Thomas Matisse by decision on Showbox. Well, Magdaleno started boxing when he was eight, had 130 amateur fights, including wins against Mikey Garcia and Saddam Ali. And, well, he has come up short in his most high-profile fights to date, dropping title belts to Terry Flanagan and Roman Martinez, in addition to a 2019 TKO loss against current lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez. But Magdaleno saved his career in his last fight, and he is here, ready to show he has a lot left in his proverbial tank. Cruz started boxing when he was eight. He reportedly had 85 amateur fights, turned pro at 16. And yes, just 22 years old, has already had 21 pro bouts. His father and trainer, Isak Sr., his two uncles and grandfather also boxed. In fact, his grandpa, Guillermo, was one of the few to beat Hall of Famer Pepino Cuevas in May of 1973. Take a look at the numbers that Taylor take for this fight. And one of the key numbers to zero in on is the age of Magdaleno. Morrow mentioned uh, that at 34, he thinks he has something more to offer. But how much did that loss to Tifima Lopez take out of him? We're going to find out tonight. And the rules for our fights tonight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. It's time for the official introductions. Here's Hall of Fame ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Alamo Dome here in the beautiful city of San Antonio, Texas. Premier Boxing Champions presents our big nine of action coming away and it's all brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, TGB Promotions, GTD Promotions, Santa Cruz Boxing Club, and Showtime. Sponsored by proper number 12 Irish Whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. And O'Reilly Auto Parts. Order your parts online at O'ReillyAuto.com and get free curbside pickup. This bound of the ring is sanctioned by the IBF. The president is Daryl Peoples. Introducing at this time our judges all from the state of Texas. Joel Elizondo, Ellis Johnson, and Rafael Ramos. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Mark Calloway. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for an IBF lightweight world title eliminator. Introducing you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, hailing from Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at 134 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 32 wins, three losses, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former world title challenger and veteran standout contender, introducing Diego Tufuego. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at a trim ready by 32 pounds. His record stands at 19 wins, one loss and one draw, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the IBF number six lightweight world contender and known as Mini Tyson, introducing Isak. Get a referee in charge, Mark Calloway, now to give instructions. 
Okay, gentlemen, we've already gone over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Escúchame todo el tiempo, okay? Aquí, golpes aquí para arriba está bien. Golpes, these are a little high. Golpes right here, para arriba está bien, okay? Chuck and want this. Buena suerte. Con inteligencia, papá. Referee Mark Callow Oy, a 13 year veteran working his 294th professional bout, kicking off this four fight fiesta on pay per view from the Bucks. Alamo Dome. Isak Cruz in the black and gold trunks, Diego Magdaleno, red with silver trim. And boy, that name, Diego Tufuego Magdaleno, rolls right off the tongue. He's hoping these punches will roll right off his body. And this is exactly where we thought this, this match would be. Cruz. Diego sat there too comfortable. He was taking too much shots. He had to move. And in just the opening 30 seconds of the first round, Magdaleno goes down to the canvas for the 11th time in his career. And we have fistic fireworks to kick off. Your veteran is special, and for Diego Magdaleno, if this is the end of his career, a tough ending at 34, he's hoping to show a lot more than this tonight. Hopefully, he's going to be fine, and, and they'll take good care of him. That was Bones Adams in his first fight with Magdaleno as his trainer, and this did not go the way they planned, of course. As for Cruz at 22, he's a six year veteran, and he showed why. He is a diminutive lightweight, but I'll tell you what, he's got power, and man, can he throw punches to the body. Abner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I was really looking forward to see uh, what Diego was, you know, going to bring in with having Adams in his, in his corner. Um, but unfortunately, you know, well, you know, not unfortunately, you know, it happens. Isa Cruz, he's the younger fighter. The shorter fighter, I, I thought he was going to... Well, he, he did what he had to do. He got a, he had to go in there and, and throw bombs, and th that's what he did. And um, what a performance from Isaac Cruz. I, I was impressed. Only 22 years of age, records his 20th victory, is now 15-0-1 since his lone defeat. Take a look at the first knockdown. This came so quick uh, out of the gate. Magdaleno got to a place you don't want to be against Cruz on the ropes. Cruz is very good at mixing his body, his attack to the body and the head. Normally he lands half his punches to the body. That was the beautiful uppercut that sent Magdaleno down. And you know, Magdaleno, as you pointed out, Morrow, has been down many times in his career. So you get the feeling still at this point, he could get himself back together and, and maybe still make things work. But, and he, we take a look at it again, the first knockdown, and you'll see how it happened. Uh, working from a good distance, Abner. It was the first round. I think Diego got too comfortable. He said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to feel this punch. I'm going to take his punches and see what this kid has. But <laughs> unfortunately, he had power and, and took uh, Diego out. 
Yeah, that was the first knockdown. And then here is where we'll see the end of the fight. The body work, and again, the uppercut of Cruz. You know, I thought Magdaleno's uppercut was gonna be a weapon in this fight. Turned out Cruz's was much more effective, and, uh, and he sent Magdaleno down, and that was that. Well, that's the that's a punch you throw right right when you work the body, especially to the side. You make that opening now, and that's what he threw, the uppercut, and it was there. Beautiful punch. He saw Cruz, known as Mini Mike Tyson, showcase that vicious uppercut. Hey, another Mini Mike Tyson, known for his <laughs> vicious uppercuts, known for being a player here in the 135-pound pound division. That name, Gervonta Tank Davis, he headlines tonight against Leo Santa Cruz, but he saw Cruz adding his name to the mix a lot of young guns at 135 let's make it official with the one and only Jimmy Lennon jr. ladies and gentlemen we have the time of 53 seconds of round number one he is the winner by way of knockout he is the winner of the IBF lightweight world title eliminator Isak a family affair indeed and a happy Cruz family celebrating a stunning first round KO victory here tonight. I'm Earl Spence Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford. On July 29th, I, I will be the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. As we look at these two boxers, it's intriguing. You know, we've talked about Lolito Donaire in his age, but, you know, Ubali at 34, um, an elder statesman a little bit himself uh, because he started so late as a professional, but he has certainly not been in as many ring wars as Lolito Donaire. Championship rules, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Referee or doctor can stop the fight. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round if a fighter can't continue due to an injury from an accidental foul before the end of round four. It's a no decision. After the end of round four, we go to the scorecards for a technical decision. From the infamous war grounds in Carson, California, here once again is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dignity Health Sports Park here in Carson, California, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by GEICO. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Alberto Leon, along with the California State Athletic Commission. The Chairman is John Carvelli, Executive Officer Andy Foster. Judging at ringside, from Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From Mexico, Alejandro Rochin. And from California, Patrick Russell. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Jack Reese. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Bantamweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Carson, California, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with the orange trims, fighting out of Las Vegas by way of Bohol in the Philippines. He weighed in at already 117 and one half pounds. His record stands at 40 wins, five losses, with 26 wins coming by way of knockout. In a remarkable 20-year career, tonight will mark his 20th world title appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger, the current WBC number one bantamweight world contender and the former four division champion of the world, introducing the Filipino Flash, Nonito Champion fighting out of 
the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Paris, France. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 117 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 17 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in the third defense of his title, here is the current reigning and defending undefeated WBC Bantamweight Champion of the World, introducing Nordine Ubali. And once again, a referee in charge, Jack Reese, now to give instructions. Take this off, please. Take it off. Right here, Nonito, Nonito, right here, facing me. Okay, right here. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. All right, I got a lefty and a righty, so just watch your heads and your feet. Please listen and follow my instructions at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. At 38, in the twilight of his Hall of Fame career, can Donaire dance with destiny one more time? Or will Ubali get an assist from Father Time? It's time to find out. <laughs> the bell and round number one, the defending champion, Nordin Ubali, the southpaw in black with gold trim, the challenger, Nonito Donaire, in blue with orange trim. You know, Ubali, if we know he's a very clever boxer, but he has knocked out six of his last eight opponents. So he's a guy that brings some power and pop in there as well. Yeah, and expect Ubali to be active in those early rounds. He's a difficult fighter, especially on the left-hand side. You know, when you think about it, to have a Bantamweight champion at the age of 38 would previously have been almost incomprehensible. And here, Nonito Donaire has a chance to, to make history. Yeah, we should point out that uh, if he were to win tonight, he would join the list of current champions that among the oldest uh, in the sport. So we'll see if he can achieve that and make that list time. Right hand to the body by Donaire. Ubali avoiding the left hook and delivering a left to the body of his own. If you're Donaire, you will likely get some rounds up. You know, you want to figure out the opponent that you have in front of in front of you. And I think Donaire is really smart of doing that. He wants to figure out the timing of this fighter. You mentioned it at the top of the telecast as Donaire gets backed up by the left hand of Ubali, but then does a good job of avoiding the other left hand. Leads with a right hand, but Abner. You know, at, at his age and after what transpired in Japan 18 months ago, you, you wonder if he left whatever he has left at the storied Saitama Super Arena, but countering here with a nice effective combination. But that was again 18 months ago when both of these fighters were last in the ring in Japan. He did talk about that. He did mention that he let his body heal. He feels good, he felt great in the gym, feels powerful in this weight class. And again, you know, I can't say it enough, I think he should, he, just as he's doing right now, take his time, figure out the opponent that he has in front of him. Donair was very uh, adamant when we chatted with him about the fact that he feels like he understands, you know, he's fought three of the last seven fighters have been lefties. He said, but this camp, I feel like I really honed in on it. So a nice see. check left hook to the body by the veteran Donaire, Ford division champion. He's 11 and one at 118 pounds. His lone defeat coming in his last fight. That instant classic against the monster Naoya Inoue as we come to the end of round one of this bantamweight championship fight. We will take a look at uh, what these men need to do to win this fight. We will start with Ubali. Now, he's very creative in initiating his attack, often with very unique combinations. We'll see that tonight. He sometimes throws uppercuts from too far out, and if he does that, Donaire will make him pay. 
And he scored many knockdowns with the left hand. Expect to see that tonight. And Ubali loves attacking opponents on the ropes, so Nonito has to stay off of there. And Donaire doubles with the left hook against lefties as well as anyone we've seen in recent years. So that should be something he'll do tonight. And Ubali can be hit with a straight right hand. And Donaire has a good one. The bell in round at number two. Nice. Sharp right hand to the body by Donaire. And again, that foot battle is going to be paramount. And how about this? Donaire averages 49 punches per round against righties and 39 against lefties. How many do you think he threw in that first round? 39. <laughs> exactly the amount he averages against lefties. And one thing that Donaire mentioned and s said, you know, which was really good, is that Ubali is such a textbook fighter, and fighters like him are so easy to predict. And as a counterpuncher that Donaire is, I think he is just waiting for the right time. You know what? Here he is. Two-decade career, 20th championship bout for Nonito Donaire. And a decade ago when he was a for pound stalwart with that patented left hook as Ubali coming forward and nice counter left hook by Donaire. See, I kind of disagree with Nonito on that one. I think that Ubali's not quite as predictable because not, it's not just his movement. He throws different kinds of combinations as coming in. So we'll see. He may be right. He may land a huge counter punch. We'll see. Another counter right hand scores for Donaire. Pumps out the jab. One thing that Ovali does, does right and wrong at the same time is he's such a great jabber, but he has a tendency of dropping that left hand. Yeah. That can cost him dearly if you know if he's catch with the left hook of Donito. Donaire split the guard and good defense as well. Body movement avoiding the left hand of Ubali. Yeah, we saw a famous counter left hook from Donaire, and there it is right there mm -hmm. against Victor Chinian back in 2007. One of the all-timers. Yeah, and he, and and Abner's 100% right. You left that lay, left hand, that right hand to hang out there, and boy, Donaire will make you pay. And of course, he made Naoya Inouye pay, gave him a broken yeah. orbital bone, broken nose, was knocked down, and again, full value to Naoya Inouye for the victory. But boy, it definitely summoned the the inner warrior Nonito Donaire who again says that the layoff was good for him and yet we're going to have to wait and see just what transpires here again Donaire countering with the right hand and it continues to be Donaire effective with the counter guys yes this is the fight that Donito wants it's not too much of a fast paced right just at the rhythm he wants and needs It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet 5 to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? The bell in round three, we talk about uh, Nonino Donaire. Oh, nice lead left hook. He is his fourth fight here at the Punch Bowl. The first two fights in 2012 helped him become the 2012 Fighter of the Year. And here he is, almost a decade later, vying for another championship. It's really amazing. By the way, one of the voices in the corner with Donaire was his wife, Rachel, who he's really self-trained, yeah. in effect. Um, but has people at the gym helping him. But he Kenny Adams, one of them, an institution in the yeah, sport. Yeah, you're right. Kenny Adams helps him there, and, but he is essentially self-trained, uh, which is interesting. And meanwhile, Ubali 
two-time Olympian, over 200 amateur bouts. You, you know why he became a fighter, though, guys? He's the 13th of 1800. Something tells me uh, you needed to fight for everything in that household. Yeah. A minute gone here in the third as Ubali explodes with his leg. I, I could agree with that, Mo. I, you know, I come from 11, 11 <laughs> seconds, so <laughs> most of us were fighters. Oh, and beautiful left hand by Ubali. Yeah, I was going to say at the end of that last round that Ubali is, is fighting to find the range for his left. Yeah. He's got a very strong left, and he's done it in this round. And this is the time where Donaire has to use feints. He's got to feint a little bit to create traps uh, to, to, for him to be able to land the power shots. And you know, Donaire obviously here at 38 past his physical prime, but he thinks he recaptured his peak technical form due to his return to 118. And we've seen glimpses of that again. Been very effective on the counterattack, although as mentioned by Al Bernstein, Ubali is, is coming up. That was a great uppercut by the body. Oh, and he tagged Donaire, and Donaire comes back with a right. Yeah, you know, Donaire is cranking those counter punches. Ubali's doing a better job of attacking, but oh, Donaire is ready with those counters every time. Oh, and the right hand lands after he missed oh. with the left uppercut and the left hook by Donaire. As Ubali backs up to the ropes, the veteran Donaire goes to the body with the right, right left hook. And oh. Ubali is down! Of course, Nonito Donaire, methodical, and again, tags Ubali with the left hand. The left hook has been Donaire's calling card throughout his illustrious career. What a round! Oh, and Mubali comes back and staggers Donaire, but what a round by the Filipino Flash! The referee just gave him a second chance. Everything was going right. It's a little mistake. Breathe, breathe. Okay. Take your time. He's looking for the hard, the hard punch. Still working like he used to do. And breathe. Try to come back. Breathe deep. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's, good. He's, good. He's gonna be okay. Donaire came courtesy of that left hook, a counter because no, uh, Ubali was trying to throw that uppercut. Remember, I told you he throws the uppercut from too far out. He did it there, and then another left hook later in the round. Now. I guess that punch came before the bell. I think that was after the bell. Right? But I don't know. I mean, the ref is, is saying it came before the bell. Fourth round underway. Nonito Donaire sending Nordin Ubali to the canvas not once but twice. That was a great job by Jack Reese on uh, letting the goal of the fight continue as you know the round was pretty much over. Yeah, well, we saw him uh, again, the, the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight, the dramatic knockdown in the 12th round. And here, he see him again giving Ubali a chance, and Ubali bouncing back pretty well so far here in the fourth. Remember, we talked about that uppercut from too far outside. That's exactly what Ubali did, and he was crunched with a counter punch because of it. And he, he did stagger Donaire for a moment or two before he got hit with that other left hook that knocked him down. Th there was a punch before yeah. that, uh, you know, I noticed that made Uvali 
you know, step back, and then he got caught with the hook again and went down. Well, Donaire noticed something because he started yes, to he attack, did. and he usually doesn't do, do that. Again, lands with the left hook, straight right, another left hook, another right, and in Nolito Donaire tagging Nordino Bali, oh. and another left hook and a right hand. And you see Mbali got that left hand in, but Donaire walked past that. This fight is still an interesting one. Oh my. And Mbali's down for the third time! Mamma mia! It's over! History has been made! Father time, take a back seat! Nonito Donaire is champion again! And for Nordino Bali, tasting defeat for the first time, losing his title in the process. I told you. I told you I didn't got better. I believe in you. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. You're the best. Honestly, fantastic. That was amazing. Can I petition our boss at Showtime Championship Boxing and just make the punch bowl our residency from now until the end of time, please? Something happens when these fighters enter this uh, outdoor arena. And what an amazing, wow. you know, we saw Nonito Donaire here on Showtime come of age and shock the world when he beat Victor Chinian. And now we have seen him recapture glory at an age when most people can't imagine him doing it. Let's look at the numbers first of all. Uh, it, 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 there was, it, Donaire, Donaire was picking his shots very carefully, but the 51% of power punches landed shows you that he was landing those left hooks and those uppercuts with great impunity and uh, the total 40% percentage landed shows you that he, he was on mark with his uh, pre precision punching. All right, let's take a look back. And we'll go back to round number three. And first we will take a look at the first knockdown. The uppercut from Obali that was from too far back, the left hook of Donaire sends him to the canvas. Now, let's listen to the second knockdown to see if it came before the bell took place. A close call. You could hear the bell a little bit there, but it wasn't super loud. And this is round four, where Ubali got in more trouble, courtesy of the left uppercut and left hand. And there's the, he landed a real nice straight left hand, Ubali. But then, you see Donaire landing those left hooks. And this is after he had had Ubali in trouble already. And there's that huge uppercut. 
The left hook and left uppercut Abner of Nunito Donaire is as powerful as it gets in these lower weight divisions. <laughs> it does, and especially coming from Nunito Donaire, a power puncher. I mean, 14 years ago, he be beat uh, Vic Darcini, and 10 years ago, he, he, he gave us knockout of the year against Montiel, and today he's giving us another knockout. And it was just a matter of time in this last round. Ageless wonder. Nonito Donaire continues to dare to be great. Tonight, he was sensational. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 52 seconds in round number four. A referee in charge, Jack Reese, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is the new WBC Bantamweight Champion number nine, of the World. World Champion. The Filipino Flash, no need to be ninth World Champion. Generation. The time has come. A fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr., Terence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up. Beat him up. Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay per view. Champion of the world, Terence. Mr. Horn, Mr. Crawford, gentlemen, let's do this. Remember last South Orthodox is but Crawford. There is the left. Crawford will lay on his see him lay on that left side. Punching between punches. Big left hand, right hook, uppercut, sends him back. Another left hand and another Six, seven. On a left hand again. Horns in the corner. Uppercut lands. Crawford on the attack. That's it. It's over. It's over. We celebrated an undefeated. You don't want to miss my fight against Earl Spence Jr. on July 29th. Buy it now on Showtime pay per view. as premier boxing champions, along with Man Down Promotions and Garcia Promotions, presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Tecate, the official beer of boxing, Limitless Pill, Reinvent Yourself, and Twin Peaks. Eats, drinks, scenic views. This bout is sanctioned by the IBF. The president is Daryl Peoples. Introducing our judges, scoring from ringside, Glenn Feldman. Alex Levine and Nelson Vasquez. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled in this highly anticipated battle of undefeated pound for pound greats for the IBF welterweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, it's time for the Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim representing the outstanding fighting family tradition and known as Boxing's Pride from Oxnard, California. He weighed in at 145 and one half pounds. His record, 39 wins, no losses. 30 big wins coming by way of knockout. 
Tonight, stepping up in weight, risking his undefeated record and seeking his fifth weight division title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former featherweight world champion, the former super featherweight world champion, the former super lightweight world champion, and the current lightweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated and distinguished four division champion of the world, introducing Mikey Garcia! And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks with red and green trim, fighting out of him proudly, representing his home of Dallas, Texas. He weighed in at a ready 146 and one quarter pounds. Truly one of the stars of boxing today. And pound for pound greats, he is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he also is risking his untarnished record and is making the third defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting, reigning and defending, undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing the truth, Errol Spence Jr. And now introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, John Shorley. Yeah, Mr. Spence, Mr. Garcia, this fight is for the IBF world title. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Away we go. Scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF World Welterweight Championship. Third title defense for Errol Spence Jr. Going up against Mikey Garcia, who has won belts in four different weight classes throughout his illustrious career. Over 47,000 in attendance here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Both Errol Spence Jr. and Mikey Garcia, huge Dallas Cowboys fans. They both attended a game this season. Both undefeated. Garcia 39 and 0. 30 knockouts. Spence okay, now you're ready. 24 and 0. 21 via knockout. <laughs> Errol Spence Jr. fights out of Dallas, lives in DeSoto, Texas, only 23 miles from AT&T Stadium. Right off the bat, Earl Spence is trying to establish his jab here and, and put a, a slight amount of pressure on. And Mikey's just looking for some openings right now. He's got a little head movement going. He's walking him, walking backwards, seeing where he can get a counter punch in. It's a smart move on both men's part. What do you expect early, Lennox? Well, you know, I expected. Uh, Mikey to actually come at Spence, but it's the other way around. And uh, obviously, he's waiting to counter punch and see what 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 he can see from just the first round. And he's taking it easy. You know, he's got a lot of poise because he's got a lot of fights under his belt, so he knows how to do these first rounds. And he's, he knows he's not in a rush. He knows he needs to take his time and kind of see what's there. Maybe feel uh, 
feel Spencer's power a little bit and see what he can um, counter punch with. Mikey Garcia moving up a couple of weight classes. He said, everyone tells me this fight is too risky. That's why I wanted to do it. Well, it is risky, and you can just tell when Errol Spence throws a couple punches, you can see the power behind it. And Mikey got away from a body shot that was thrown by the left hand Errol Spence just a second ago. But Mikey's really being calculating right now, and he's looking to land some sort of counter punch. But even if he doesn't, even if he wastes his first round moving, it's still a smart move on his part. I think to get a sense of what Errol Spence can and cannot do. Well, Errol Spence actually has longer arms, so he has to work, figure out a, a way to get past those long arms as well. Oh, yeah. And kind of figure out the distance between him and Spence. Yeah. Well, Mikey's fought taller guys before. He's usually the shortest guy in the ring. Um, so it's not that he has an experience. Plus, he's been sparring with 160 pounders, so he got used to doing this in the gym for the past 12 weeks. Garcia has gone the distance 12 rounds in each of his last three bouts. This is round one scheduled for 12. And you got Errol Spence giving a little ground here, so it's a little give and take on who's pressing who. And Mikey's looking to penetrate a little bit. Because Errol's been falling short on his jabs and his uh, left hand of the body, so. We're looking, he, he, they're looking for the strategy that's going to work. He didn't fall short with that nice right jab. Yeah, well, you're right. It grazed him. Final seconds, round one. You're gonna try. You're gonna try to go half distance, slowly. You know, and you have to be very intelligent on this. Don't get too anxious. Nice and soft. Start getting in. Start moving. Keep moving. Outside and inside. Up and down. Up and down to the side. Don't stay in the middle. Well, you got to watch out for that hook that he has. Okay. Okay. Good. It was a good round. The instructions from. Trainer and older brother Robert, former junior lightweight champ, translated for our viewers by Felix de Jesus. Yeah, and it makes sense. Robert gave him great instructions. Pretty much what you saw out there is what he told him to do again, except to close the gap a little bit more, but he's got to be very careful of closing that gap. Get, that means getting close to Errol Spence and watch out for Errol Spence's right hook. Round two, Mikey Garcia facing a sixth consecutive opponent who has held a title at some point in his career. Errol Spence Jr., the reigning IBF welterweight champion. In your mind, Joe, who had the edge in round one? Well, you'd have to give it to Spence only because he was touching. At least he was touching. Nothing solid landed from either guy, but he was touching. He's doing stuff like that. Mikey was pretty much trying to figure out Errol Spence right. Uh, in the last round, so I'd have to give it to Errol. But uh, you know, this round, Robert wants Mikey to close the gap a little bit. So let's see what happens if he can put his hands on Errol Spence in this round. Easier said than done. Right, I agree. And he's looking for it right there. You just saw. To me, Mikey's trying to get him up against the ropes, and Errol Spence is being very wise and circling him and making sure that he doesn't. Mikey said he's prepared to back Spence up, but it's very risky to do that. Why is that, Lennox? Oh, because he's going to get, uh, he has to watch out for shots coming in. And uh, when put somebody's being forced backwards, especially with uh, Spence's experience, he's going to be throwing punches going backwards, and he knows how to throw punches going backwards. So there was a nice little move by Robert, uh, uh, by Mikey Garcia. He stepped over to his right. Errol Spence is left there just like that. He's making that little slip there looking to counter. And he's done that twice now. He, I think he's finding a little spot for that move. And there he goes down the middle with that right hand. 18 punches landed from Spence to this point. Garcia with five. 
And it's a real cat and mouse game right now because both of them are very, very cautious of each other's power. But it looks like Mikey's starting to, you know, walk Arrow down a little bit. Mikey's and that, and that uh, tide might change, so. Mikey, uh, Mikey's throwing that left hook and it's, um, it's coming around pretty good on Spence, but it's not hitting him yet. No, neither one of these guys. That was a good little body shot by Garcia. So he's starting to figure him out. This is kind of what uh, Kel Brook did, was he, he, he used a, a lot of cute moves left and right on Errol Spence. Of course, Spence starts turning that pressure on like he's doing now, and this is what eventually gets to you in the later rounds. But we've seen more aggression from Garcia here in round two, bit of a feeling out process in round one. Let me tell you, Spence is doing a, a, a great thing by throwing as many jabs as he's throwing. This is what you need to do. Start everything off with the jab, get Mikey frustrated with this jab, get him focused on the jab, and then you start throwing other combinations. Too slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, you're too slow. You see that, right? And you control that distance just like you're doing. If you want to shoot that look, close up the middle. When you shoot that jab, make sure that middle close. Keep everything tight. Double that jab up to the straight one, or the uppercut to the middle, all right? Control the hand up high, so you can stay focused. Block everything. Don't get too careless, all right? Start stepping around and shuffle, shuffle. You want to shuffle, shuffle, because you're stepping back. So shuffle, shuffle. So I shoot them feints also, you got me? Too, too wet, too wet, too wet. And here we see a nice left jab by Arrow. And here's Mikey moving forward, trying to pick his spot, showing him different angles, coming over with that left. Lennox, how did you score the second round? A lot closer than the first round. This is round three, scheduled for 12 for the IBF. World Welterweight Championship belt. Our unofficial score is Marcos Villegas. Marcos, how have you scored it so far? I have a two rounds up for Errol Spence. He's making excellent use of his jab, uh, stopping Mikey from getting forward and closing the distance, though. Mikey's starting to get warmed up now. He had a very good second round, but because of Errol's excellent use of his jab, I have him up 2-0 so far. All right, thanks, Marcos. So 2018 over the first two rounds on Marcos' scorecard, Joe. I, I would take a little issue with, the, with just the second round there. I thought that Garcia forced the action. He put on pressure. He landed a couple of body shots. He came over the top of Arrow Spence's right jab with a little hook jab himself. Uh, I, I thought he looked impressive, more impressive in the second round. I think his head movement and his uh, intelligence right now will serve him well. Again, nobody's there. Arrow got a nice little body shot in, but nobody's really dominating the rounds yet. Looks like Arrow wants to start pressuring though harder. But right when he does, Mikey makes his slick moves and he throws him off track for a minute, and Arrow goes back to boxing for a second. So it's a real tug of war. Ball left from Spence connecting. Well, actually, Mikey had that hand right up there and he blocked that punch. Now, let me just tell you something. He it's a great punch by Errol Spence, but Mikey was smart enough. He's going to keep his hands up when he sees those punches coming in. He's not going to get hit with a, a sucker punch like that, a loop, looping up in. You see Mikey's knocking those little jabs down to the body and trying to counter. So it's a, it's a cat and mouse game. He landed a nice little short right hand. Two of them right there. He's playing it smart, and he's being effective. That oh, a big left, left by Spence. That's right. That was a good left hand by Spence. Caught Mikey with that hand down, which he sh didn't have last time down, but he got... I was going on. Ooh. Oh. Arrow came around with a good sweeping left left hook there. Yeah, he's starting to find that. That's a punch that Mikey, as smart as this, shouldn't be getting hit with. Final minute, round three. But again, Arrow's got to find his openings too, and he's found one now. You know? It's not easy. Neither one of these guys are easy to find openings on. Body shot by Spence. None of, the, none of them really have, has opened up to the body yet. They're still headhunting, still figuring each other out. Yeah, well, they're keeping their distance. Eh? You, you notice they haven't really closed the gap on each other. Once one of them gets in close, the other one steps back.
Time winding down in round three. Cut. You don't want to miss my fight against Terrence Crawford on July 29th. Buy it now on Showtime pay-per-view. Here we see a big left hand coming around like a hook by Spence. It was partially blocked on that one, so it wasn't a completely clean left hand there. But no, he called part it. Of it. He called no, it not hook. completely. Second not up. completely, but he called right. it. No, he did. And he's throwing some good right jabs. No, I, I, I thought Errol Spence uh, took control of that third round right there. So it's, it, it is. You know what I like about Errol Spence? Forth. It's yeah. not one jab. It's sometimes two, sometimes, sometimes three. It was four in a row, like you said. No, you're right. All right, so Heidi Andro. Heidi. Thank you very much, Derek. I know this has been a lot of them just feeling one another out. What did you say to Errol coming into this round? I just told him to take him pose. Keep his jab. Stay focused. Don't get reckless. Take him pose. All right, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Heidi. That's Derek James. Errol Spence's trainer. Derek also a Dallas oh. native. 2007 trainer of the year. As the action picks up here in round four. Yeah, Errol Spence landed a, a, a couple of good right, uh, good left hands. He was trying for that looper around the uh, around the ear on Mikey Garcia, but Mikey got hit to it. He's keeping that right hand up much better after getting clipped last round with it. But See, Spence is going around, then he's trying to go straight with that left hand. He's going around and he's straight. He's mixing it up on him, trying to keep Mikey guessing what he's going to come back with. Again to Marcos Viegas. Marcos. Yeah, I have it up for Errol Spence, 3-0. to zero. I'm on pins and needles right now. These are very competitive rounds. Uh, Errol still using that jab to score points. He's having success here in round number three. As you just see right there, popping him with the jab, and it's scoring for me, and I'm sure it's probably scoring for the judges seeing this from ringside as well. All right, thanks, Marcos. Has anything surprised you to this point, Lennox? Uh, no. Just as I figured, you know, Spence is doing the right thing. He's moving around. He's throwing that right jab, and he's throwing, he's mixing up that left hand straight and around. And, you know, he's keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, which he's supposed to. A look at the number of jabs landed. 21 for Spence. 11 oh. by Garcia. <laughs> Yeah, the telling blows right now are by Spence with this left hand. It's, Absolutely. It's, he's definitely getting through with it, and he's, and he's scoring big. The long arms are posing a problem for Mikey. He's, he's really having a hard time counterpunching right now, and this is a problem. If he can't counterpunch, he's going to be in it for a long night or a short night. Final minute, round four. Now, Marcos Viegas gave the first three rounds to the champ, Errol Spence Jr. There's the left by Spence. Mikey Garcia is keeping his head really stiff right now. He needs to move it a little bit more. Body shot by Spence. Great round for Spence right now. He's been throwing that right left continuously. Okay. Okay. Oh no, no Q tip for Doctor. Q tip. I know Q tip. Q tip for the nose. Okay, now we're going to start. You need to go back, you go back, and then go in, close the gap. Do not commit errors. He does, he does leave himself wide open, but you have to be nice and close. And move your head a little bit. You move your head, and then you start closing the gap. How are you? Fine. How does he, how does he head? It's okay. More combinations. All right, here we go. Let's see what happened there. Spence throws a, a jab. Mikey slips it. Mikey came back with a little short right hand left hook.
All right, well, you heard Robert Garcia in the corner. You know, Mikey's having a hard time counterpunching from the distance. He's going to have to get inside. He said, close the gap, get inside. Now we got to go for it. He knows he's got to make the turn right now. Back to Heidi Andro. Heidi. Thank you very much, Robert. We heard you say this is the round you need to go for it. What do you want to see Mikey doing? I think Mikey could back him up. Look, like, just like he's doing right now. Fighting on the uh, on the outside of Spence is, is too too long and and, and, and reach and uh, is uh, just jabbing his fight through. If Mikey Mikey could pressure him and look uh, right just like that, backing him up. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys. Thanks, Heidi. So Robert Garcia happy with what he saw over the first 45 seconds here at round five. Well, yeah, you 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 know you almost have to sacrifice and get inside. Mikey, he, Robert's right. He's got the shorter arms. He's going to have a heck of a time getting through this. He's got to press Spence and back him up. And I'll tell you what, it's dangerous either way. If you're on the outside or the inside. But he's got more of a chance, Garcia, if he gets in there and starts mixing it up. Now, see, he should press right now once he threw. There you go. So he's got to press once you throw uh, Errol Spence off balance. You've got to make that second effort to jump right on top of him because you're not going to get too many chances to get close to him. I know it's difficult. It's difficult right now because, you know, you're talking about a skillful boxer, Errol Spence. And, and he's, he's mixing up the punches big time. And then all of a sudden when Mikey tries to jump back in there, he's getting punched as well. So you're right. Mikey fell short with the right hand and got countered with the right hook as Errol Spence stepped backwards. So. You know, he's getting it coming and going. And he's having too few of moments to be in this fight right now. Right now, Errol Spence is running away with it. Errol Spence is mixing up the punches. He's not throwing just at the head. He's not throwing around the corner. He's throwing up the middle as well. In the fourth round, Spence landed 26 through 89 punches. Those are his highs over the first four rounds. Garcia with a good start here in the fifth, but Spence has worked his way back. Yeah, he's going to have to make that second and third effort. Once Mikey Garcia missed that punch, Errol Spence is regrouping. He's got to jump right back on him, or he's got really, he's going to have a being for a very, very long night on the end of that jab. That's where he's got to go to work. He got in close with Errol right there. He got his left arm on him. He should have worked his right hand somehow like that. You got to do anything right now, hit him anywhere. You just got to start working them over. Right there. So he's got to start working inside. Ten seconds remaining in round five here in Arlington. Five rounds of the books here at AT&T Stadium for the welterweight title. Lennox, your thoughts to this point? Let me tell you, Errol Spence is boxing a perfect fight right now. He's using that jab well. He's not getting caught. And then when Mikey's coming in, he's throwing combinations. He's mixing up the punches. Right now, he's throwing three, four, pu pu four punch combinations, which is perfect. Boxing well. Yeah, it's kind of going how you would have expected it had you favored Errol Spence, that this is the type of fight he could pull off. It's not over yet, but Mikey's still got to, he's still got a lot of work ahead of him. If he doesn't get inside, it's going to be a shutout by Errol Spence, if not a knockout later on. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. look at this. Look at the fact of he's throwing, he's throwing some good left hands, good body punches. Yep. Mikey hasn't thrown those punches yet. He hasn't gotten through those punches. Each of the first five rounds have been fought at distance, according to CompuTrack. And, and Errol Spence is keeping it that way. Because when Mikey makes a move in, he'll step back a half a step and try to counter and catch Mikey coming in because he knows he's got the shorter arms. Just as his brother pointed out in the corner, he's, he's got to get inside. His brother Robert, his trainer. This is round six, scheduled for 12 for the IBF World Welterweight title. Errol Spence Jr., the current champ. Mikey Garcia looking to win a belt in a fifth different weight class in his career. Errol's got him so busy with that right jab, he's not seeing that left hand come through. And, he's, and he, like I said, he's mixing it up. He's not only throwing it around the corner, but he's throwing it straight up the middle. And 
Mike, he's got his ha head up, his chin up, and stiff. He needs to move his head a little bit more. He's keeping the perfect distance, Errol Spence. And now he's starting to land some really hard shots. And if Mikey can't land and hurt Errol, he's really in deep trouble. Body shots, 31-7 in favor of Spence. And that's the thing, Mikey's a tremendous body puncher. He just can't get close enough either way, coming or going, to land a body shot. Oh, oh left by Spence, and then a right. Mikey took that hard shot well and came back with his own right hand left foot, but, you know, it, it has no effect on Errol Spence. As of yet. And this is the Errol Spence. Oh, oh, good right hook by Errol Spence. But this is the champ, Mikey, coming back. He's not going to sit still for that. No, and Errol Spence did the right thing. Move out of the corner. It's, he's a better boxer in the middle of the ring. Bottle minute, round six. Seconds. Great body shot by Harold Spence, but Mikey comes back. He'll counter you. I mean, he's not uh, he's not just laying down, or he's not just you know folding because he's getting hit hard by Errol Spence. Final seconds, round six, scheduled for twelve. What's that upstairs? Hey, boxing fans! It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet five to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? And clearly, this is Spence's fight. He's in control, he's dominant so far. He's controlled the ring, the distance, worked behind his jab. The thing I like about what Arrow is doing is he's mixing up his straight left. He's throwing it straight and then he's looping it around. He's not becoming, he's not allowing uh, Garcia to pick up his rhythm. Well, look, I hadn't seen Arrow as tentative as he was in the beginning of the fight. Now he's starting to fight in his rhythm. Mikey's catching the punches, but he's got to come back with something because he's losing the rounds, you know? But he's, you know, he's backed Errol up quite a bit in this fight. Errol's never been backed up before like this, but showing his strength right now. Yes, yeah, Spence said timing was key to be on point, whether it's a jab or a left cross, he's delivering. So what can Garcia do given what you've seen Spence do so far? You know, he came out in the beginning of one of those rounds and he was really aggressive, which seemed to be effective for him. I think if he continues to do that and then start to try to control the range of distance from there, but starting from an aggressive standpoint, he might have some success. Mike has got to take chances, got to take yeah. chances. And do you have uh, Spence winning every round? No. All but one. All but one? I got two. I give Mikey two? two. Okay. Let's go back to Kenny, Joe, and Lennox ringside. All right, Chris. How about you, Joe? Do you have Spence winning every round? Except the second round, right. And I agree with uh, LaShawn and, and Boom Boom for sure. But, and, and I also agree with the fact that uh, what Boom Boom said is that Garcia's got to get in close and he's got to take some chances. I you agree know, with that as well. Yeah, when he got in close, even though. Spence landed some good shots. Mikey was close enough to land some great counter punches off the ropes over there in that last round. So if he's not willing to take chances or unable to take chances, we're going to see more of the same here. Our Marcos Viegas has scored at 60 54, giving each of the first six rounds to Errol Spence Jr. In round six, Spence landed 13 jabs. That's more than double the welterweight average. Well, it's serving him well. I mean, especially since you know that it's going to be hard for Mikey to counter his jab because he's got short arms. It's a great strategy to use a lot of jabs because it, it'll really keep Mikey at bay, which he's been doing all night. And even that great counter punch Mikey just threw there missed Arrow because he's actually got a very good defense himself. 
Let's check in with Heidi Antro. Heidi. Thanks so much, guys. I just talked to Derek James, Aero Spence Jr.'s coach. He told me he wants him to keep his composure, shorten up those shots, don't rush. You can even hear Floyd Mayweather over here saying, don't rush, use your jab. He'll walk into it. He wants him to close up on the middle, though. Guys? All right, thanks, Heidi. You see, Errol stepped in a few seconds ago with a straight left hand lead, but he was able to pull out quick enough where even Mikey, as quick as he is with his counter puncher, he fell short with it. And Errol, you know, actually has a very, very slick defense. He knows what punch is going to come after he throws a certain punch. So when he throws a left hand, he knows most likely he's going to get countered by a right hand, and he's ready for it. Final minute, round seven. Derek James is right. Errol needs to shorten up, shorten up on the punches because he doesn't want to leave himself out there to be counterpunched. Yeah, I'd agree with that in, in, in entirely. But you know, right now, even though he's not shortening up on his punches, he still hasn't paid the price for it. But it's always good to be cautious. But I will tell you. Mikey Garcia's got to use his feet. He's not using his feet to come forward. He's, he's trying to counter punch, but he's got to do that. He's got to put a hustle on with his feet if he really wants to be successful. Round seven, winding down here at Arlington. See. Deontay Wilder, one of the many greats on hand, the current WBC heavyweight champ. All right, and there's that slip and a nice little jab. Lennox, go ahead. You yeah, the, you know, Mike, he has to get a little closer, but there you see the long arms of Errol Spence Jr. throwing that roundhouse body punch. Little long, but he's still catching him. There's the one up the middle. And here's, here's the last shot. Over with that left hand coming around Mikey's gloves. But a, but a nice counter by and Mikey Mikey's right still there. thinking he's doing all right, but he lost those rounds. This is only the sixth time Errol Spence Jr. has gone past six rounds in his career in his 25th pro bout. But on those replays, it certainly looked like Errol Spence was la landing the heavier shots, without a doubt. Yeah, he was connecting. Well, this is 8 of 12, and if Mikey Garcia is going to make any headway, he's got to make his move yesterday. I mean, so he's got to really do something spectacular in the next few rounds. He's got to hurt Errol Spence, at least. Well, I don't think he's going to hurt Errol Spence because, you know, when you look at both, both of their knockout ratios, Errol Spence has the highest knockout ratio. 21 to 24 for Spence. Ooh. <laughs> Mikey got hit with what he thought was a low blow when he was complaining to the ref and a, and, a, and a right hook just whistled by his chin. I mean, he, he can't take his eye off the ball there, not with a guy like Spence. Look at the total number of punches landed, only 45 by Garcia. And we are in round eight. Spence now at 166. Seems like that jab is really bothering Mikey Garcia because he's putting up that left hand, trying to block it, but he can't block it. When he's trying to block it, you know, Errol Spence is coming in with that left, which is the right thing to do. What Spence is doing great too is he's actually boxing nicely. He's you know, for a guy that was is considered just a pressure fighter, more or less, he's stepping back when Mikey's stepping in, sometimes countering, sometimes just making Mikey Garcia miss, like that. So he's he's playing a really smart game, and then he gets back in and he'll start touching you again. And Mikey's known for that left hook. I haven't seen that left hook yet. And that's his, you know, that's his good punch. Left hook is hard to get off on a southpaw. You know, that works really well against right handers, but against southpaws, it's really hard, especially when you've got a jab taking up all the time on your left hook side. You know what I mean? Boy, but Errol Spence is just dominating now. And even when he's close to Mikey, Mikey can't find the counter shots.
Final minute, round eight. Scheduled for 12 in Arlington. Here in round eight. Spencer's landed 40%, 32 of 80. Garcia only four of 33. Has a couple good right hands in the choppers that Mikey's landing on the inside, but to what effect? Because here comes Arrow, man, just throwing some really strong punches. Little uppercut, straight left hand and a right hook right behind it. Ooh, Ooh okay. left by Spence. And that will do it for round eight. Time now for Sounds from the Ring. Spencer's trainer, Derek James. I'm too slow. Too slow, son! No, 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 no. Take a pose. Take a pose. Oh, that's beautiful, Mikey, my God. Oh, man. You got to stick popping, daddy. You know what I Well, without a point of reference to really know what he's looking at that particular time, <laughs> that's beautiful, Mikey. So on, obviously he saw something Mikey here. did that he liked. Uh, because Errol's his fighter, right? Yeah, well, no, I think it's a situation where he likes what Mikey did because that was perfect for that Errol, for Errol okay. to throw right. his combination. So they, they know he's going to do something. When he does it, that's what they like. Exactly. Or it might have been the one time Mikey had a good flurry there. I doubt it, but I think you're right on that one. <laughs> Through eight rounds, Garcia landing only 26% of his power shots. Landed 43% over his last five fights. Well, if, you know, I got to believe that in, in Robert Garcia's, uh, as his trainer, the corner for Mikey Garcia is in a real you know he's he's not can't be feeling too confident right now or too positive he's like you say mikey's not a big knockout puncher so you say how do you turn this fight around what's he going to do to turn this fight around well he's got to, like you said he's got to take chances i haven't seen him take one chance you know he's basically got to, he's going to have to rush him but okay he's, let's yeah even when he takes chances though what's he going to do with it i mean score points that's not going to win him this fight it's too far gone already you know right but he needs to throw some punches at well, the beginning of this round guys. he's looking it seems like he's looking for that perfect punch that perfect punch is never going to be there that's he's right. got to throw punches to get that perfect punch at the beginning of this round our felix de jesus heard from mikey garcia's corner be careful it's hard, it's hard to be careful in a fight um there's this Trainer, his older brother Robert. And Arrow stepped it up a little bit in this round. Yeah, I think Arrow would like to, you know, do what he does best, and that's really pressure you and eventually take you out. It may not be that easy to take Mikey out. You know, we're already in the ninth round, but and he's not landing. Well, he's landing there right now. Very solid stuff. Oh, left uppercut by oh. Spence. Mikey's taking these punches on the chin. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know how many, how much of these punches he's going to be able to take. This is what happens when you step up. You know, these guys punch a lot heavier. And this is this yeah. is Spence's this is Spence's weight class. But and Spence is saying, no, 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 no guys from a lower weight class is going to come up and beat me in my weight class. I'm the king of this weight class, well, he's saying. Well, Spence does that to welterweights as well. I mean, whether you step up or not, the bottom line is that he's got Mikey on the run and on the verge of a knockout right here. And he looks like he's looking for a knockout against Garcia. See, Mikey threw that left hook. That left hook was slow. Couple of right jabs by Spence. Boy, he's really got Mikey on the run right now. And if he, if, 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 I don't know if he could take another round like this next round if Errol Spence turns on the heat like he did this round. Final seconds of round nine.
And here we see some uh, great action by Spence. He wants to mix it up a little bit more, so he steps to him, throwing some good body punches. Good body punches, then he comes up to the head. His hands are nice and high. He's got Mikey up against the ropes. Crowding him right now, putting him in the corner. Unanswered punch. And here we see him on some super slow-mo. Spence coming in with that right hook. Mikey falling against the ropes. Here's that last punch coming. Was blocked. Blocked. But good combinations by Errol Spence Jr. We heard from Manny Pacquiao earlier when he chatted with our Kate Abdo. Manny said he'd love to face the winner of this bout. Errol Spence telling us yesterday, I want Pacquiao next. I mean, he may get him after this performance, I, I, I'll tell you, because he's proven to be the, the premier welterweight in the welterweight division of all the champions right now. Our Felix DeHaes is telling us that Robert Garcia said he's going to stop it if he doesn't get a good round out of Mikey for more to Heidi Andrel. That's right. I just talked to Robert. He said that he didn't like the kind of punches that he was getting hit with in that last round. Mikey asked him for this round. He said, all right, I'll give it to you. Errol Spence in round nine landing 51 punches, most by a Garcia opponent in 20 fights. Good right hand by Spence. Well. Robert saw what, what we were talking about last round, which was he could not afford to take another round like he did in the ninth round in the tenth round here. And I'm talking about Michael Garcia taking that type of punishment. And Robert will stop the fight if he thinks his brother is taking too many punches. And even if it wasn't his brother, it would be a smart move because, you know, you got to watch out for your fighter regardless of if it's your family or not. And remember, as we mentioned earlier, Mikey was told by many, including some in his camp, that this fight was too risky. Every fight is risky, but uh, this one is especially risky because you're in there with a uh, with a machine in Errol Spence who really devastates most of his opponents, whether it's to the body or head, but eventually he wears you down and just thoroughly, you know, thrashes you. And he's sticking to the script right here. Spence putting on a clinic. He is. And against a guy that he is really a, not easy to put a clinic on against whether you're bigger than him or not. Final minute, round 10. Having seen too many body punches by Mikey Gar Garcia, and, uh, you know, he's known for Ooh. body punches. Yeah, he is, and he just got hit with a couple of good uppercuts yeah. by, uh, by Errol Spence. The thing is, is Mikey Garcia is too busy protecting himself to worry about throwing punches right now because he's just worrying about blocking punches, to tell you the truth, at this point of the game. At this point, it's only going to take one punch. Well, I got to tell you, Mikey threw a nice crisp left hook off of a counter, uh, a counter shot of an Errol's punch, but then Errol came right back with a straight left hand. So even when Mikey does something good, Errol answers it back. A look at the total power punches. Spence landing 55%, Garcia 24%. Final seconds of round 10. Let's listen into the corner of Mikey Garcia. Good round, Mikey. It was a good round. How are you feeling? feeling? Eh? You want to go out again? Yes. Let's go. You're a little better now. So then get closer. Let's go. Let's go for it. Nice and tight. Okay. Not from the outside. Don't fight. Find him them inside. There's two more rounds left. Listen to me, nice and close. He's only beating you because of his big di the distance that he has on you. So get close and then start working the body too. You gotta keep doing it, you gotta be more busy. Okay? You wanna do it? You wanna go? Let's go. You have a lot of heart, let's go. 
y no, y no, y no te levantes después de tirar, no te levantes. Don't get up, you gotta fight small. Nice and low. There's still six minutes left, let's go. I'm Earl Spence Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford. On July 29th, I, I will be the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. This is round 11. Spence threw a fight high, 125 punches in round 10. I think right at this point what Robert Garcia is saying is look as long as I, I don't think you're going to take a lot of punishment I'd like to at least get the, the moral victory of going the distance and I think Mikey feels the same way he'd like to go the distance and finish this fight without it being stopped but he's not doing himself any favor by sitting on the ropes right there because that's where he will take punishment. Mikey Garcia needs to knock out Errol Spence to win this fight of course. But right now he's too busy protecting himself from this onslaught of Errol Spence's combinations. He is. He's doing a good job of blocking these big punches, though. But something's going to slip in eventually if Mikey doesn't counter. Spence throwing a barrage of punches here in round 11. It's not looking good. So he's looking for a counter shot. It was too little, too late. Spence has landed over 300 punches. Garcia only 63. To Marcos Villegas. Yeah, Kenny, so far I have it 190 for Errol Spence. We're seeing him now mix up his body attack, which I was looking to see in the early rounds. But Spence showing over the course of this fight that he has another dimension and that he can box, and he's just not this pressure fighter that comes forward. All right, thanks, Marcos. So Marcos has given all 10 rounds to Errol Spence tonight. Yeah. Right now what he's doing is he's just punishing Mikey Garcia to the body and wow. head. But Mikey is staying at least focused. He doesn't look like he's lost focus yet where he's being dazed uh, even though the referee uh, John Shirley's really keeping a close eye on things look, as well as the corner. You know he's being a punching bag right now. You know he's, he's getting all that. He's, he's receiving a lot of punishment and punches which is slowing him down so anytime he attempts to throw a punch he's not going to have the energy to, to get that punch through. I know we got one minute left in the 11th round here I'm telling you it's it's a moral victory if he lasts the 12 rounds and that's what I think they're going for here right now. I don't think they're going for the win because the win is impossible. So he's blocking a lot of those punches he's taking a some good shots no doubt here and there but he's still capable of trying to counter and I'm talking about Garcia but Errol Spence is really turning up the heat right now there's 20 seconds left I think Errol Spence just likes to box inside right now he doesn't doesn't need well, to keep the fight from a distance yeah, so he's no. he, you know right now he's just stepping towards Mikey uh, uh, I'm loving it. And right. he's being smart too because as soon as he hears that that bell, seconds. he's right by his corner. All right. There you go. So I, I think Mike is very happy he made it through the round. I think they're consigned to the fact that if they can get through this fight with a decision, it's a it's a big moral victory. A look at Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Both fighters, big Dallas Cowboy fans, both attended games here at AT&T Stadium this season. Errol Spence says, I bleed blue. Put the body on the shot. Hands up high. Go get him right now. Hands up high. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Rotate. Huh? Hey, 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 fellas. What? And here we see another Spence flurry just stepping towards Mikey. Mixing up the punches. Throwing punches in bunches. Mikey Garcia acknowledging the crowd as we begin the 12th and final round. Errol Spence Jr. fighting past 11 for the first time. In his pro career, he's never gone to round 12. No, and Derek James doesn't, his trainer doesn't want him to. He said, you got to go get him, go get him, go get him. Now, he knows he's got the fight clearly won, but yet he's telling his guy to go out and not play it safe in the 12th round like you would normally 
I think he wants, his, wants him brother. to get stopped. Huh? Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, you know, he wants to get the knockout victory, just as it is a moral victory for Garcia to go to 12. It's kind of a, a, a little bit of a letdown not to be able to stop a guy that's a 135 pounder as well on the other side of the coin, right? Uh, this is, you know, Mike. He's a good fighter. He's a great fighter. He's a great. That's, he, that's he's, why he's still know, here. He knows how to protect himself. Usually, other guys would probably stop, get stopped by now. But you know, Mike, he's doing a good job of protecting himself. Well, let me tell you, he's he's proven himself to have a lot of courage, uh, a lot of strength mentally and physically, um, and he took the challenge. He's coming up short on the challenge, but man. I mean, it takes a lot of guts and bravery to take this type of challenge on against a, a, a machine like Errol Spence, and he is a fantastic boxer, puncher, body puncher. He's he's a great champion. Well, Mikey Garcia, champion in four different weight classes, 49 and 0. Errol Spence Jr. at 24 and 0, the current IBF World welterweight title holder. It has been Spence in control right from the start. Mikey slipped a couple of big punches and, you know, he, 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 he popped out a couple of short right hands. But that's as much as he's getting accomplished right now. He's got one minute left to survive this 12th round and uh, get the moral victory of lasting 12 rounds with Errol Spence. Not many guys can or have. That's true. Benson Garcia have great respect for one another, spent a lot of time together. They were out in Los Angeles on a couple of occasions for press conferences. And then earlier this week, here in Arlington, Mikey Garcia said, Errol reminds me of me. <laughs> well, Spence just keeps coming, especially in this last round. He's he's trying to go for broke right here and, and close the show. Well, He's got 25 seconds or 20 seconds to do it with right now, and I don't think he's going to do it. Two undefeated champions go the distance. Forty-seven thousand five hundred twenty-five on hand. Third largest crowd for a boxing event here at AT&T Stadium. Errol Spence Jr. fighting close to home. Born on Long Island, moved to Texas at a young age, grew up in DeSoto, 23 miles from AT&T Stadium. He had what he called a wall of inspiration in his bedroom. Posters, magazine covers, and Ali Leonard, Mayweather, Roy Jones, Thomas Hearns, and Spence looking to maintain his world welterweight belt here tonight. And in the beginning, he started off throwing a right left. Sometimes a straight right left, sometimes a around the corner right left. And ending up on the body, throwing some good body shots, keeping up the pressure. Here's that straight left, slipping and coming back. Errol Spence turned into the counter puncher in this fight. The final numbers, total punches, over 1,000 thrown by Errol Spence, connecting on 32%, Garcia connecting on 18%. And the total power punches, Spence landing 51%, Garcia 25. And the punches landed to the head and the body. I mean, look at that, 75 to 345. I mean, that, that tells the whole story, you know? It was just a tough night for Mikey Garcia. 
Errol Spence Jr. talking about it with Jerry Jones in the ring. Huge contingent of Mikey Garcia fans on hand here at Arlington. Time for the decision to the ring. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at AT&T Stadium, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Glenn Feldman scores about 120 to 107. Judges Alex Levine and Nelson Vasquez both scored about 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner, remaining undefeated, proving he is one of the elite champions of the sport today. And still, the IBF welterweight champion of the world, boxing's pride of Dallas, Texas, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. Generation. The time has come. A fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up. Beat him up. Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay per view. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Staples Center as Premier Boxing Champions presents the much-anticipated featured bout of the evening brought to you by MGM Resorts, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and Lucas Oil in a promotion of Man Down Promotions, Sean Porter Promotions, and TGB Promotions. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, the President, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, along with the IBF, the President, Daryl Peoples. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, Ray Danseco, Larry Hazard Jr., and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go with the bout you've all been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified welterweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world. I smell the pot. Live yeah. from Los Angeles, it's time for the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, WBC champion entering the ring wearing gold trunks with white trim fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Cleveland, Ohio. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. His record stands at 30 wins, two losses, one draw with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his seventh world title appearance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time welterweight title holder and the current distinguished reigning and defending WBC welterweight champion of the world, introducing Showtime, Sean Porter! And his opponent across the ring of the blue corner, the IBF champion, Trunks with white trim, fighting out of it, representing Dallas, Texas. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 147 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 25 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. He is a 2012 U.S. Olympian, the acclaimed pound-for-pound -pound star. Tonight, making the fourth defense of his title, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated, reigning and defending IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing the truth, Errol Spence Jr. Introducing 
introducing our third man to the ring now to give instructions, Jack Reese. He's coming, Derek coming? You got your mouthpiece in? Mouthpiece? Derek, Kenny? They're right both at the line, he just shoved them down. They're gonna come up, I'm gonna let them work in here, okay? I gave you both instructions, I just wanna remind you, please listen and follow my instructions at all times. Protect yourself at all times, fight hard, fight clean, good luck to you. Here is our tale of the tape for this welterweight unification match. Let me get what stands out to you. Arrow, obviously the bigger fighter, stands at five, nine and a half. Both coming in at 147, but Arrow also has the reach on Sean. However, that may be an advantage for Porter as he's able to dip underneath the jab of Arrow, use that physicality, and get on the inside of Arrow Spence. They talk about legacy fights. Welterweight unification is on the line. Will it be showtime in LA, Ready? or will it be the truth prevailing here in the City of Angels? Ray Flores ringside alongside Miguel Flores. Errol Spence Jr. and Sean Porter, both champions. Spence coming into this fight, predicting knockout. That's what he's aiming for. If he can be the first guy to stop Sean Porter, that would send shockwaves throughout the rest of the welterweight division. One of the things I'll be looking for in this fight, Ray, is the referee, Jack Reese. How much is he going to allow? How much physicality will he allow Porter to exert on Errol Spence? Will he allow them to fight out of the brakes? That is interesting. Sean Porter needs to be able to jab his way on the inside because if he stays at distance, Errol Spence will pick him apart all night long. The one thing about Spence is he can get hit. He's a great offensive fighter, has all the tools, but he is not unhittable. Well, no question, we saw that in his, when he captured the world title in England when he fought Cal Brook, he took some good shots, took them well. Now Porter, going on the inside, not trying stop, to get a good Stop, 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 my break, don't hit each other on the break. Box. We're midway through. Feeling out process thus far. Porter coming forward. Dismissed. I'm ready to go. Stop. Said, stop. You're a great fight. Stop. Street fighter. Say stop. Who acts like he doesn't know how to swim. He said that is the offense from Sean Porter. You can see both of these fighters. There's no feeling out process here. Porter on the attack early. Oh, right hand over the top. Porter saw a fight. Right hand that connects. Now Porter was he going to go to work on the inside. This is what Porter has to gain. Stop, offense. stop, my break now again. Jack Reese will separate them, okay. So we'll see if that remains the case when it comes to Jack Reese separating the two combatants under many left in our opening stance. And there is the signature dance that Porter is known for during his fights. Sean fakes one way. Trained by his father, Kenny Porter, also in the corner. Of Sean Porter, Barry Hunter, Steve Train. He's been in the corner with Lamont Peterson, AJ Brooks. Stop, 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 Relax. That's what I talk about, Ray. Porter using his high at little disadvantage, you would say, to his advantage. Ducking underneath a Spence's jab, hitting on the inside. That could end up being a problem for the truth. Time, and stop one, Draws to a close. TV, come on. Listen in the corner of Sean Porter. Make sure you position him out with your punches. You turn him in that corner, and you just wait go out after him, okay? When you make the turn, you gotta go. Don't block no body shot. Let him have the body shot. Huh? Come on, more. Let him have the body shot. Dude, bro, blow it out. Okay? Then you take the head when he go to the body. Right? Jabs, feints, turn him where you need him to be and go to work. Okay. Hey, give me a towel. We got a towel. Everybody got a towel. Thank you. Thank you. 
Larry, you get me the card quicker, I'd appreciate it. You get me the card quicker, I'd appreciate it. Steve. Steve. You got, what did get you me the card quick. From round one. Well, Sean is not going to wait fellas. for Spence. Stay back. Stay back. Porter is going to bring back. the fight to him. He's going to dunk underneath. He's going to try to muck it up a little bit. He swings wildly. That's one thing we know about Sean. And, you know, he's not the most accurate puncher in the game. Arrow, though, was calm, cool, and collected, and it didn't seem to phase him. Let's see how that progresses in round two. Errol Spence, the IBF champion. Sean Porter, the WBC champion. Errol's been a champion for four years now. As you take a look at Errol stepping to a straight left that connected. Make it part three years for Spence. A straight left right on the chin of Porter. And Porter seemed to be backing up a little bit. Now he comes forward once again. Stop, stop, stop. Sean, I told you when he's under your arm, don't hit him like that. And he's head under your arm. You all right? Box. And there you see Jack Reese already warning Sean, so it may not be a typical Sean Porter fight. So far, as we've seen the early looks of Jack Reese breaking it up as soon as they get in the clinch. One minute has elapsed in the second. Arrow with that straight left right to the midsection of Sean Porter. Errol Spence is one of the most dangerous and lethal body punchers in the game today. Back comes Porter. A straight left, big right hand for Porter. He may stop, have stop, stunned stop, stop. Spence. Stop. Either that or he may have been off balance. So it was that the fact that Porter, that Spence was off balance. Stop, my brain, let each other go. Broadcast perspective, it looked like a clean shot, but it was that Spence was off balance and this crowd erupted. Nonetheless, look for Sean to use that to his advantage. And Spence puts the head down on Porter. Spence teeing off on Porter. But back comes Showtime. And there's the signature Showtime that we've seen in the past. Lunging forward, swinging wildly. Arrow threw a left uppercut that missed. But one thing about Porter, he's got to be careful when he comes lunging in and throwing wildly. Arrow is so accurate with his punches. Right, and also Sean leaves his chin down. And Errol has shown a propensity to throw that uppercut. Stop, 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 stop. I like how with Errol, as Sean tries to barrel into him, he grabs him, he ties him up, and puts his head down as to try to gain a break. And now Porter needs to go to work right here on the inside. They're both looking to mix it up. Spence with a nice combination. And Porter connected with the left of his own over the top. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet 5 to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? It was a clean shot, but we're taking a look at it, and oh no. I thought that the punch grazed him, but Arrow was just off balance. was the left hook from Porter that landed on the forehead of Spence. Porter, as we've seen, is a very unique fighter. He comes in from all angles. He throws from all angles. Shots on the inside, he is straight not. down the middle, and then turn the other car. He's starting with the hook and missing. Right? Body, head, straight down the middle. Turn him. Go to work. Banks and banks when you turn him to banks. Don't yes, just sir. keep drawing him in and looking pretty. Sure. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Banks and banks. That's what Kenny Porter told his son Sean right Porter. Now? You agree with the instruction from Kenny Porter, Miguel? 
I do. I, and and he, he was telling Porter, too, you're swinging wildly. You're missing. He says, straight, straight, throw some feints. With a guy like Arrow, who's so smart, you need to throw him off balance a little bit. You have to make him continue to guess what you're going to throw next. Well, Arrow is looking to settle into his groove. Sean needs to make Errol Spence uncomfortable. Here he goes. We'll see. Let him go, Spence. And Sean will go to work, and now Errol is on the attack. A straight left right to the body of Sean Porter by Errol Spence. Let me show you Let him go, Sean. Now we'll see if they'll fight on the inside. Let him out, Sean. Stop, 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 stop. Now stop. Fight. Over here. Over you got hit low because you pulled his head down. Don't pull his head down. You got yeah, right? Yeah. Good. So Sean looked over at Jack Reese as the he's hitting me low. Well, Jack Reese responded with, if you didn't hold his head down, then that wouldn't be an issue. You see Errol, again, just calm, cool, and collected, staying in the center of the ring. This fight favors Spence when it's at distance and in the center of the ring. If you're bored, you need to get this fight to the ropes and oppose your will upon Errol Spence, like right here. And just like Kenny Porter said, go to the body. I need more body let shots. Let him go, let him go, work out. Oh, there's a straight left for Spence. Back comes Porter. Porter throwing. Haymakers. And Spence, there you go, toe to toe. Left to a unification on the line as they are swinging for the fences here at Staples Center. This is a dog fight, Miguel, without okay, question. And right here, this is the fight Porter wants. This is the fight Porter needs in order to win and defeat Errol Spence. Big straight left for Spence. Back comes Porter. Porter digging. Mighty down in his mouthpiece. Back comes Spence. Chopping left hands from the truth. Stop, 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 stop. A big straight left right. for Spence the on the floor. break. He's right on the cut. You've got to bring him up, okay? And okay. it seems that Spence is fighting what he all accused Porter of doing coming into this fight. He's almost holding on to Porter at times. He's throwing when the ref's telling him to break it up. Errol is fighting Porter's game. Well, and also I think Errol knows a big straight left. That connected stop, stop. for Spence. Oh, Errol knows huh? he's got to make this. He's trying to take it stop. to no Sean Porter Nobody by punch. any means necessary. Good. Step back. Final moments of the third. Stop, stop, what a third round. Unbelievable action that we saw there. As both fighters, you got to talk us through what you saw here in the third. I told him. And right there, there was the hold from Porter. Errol went low, and you could see he hurt Porter. And then Errol, again, he's almost laughing as Porter swinging wildly, but that one connected over the top with the right. And Sean, as we know with Sean Porter, he's so strong. He's almost like a bull, and he uses that straight to hold you up against the ropes. And then there's Errol answering back, digging into the body, and then coming and finishing upstairs. Both look extremely fresh again. They look like they haven't even fought one minute. That's how in tip-top shape they are. So far, a very entertaining three rounds in the first quarter of this fight. Sean Porter. Jabbing his way on the inside. Now attacks the body. Bring it up, Spence. Porter. Bring it up. Spence covering up now. Chopping shot for Porter. Going to the body is Porter. Porter is going right at Spence. The left hook. And now he's walking down Spence. Two big right hands on the temple of Spence. And it was the body shot that set those overhands up, Ray. But back comes Spence. A straight left for the truth. 
Vince has got his mouthpiece open. Oh, a heavy Titanic run by Porter. This is the kind of fight. fight that you tell your family members about 15 to 20 years. A straight left that connects for Spence. Both men have been slugging away. Oh my goodness. And I think Spence is stunned, Ray. Porter might have Spence hurt. Porter applying the pressure. Oh my goodness. What a round. Sean Porter just so durable. He is fighting the fight of his life. There was a left hand, a wild left hand that connected flush that threw Spence off balance. Spence is fighting Porter's fight, but it's because Porter is imposing his will. We'll see if Spence can make adjustments. Here comes Porter again. Non-stop. Porter has not taken a second off. A left hook that missed for Porter. What a round. Look at this work rate by Sean Porter from Akron, Ohio. He just does not know the word stop. Spence trying to answer back. Oh, straight left. The back to Porter. Spence quit Porter. No oh, body shot. Up. But back comes Porter. They are going to. Porter coming and throwing the kitchen sink at Spence. By the moments of the floor. Go. Stop, stop, my break, my break. Let each other go. Hey, keep them up, both of you guys. Stop at the bell. That's it. What a round. Are you not entertained? Porter with tons of action early. And it's the body shots that are setting up the power shots over the top, Ray. Porter is doing a great job at continuing to dig into the body of Spence. And then here was that left hand on the forehead that appeared to stun Spence and throw him off balance a bit. And then he did right into the body. Very low blows, quite a few. You keep him up. But Spence was able to answer later on in that round. back with a big straight left. Oh my, holy mackerel. But if you're Porter, this is the fight you want. This is how you envision this going and how it being the rest of the way. If you're Spence, you may need to back off just a bit and not allow Porter to impose his will as much. As we enter round five, this one's scheduled for 12. What a barn burner so far, Miguel. It's been incredible action and incredible pace that both of these guys are setting. Porter. Coming forward. But now Spence. We're seeing Spence be more offensive here in the fifth to start the round. And Porter is so awkward and athletic that it's hard to keep him off of you. Stop! And it's, kind of, my it's, my it's hard to go. dictate you know, where Porter's going to go next because he just he dances around so much. He moves you know, almost like a bull in a china shop. You don't know where he's going to go. He's so wild that it's so hard to anticipate where he's going to go. Well, Arrow's going to have to set some traps to get Porter run into some things. And now they're both. Both of you stop, both of you stop, both of you stop. That breeze separates the two combatants. Porter goes sometimes to his right, to his left. Pivots, he's so unorthodox. A champ followed by a straight left from Errol Spence. Oh, Lord. a windmill of a straight left. Stop, stop, stop. That misses not, for not Spence. Box. Errol's been looking for that left hand all night. The big left straight. He's just missed a couple of times on Porter. Just over the halfway mark of the fifth. There's a nice jab by Errol. At 
this pace, this being the Spence. So Porter, I don't know if he's taking the round off or he's trying to regather himself, but this is where Spence needs to go to work. This is more of Spence's round. This is where he wants the fight. And back comes Porter. Look at Porter go. Porter is like, as you mentioned, a stop. bull in a China shot. What action. There's so much on the line between these two. Porter, 31 years of age. Porter, or Spence, 29. Both of these guys are in tremendous shape. But at this pace, I wonder who is going to fold a little bit early. Who's going to get tired? Who's going to have to take a round off at the pace these guys are setting? A nice straight left that got his destination for Spence. As Pull your arms out, fellas. Pull your arms out. Jack Lee's letting that fight out of the brakes. Inside work. Pull your arms out, Sean. Porter is just leaning on Spence. Might be trying to take him out off his of sorts. That was a nice left hand from Spence back Stop in the way. That's the end of the fifth. Order my fight against Errol Spence Jr. on Showtime pay-per-view now and be ready for fight night. Come on, step out, all right? Get going straight back. Keep moving, you step out. Let's take a look at something more. There's that straight left by Errol. Just dancing around beautifully, staying on the outside. That's exactly Spence's game. A tactician to the finest degree. Staying on the outside, using the jab, comes with the straight left, goes downstairs to the body, and avoids Porter's wild movements. Since this one is scheduled for the run, we have the WBC championship on the line as Spence goes to work, tattooing the body of Porter. Derek James told Spence he is hurt or he's tired. Hey, 
partially grazed Spence. Spence attacking the body. Spence does a great job at making sure that Porter's on the end of his punches. Porter might have gotten hurt from a straight left to the bottom again. Oh, there's a big straight left right on the jaw of Porter. And Porter ate it. I'm calling a few folks. donuts on my off day. <laughs> Porter's eating a lot of shots now. Spence starting to take over here in this welterweight unification matchup. With Porter, the pace he set in the first four rounds, it's just so hard to maintain that for the full 12. Almost impossible. Come on. Coming up. Alright, stop, stop. Listen to me. Both of your trunks are high, so it looks a lot lower than it is, and you and I, you can't push him to the ropes and hit him. Box. Good instruction by Jack Reese to both. There's a straight left to Jack, followed by the straight left to Spence. Now Spence is just able to pick his shots. Dart in and dart out. And as we talked about, if, Spence, if Porter allows this, Spence will pick him apart on that. Let me tell you, though, put your arms out and work. This is favoring Errol Spence. Porter, in order to win this fight, we knew he's going to happen to come and use his physicality. Go to the body. Push oh, the right oh. hand. That connects the corner, but back comes Spence. And this is some of the back. That's you, Spencer, right on. I mean, uh, sorry. A big right oh, hand for Porter. Two big right hands here in the eight. Maybe that might be what Porter needs to jumpstart and change the momentum of this fight. Well, it started off going back and forth. Porter had it. Spence regained it. We'll see if Porter can retake it. Stop, my break, my break. Step away from each other. Stop with the bell. That's the end of the eight. with the jab, but the big left, both guys connected on lefts. And then here's the overhand right that connected flush for Spence. Very surprised Spence did not get wobbled there, but then he answered right back the one to the body of Porter. Again, more action. Boom, big right hand. And I think this is a very close fight. I'm glad I'm not a judge. I'm glad I'm not Ray Dan Seco, Larry Hazard Jr., or Steve Weisfeld because, oh boy, do they have their work out for It's been a tough, difficult fight to score. It hasn't been the prettiest fight, but nonetheless, it's been action packed, and it's what we expected. It's what we expected from a Porter Spence fight. Order my fight against Terrence Crawford on Showtime pay per view now and be ready for a fight night. Two of the division's best fighting each other in the primes of their careers, both champions. This was expected. Round nine. This one's scheduled for 12. Porter starting out jabbing. Neither man is running away with this fight, I guess. No, neither. You, they've had good moments, both fighters. If you're Porter, you want to replicate similar to what you did in that last round. He, he became a little bit more of a boxer, less of a brawler, but yet he still used his physicality. Let him nice go, right let him go, Sean. Porter, we have seen him make the adjustment. We talked about the adjustments. Could he do that? The straight left that connects Brandon Spence Jr. right on the chin. And but Porter is starting to box more and then brawl. It's not brawl first, then box. It's box first, then brawl. Exactly, and that's what he needs to do more of. And that worked for him in the last round. And I think that's an adjustment he needs to maintain. There's a straight left that found its destination for Errol Spence. Oh, what a number cut by Porter. Porter by Errol Spence hurt. Oh, my goodness. There's again, Porter is connecting flush on Spence.
Spence. You wanted accuracy, Miguel? You got accuracy from Sean Porter. This is what we're used to seeing from Porter. This stop, is stop. what he wrestles. Stop, his trainer, stop. Kenny Porter, Except talked me. about. Well, look, you don't stop Andre Berto, and that was a very big victory for Sean Porter. Not many people can be able to have that distinction. Porter is a guy who knows how to take you into those deep waters, as does Spence. <laughs> That's what Porter said. He said he was going to drown Spence in those deep waters. And now Spence, a little bit of lack of activity from the IPF welterweight champion. Right hand that found its mark. This is a war of attrition between these two welterweights. Both fighters and go. Stop, living stop, stop, on the stop, stop. inside right now. Now, when you're down on there, don't be punched. Go home like that, you know. You almost wonder if Spence is just kind of trying to coast out of this round and if he was really hurt by those shots off the board. We'll go back and take a look at him now. Spence with pinpoint accuracy. Aim at a T on the head. On point, they both not nail each other. This is Russian second robots. There go toe to toe with Watson White supremacy on the line. Spence and Porter are delivering. My break, my break, my break. Let him go, Sean. Let him go. Don't worry, don't hit him. That's the end of the nine. Well, this, the momentum is starting to swing back in favor of Porter. He's landed a couple of brutal shots on Spence. Stick. Take a look, Miguel. Hi. A straight left by Spence. Was another left that he just clipped the top, but it was an oh. overhand left. Porter was not even looking at the target and connected flush on Spence. And here's a right, right in the face of Spence. The shoulders and head. There you see Jack Reese going to the corner of Spence. Let's take a look at that uppercut again. As we see, oh! Oh my, that'll wake you up in the morning. There was less of an uppercut, more of just a straight left that knocked Spence back. And there you see Spence dancing in his corner. He's starting to get that second win. He hit the bell. The crowd erupts for the 10th round. And you heard Jack Reese who won the corner of Spence. Watch the head and the shoulders. This is the kind of fight that he wanted. He said, I'll fight Sean Porter. I want to prove that I'm the best in the division. So many big names. Danny Garcia, Danny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman. Also, Terrence Crawford out there as well. And they're both swinging for the fences. Look at this. This is what a big price fight here in the City of Angels is all about. You got you it, want deep. drama? You got it. You got to dig deep in these moments. I know you're tired. I know you expended most of your energy, but you got to find a way. It's when you can get that second and third win. This is why you train so hard. Look at these two gladiators. Stop, stop. My break, my break is time. upon one another. And now you can see Spence is starting to fight more of Porter's fight. This is what Porter wants. Close quarters battle, almost like a phone booth fight. 100 seconds left here in the 10th. Spence with the right hook to the head of Porter. Porter, he is doubled over. But back comes Porter. Errol, let him go, Errol. That's you holding. And there's a body oh, shot. A big shot that appeared to hurt Spence. Porter seemed to stop Spence in his tracks with the body shot. Stop, stop. My break, my break. This action we get is just unbelievable. It's almost as if Errol goes, throws a flurry, lands a couple of nice shots, and then Porter goes, throws a flurry, lands a couple of big shots. The reason why 
there are thousands here at Staples Center and millions watching around the world. These are two of the best in boxing colliding. All right, stop, my Greg. Nobody punch. Here tonight. Should we hit with a head? Okay, you pulled them in, though. You pulled them in, though. You all right? You guys okay? Nothing. Box. There you see Jack Reese letting the judges know it's a head butt. Not a punch. And then coming into this side, I think you expected a couple of head butts. What a straight left for Spence. But Porter ate it well. These two are hammering away upon one another. Look at this work race. Oh my goodness. Damn, what a fight. As we enter the championship rounds. Incredible action and incredible pace. A small cut from an accidental butt. He's cut, small cut. Here is some of the body work again. Right here, here's Porter. This is the one that really hurt uh, Spence. It knocked him back. You almost see, saw him let out a gasp on that left hook to the body. But then Spence recovered and he answered back. And then this is where Porter wants the fight, right inside like this. Right. And then there's Spence with the right hook landing flush on Porter. Both these guys saw their moments here in that 10th round. We talked about it being a loaded division. We get a look at those names. Incredible. You got Manny Pacquiao, Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, Garcia Ugas, who Porter fought in his last bout. Sergey Lipinets is on the rise. You got Jamal Shango James there as well. I mean, talk to Bob. Not, Not an easy fight. Well. Not an easy fight at all in that division. And there is the cut on Errol Spence. As the true cut, I believe that's the first time he's been cut in his professional career. But you heard Reese warn the judges that that was from a headbutt. That was not from a punch. Both off balance there was. And now Chance of Porter echoing here at Staples Center, Los Angeles. Sean Porter has won over a lot of the crowd here in LA. But you hear the cheers now of Spence drowning out those Porter cheers. We have been treated to a sensational price fight here at 147. Now here on the championship rounds, Ray. This fight is so close. You don't really know what the judges are scoring. Well, it depends on what you see. But right now, Errol Spence and Sean Porter both want to make definitive statements in these final two rounds. These two rounds could very well determine who comes out on top. And there's Porter pressing the action against Spence along the ropes. Look at Porter go. Oh, they are picking up and they are swinging for the fences. Stop, stop, my break, my break. Neither guy wants to move. Neither man wants to give one each. Nope. Halfway mark of the 11. Shot to the body by Spence.
fans, it's about to go down and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet five to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? Right here, Spence was just able to time this perfectly. A short left hook on the chin. There you see Sean Porter was on Wobble Street. He tried as hard as he could to stay on his feet. Boom. Unreal oh timing. Unreal accuracy. But that's what Spence has in his tool bag, and that's what he predicted. And there's Kenny Porter, the father of Errol Spence, or the father of Sean Porter. Boom! Oh my! Anybody else we get would have been out. Flatline, flatline. But Porter got up and knew. He told Spence, he goes, "Let's go!" Right after that. And now it is round 12. Let's see what Porter brings in his tool bag. It's the 12th hey. and final round. Hey, let's go, baby. The City of Angels here in Hollywood. You on high drama? You got it. Well, to a unification on the line. Right for us, Miguel Porter's Errol Spence, Sean Porter. Porter's got to add a hand for Porter. Porter's got to empty the clip. He's got to let it all hang loose in that 12th round. Big right hand for Porter. Back comes Spence. Look at Spence go. They are both fighting at such a high level. Both men know what's on the line here tonight. A loopy left just missed. Voice. Porter knows he's looking for a knockdown. He's trying to match Spence. Porter trying to get that knockdown back. Big straight left for Spence. Spence sensing that he could very well put out Porter. But back comes Shota. Double, double right hook. And that back to Porter. Now Spence walking to the Akron, Ohio native. A right hook for Spence. Porter trying to answer that. Big right hand. There he answers back on the button. Porter, Porter is relentless. Porter is nonstop. Spence got tagged with that big right. Porter's got a little over a minute to do some damage. Back comes Spence though. Hammered away upon Porter. Porter answers Sean, back. Said, Stop. It's Stop. a battle of wills. It's a war of heart. It is the pursuit for championship greatness. A legacy fight. What a straight left for Spence. There's a right that connected for Porter. Porter is not to be denied. This is why prize fighting is the greatest form of sport and entertainment in the world. Bar none. These men are leaving their heart and soul in that ring. And Porter continues to press forward, but Spence throwing as he's backing away. He's what trying to finish Porter. Oh my goodness! They both are going toe-to-toe -to -toe here in Los Angeles. Look at this! Spence has his moments. Rip it away. Back comes Porter. There's a right hook chopping at the chin of Spence. Final 10 seconds. We will let the crowd enjoy this. Oh, my goodness. What a world title fight. Absolutely incredible action, Ray. This surpassed expectations from what we thought this fight would be. Both men laid it all in that ring in order to become and unify the IBF and WBC World Welterweight Championships. What a fight we can talk us through this. There was Porter, he knew coming into this 12th and final round, he had to come up with something big. He was emptying 
emptying the tank, trying to get Spence to the canvas. He was unable to do so, but he hit him with some shots that would have put down a lot of welterweights in this division. What a fight, Miguel, and you know what? I know that we are a ways away from the decision, but I want to see that again. I don't know who doesn't. Absolutely incredible action. Both men gave everything. And this is what you asked for. You couldn't have asked for anything more here between Porter and Spence. Right here, here's some of the highlights. And that was a straight right by Porter, timing it up, staying within those close quarters. But Spence, he proved his worth here tonight. He fought Porter's fight a majority of this, this fight, and he did not crumble under that pressure that Porter brings. Arrow calculated, relaxed, composed, but I feel like at points of the fight, Arrow wanted to fight Porter's fight to show him, I can fight your fight, and I can beat you at your game. He did it with Mikey Garcia. He wanted a stronger one. He was a technical guy. He fought Mikey Garcia's fight, and he still beat him. Now coming in, everyone said he can't brawl. If you brawl, you'll muck it up, and you'll give Errol Spence difficulties. That's Porter's way of winning. Errol said, okay, all right, I will muck it up with him as well, and I'll prove to everyone that I can win in any way that you throw at me. Unbelievable fight. Spence, the IBF champion, will he take home the WBC crown? Sean Porter, will he take home the IBF crown? Well, to wait, unification, just winning judges at ringside. Ray Dan Secco, Larry Hazard Jr., and Steve Weisfeld. Those are your three judges for this matchup. Tell after that, that that knockdown, when Porter realized it, the, the distraught on his face. And now we'll set it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of ringside, Ray Danseco scores the bout. 116 to 111 in favor of Errol Spence Jr. Judge of ringside Larry Hazard Jr. scores about 115 to 112 in favor of Sean Porter. And judge at ringside Steve Weisfeld sees it 116 to 111 in favor of the winner. He is now the WBC and the history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up. Beat him up. Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. Back ringside here for round number two of... <laughs> And there's a right hand from Crawford. Let his combinations go. Beautiful right hand. And the chance gets to him. Do we have 28 right here? This fight is also Thundering in. Look at Crawford. Vicious attack to close it. His wife, Isha, missed. Said to his corner, what happened? Boom. And you know, that shot wasn't even on the chin. 
As you can see, Kell Brook was moving forward. He shot a jab out there. Crawford timed it over the top with a nice, short, I would say jab, hook. At this point, the fight was as good as done because Terrence Crawford is one of the best finishers in the game. You can't be hurt like that. WBO welterweight champion of the world. I'm Terrence Crawford, and on July 29th, I will be undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Order my fight on Showtime pay-per-view. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape here for this, our co-main event. You see that Vargas, 13 years older, the height and the reach advantage in favor of the former super featherweight champion of the world in Francisco Vargas. So Vargas here at 135. He's been here at this weight for quite some time. The rules, no three knockdown row, no standing eight count. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. The fight is official after four rounds have been completed. This crowd continues to file in here to the Toyota Center in Houston. Francisco Vargas ready to go. He looks in very good spirits. He's extremely relaxed, and I'd say that he's probably in the best position mentally that he's been at in quite some time. Two fighters, two Mexicans getting ready to square off here at 135. Neither man wants to take a step back. You see that Vargas is from Mexico City. For Isaac Cruz, he's also from Mexico City. And Isaac Cruz, he looks to be in impeccable physical shape. Last time we saw him, March 13th, win over Matias Romero. This one is going to be an excellent affair. And it'll be curious to see if Vargas can withstand the firepower of Isaac Cruz. And will Vargas have enough pop to keep Isaac Cruz off of him? A 61% knockout percentage for Francisco Vargas, 65% for one Isaac Cruz. And Cruz only five foot four inches tall, but you know what? He's not, he said, I've been fighting taller guys my entire life. That does not phase me. Isaac Cruz inside the ring. There's Francisco Vargas. And we are set and ready to go with our co-main event intro. Here's Jimmy. Well, fans, from the Toyota Center here in Houston, Texas, premier boxing champions continues the action with a highly anticipated co-main event of the evening. Introducing our three judges once again, all from the state of Texas, Jesse Reyes, Randy Russell, and Eva Saragossa. And introducing our referee in charge of the action, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, James Green. All right, fans, here we go with the co-main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in a lightweight special attraction. Introducing you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with silver trim, hailing from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at already 134 pounds. His record stands at 27 wins, two losses and two draws, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBC number seventh ranked world contender, introducing the former WBC super featherweight champion of the world, introducing Francisco El Bandido Vargas. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction wearing blue trunks with white trim. He also hails from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at a trim and ready 133 pounds with a record of 21 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the exciting and relentless WBA number three and IBF number two world ranked lightweight contender, introducing uh, Isak Pitbull Cruz. Once again, referee in charge, James Green, now to give instructions. 
Okay, gentlemen, I went over the instructions in, both, in the dressing room with both fighters. I want you to protect yourself at all times, and at all times, obey my command. Touch gloves, back to your corner. It is our co-main event, Isaac Cruz, who is 23 years of age. He has been surging as of late. Now he has his most high-profile opponent in front of him in Francisco Vargas. Well, Francisco Vargas turn back the clock and find that fountain of youth here at 36 years of age. We're about to find out. Isaac Cruz giving up four inches in height to Francisco Vargas and immediately charging right after the former super featherweight champion of the world. Cruz wearing the blue and the white, wearing the black and the silver of Vargas. Both men from Mexico City. Cruz going right after Francisco Vargas. Vargas tying up with him right. to try to throw off his rhythm. Double left hook there by Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz immediately wants to tear your head off. I mean, he comes at you, and Vargas tying up Isaac Cruz. Again, as a way to disrupt the rhythm and the flow of Isaac Cruz. Punch out, punch out. The body right. is Isaac Cruz. And oh boy, a takedown there. Vargas trying to push the head down of Isaac Cruz, but in the process, Cruz ended up on top of him, and now the referee. No way, no way, okay? Let's keep it clean. He had to get in there because it was getting a little bit chippy. There's a shot below the belt there by Isaac Cruz and over and right. Cruz comes out and throws with venomous intentions. Right. Almost a clash of heads. Vargas is tying up and trying to discourage Isaac Cruz. Cruz is a young, hungry pit bull. Right. I got you. I got you. Let me have it. Let me have it. And Vargas holding on that left arm of Isaac Cruz. This is scheduled for 10. Will it go that way? I don't know. Will it go the distance? Who knows? Watch out. Right. Vargas seems more interested, it appears, as about tying up instead of boxing in and letting his hands go. Right. And it's not one of those items where one guy is a southpaw, the other's conventional. I think that's just a tactic that Vargas is using to try to discourage Isaac Cruz. Right. I got you. I got you. Let me have it. Nice combination there by Isaac Cruz. He threw with that left hook. Digging in with that left hook to the body as well. Good work, a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Cruz loading up on that left hook. There's an overhand right. A big right hand smacking into the face of Vodka. That ends the first. We'll take a look at some of the action. And there was the takedown there. As Vargas, though, he tried to push down the head of Isaac Cruz. You see right there, he tried to push down the head, and then, boom, they, they feet, their feet got caught together is what happened. But Vargas tried to push down the head of Isaac Cruz. Middle distance. One, two, three, and then get out of the way. He's already trying to tie you up, and he's already coming out with this nonsense. Throw hard. Relax. So we are on to the second round. Already the corner of Isaac Cruz telling him, listen, he's already starting with his antics. You got to throw one, two, three punches, throw them hard, and then get out of the way. Do it at middle distance. We'll see if Isaac Cruz decides to listen to his father. There's a left hook that caught the attention of Vargas. Punch out, punch out. And again, Vargas right. is tying up 
Isaac Cruz. The left hook to the body by Cruz. And he's throwing that big left hook. There's an overhand right over the top. Imagine how big of a puncher Isaac Cruz is. Right. Ranked number two in the IBF at the moment. All the belts held by Teofimo Lopez. Lopez came down with COVID-19. His matchup against George Cambosis postponed. Let me have it. And again, Vargas holding on and tying up Isaac Cruz. Double jab there by Vargas. If you're Vargas, though, jab, use the ring. I mean, the fact that you're an Olympian, you just got to deal with this young, hungry lion that's coming at you, but use your boxing skill. Set traps. Use your jab. Attack the body of Isaac Cruz. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to double up on the jab is Francisco Vargas and Cruz having some difficulty at least to try to get evaded and close the distance. Watch out. What Vargas has to remember right. is remember, you, right you know, out. you are the taller man. Go, you have go. good boxing skill. Use that jab to disrupt the rhythm and the flow of Isaac Cruz. Use your jab, use your reach, and stay out of the way of danger. Obviously, easier said than done. There's an overhand right on the ear, partially blocked by Vargas. 75 seconds to go. Watch your head. I got and you. storming right into Francisco Vargas is Isaac Cruz. The referee warns him about leading with the head. Punch out. Break. Let me have it. Let me have it. There's a right to the body by Isaac Cruz. Under 30 seconds to go here in the second. Keep him up. Well, Vargas has given a better account of himself here in the second. But a lot of holding still. And the referee is certainly going to have his hands full in this co-feature. That ends round number two. Now on to round number three. This one is scheduled for 10. Isaac Cruz, Francisco Vargas. Cruz ranked number two in the world in the IBF. All the belts held by Teofimo Lopez. Secondary champion is Devin Haney. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Break! Right. Let's go, let's go. Total punches as you see. 39 of 113, Vargas, 34, there's a big shot. Cruz, he has Vargas hurt. Vargas is hurt. He got lit up with a combination. Can Cruz now, that's the first time Vargas has been buzzed here in the fight. Big right hand by Isaac Cruz, now ripping the body of Francisco Vargas. And now Cruz barreling into Vargas. Get him, get him. A minute 10 has come off the clock here in the third. But for the first time, Francisco Vargas has tasted the power of Isaac Cruz. A little bit of swelling underneath that right eye. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Midway point of the third. You hit up. There's a left hook, and going to the body is Isaac Cruz, but Vargas working the body of Isaac Cruz. See, body punches, obviously a clear disparity favoring Isaac Cruz, 14, just one for Francisco Vargas. I think Vargas is using these first few rounds to try to figure out the rhythm, the timing, the pacing, and the power punching of Isaac Cruz. There's a big right hand smashing right into the jaw of Francisco Vargas, right. and Vargas ties up again. 
under a minute remaining here in the third. The corner of Isaac Cruz urging him one, two is what they want to see. Watch out, watch out. Break. Watch your head, my friend. Watch your head. Referee once again telling Isaac Cruz about leading with the head. There's a shot right to the abdomen, a jab by Isaac Cruz. Vodka staying on the outside. I understand why Vodka is reluctant to throw because of the power punching and the dynamite in the hands of Isaac Cruz. Final moments of the third. And that'll end round number three. And Francisco Vodka is telling the referee, hey, he's leading with the head. I'm Earl Spence Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford. On July 29th, I, I will be the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. We'll take a look at some of the action from the third round. There's that left hook and bang, that overhand right by Isaac Cruz and then unloaded that left hook as well. That's the one that stunned Francisco Vargas. Vargas would try to throw himself, and there's a left hook to the body, but a big overhand right. I mean, he literally has bricks in his hands, does Isaac Cruz. He's so much fun to watch, and he's only 23 years of age. And again, the referee steps in between them. Ray Flores ringside here in Houston at the Toyota Center. On to round number four, this one is scheduled for 10. Right! Man, man. There's a left hook for Francisco Vargas. You see the total power punch has landed 52 of 125 for Cruz. Vargas 43 of 112. They're relatively similar, but I would have to say making the more, the, the bigger shots is obviously in favor of Isaac Cruz. So the numbers can be deceptive, but yes, you see not necessarily they're close when it comes to connect percentage. Break! I got you, watch your head. Referee warning about the clashing of the heads. Off his head. Off his head, I got you. Again, Isaac Cruz, they, it's been the kind of fight where they're both, oh, big right hand spraying, that caught Francisco Vargas. Over and right by Isaac Cruz, just over the midway point of the fourth. And now Cruz looking to close the distance. Can he hammer away upon Francisco Vargas? And Vargas ties up again. I'm a bit surprised that at this juncture that the referee hasn't warned Vargas about excessive holding. Because he's the one initiating it. And he looks at Vargas, but he has not admonished him yet. There's a left hook connecting for Isaac Cruz under a minute to go here in the fourth. There's a right hand by Isaac Cruz. Cruz again storming right into Vargas, leading with his head. I'd say it's a, a different fight is what I would have to say. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Cruz with the right to the body of Vargas. Opposite, opposite. 20 seconds to go here in the fourth. There's a left hook for Isaac Cruz. Right. Both coming forward. Still to come, Jamal Charlo, Juan Macias Montiel here. This crowd is going to erupt when Charlo makes his ring walk here at Toyota Center. That ends the fourth. Take a look at some of the action. There's a big overhand right spraying Francisco Vargas. Thank you. 
Get in with the body. Get in with the body. Round number five. This one is scheduled for 10 between Isaac Cruz and Francisco Vargas. Well, I'm giving them so far, I would have to say that it is, you know, clearly in favor of Isaac Cruz, this fight, but because he's the one who is initiating the action, Vargas, though, is showing that he's not going to be ran over by Isaac Cruz, and now they're mixing it up on the inside. Okay, here we go. This is what fans want to see. Vargas walking towards Isaac Cruz, trying to drive him to the perimeter of the ring. But back comes Isaac Cruz. Good jab there by Cruz. See, total punches landed 67 of 212. Vargas 65 of 233. Connect percentages of 31% and 27% for Vargas. So numerically, they are close. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Vargas, again, they both are tied up close distance. Okay. Now the referee warning Isaac Cruz, and will, they will go ahead and continue again. There's a left hook. We'll see what Vargas can do here in the second half of this fifth round. A, a cut or swelling right. outside the right eye of Francisco Vargas. We'll see in between rounds. Trying to see from our vantage point. See what happens here. There's a big right hand by Cruz, and Vargas hit it well. I got you. I got you right here. I got you. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Body work, and yes, that right eye, there's some blood outside of the right eye of Francisco right. Vargas. Yeah, this is customary for him. He cuts over the course of his career. He's a known bleeder, is Francisco Vargas, especially on his eyes. Now that he has Mike Rodriguez in his corner again, Mike's going to have his work it out for him. Final moments of the fifth. And there's a left hook smashing into the jaw of Vargas. And that ends the fifth. A cut outside of the left eye of Francisco Vargas. Also, I think the right eye has got some issues as well. He's cut on both eyes. Boy, oh boy. That is problematic. Throw a punch. Yes, sir. Throw a punch. Mike Rodriguez working on both eyes. And one of them could have probably been from our, at least our guess, is possibly from a headbutt. Let's go back and revisit some of the action, and that was the headbutt. And then you saw the blood streaming from the eye right after that. So that's where we thought that the cut took place. We're in the second half of the fight between Isaac Cruz and Francisco Vargas. And Vargas is cut above his left eye and his right eye. Mike Rodriguez had two Q-tips with both of his hands working on the eyes of Francisco Vargas. Round six, this one is scheduled for 10. Ray Flores here in Houston. We're here for the homecoming, the world title defense of Jermall Charlo as he'll put his title on the line against Juan Macias Montiel coming up next. Wherever you are around the world, we thank you so much for tuning in tonight, or this afternoon, wherever you are. And the referee steps in between them. We'll separate both fighters.
And I have Isaac Cruz winning every single round. And Cruz has been in no danger whatsoever. We'll see if Vodkas can do something of significance here in the second half of the fight. Good jab there by Vodkas. A left hook, followed by a sneaky right hand. One of Cruz is slowing down. He's known as a power puncher. There's a nice right hand, a good combination there by Isaac Cruz. Midway point, now they're mixing it up. Vodkas is staying in the pocket more. If I'm him, you got to be cognizant of the power that Isaac Cruz has. So stay in the pocket more, and that could be an issue. You're really playing with fire if you decide to do that. There's a left hook. And what they're telling Isaac Cruz is use middle distance, use mid-range. Be mid-range on that one. Under a minute to go here in the sixth. Vodka is staying in the pocket more, possibly from his confidence growing. And Cruz's corner telling him, attack the body. Beat away on the body of Francisco Vargas and attack the body to handle falls. And now Cruz muscling Vargas against the ropes. And back he goes again. The referee separated them and he goes right back at him. They have so much respect for referees in the sport because they don't have an easy job at times. Final stages of our sixth frame. All that talk that caught the attention of Vargas. To the seventh we go. Going listening to Francisco Vargas. The Cubans doing a very good job on above both eyes. Mike Rodriguez is taking about 20 seconds on each eye, putting pressure and seeing which one is affected more. But the blood is not necessarily, hasn't been a factor at all, impeding the vision of one Francisco Vargas. When you're cut above the eye like that, it is natural for the blood to seep into your eye, impairing your vision, and that's dangerous against any fighter, especially of the caliber of Isaac Cruz. But that has not been an issue. And credit to Mike Rodriguez for really doing an exceptional job. Round seven, this one's scheduled for 10. I have it totally in favor of Isaac Cruz, but Francisco Vargas, though, he's hanging tough. He's a former super featherweight champion of the world. He has got a lot of um, experience. Just over the 30-second mark, there's a jab right to the body by Isaac Cruz to Vargas. And now Vargas, Cruz body shots by Cruz, 38 to just two for Vargas. What a disparity. Now Vargas looking to tee up. There's a nice right hand by Vargas. Vargas looking sharp here in the seventh a little bit. Back comes Cruz. He throws that wicked left hook that he sits down on and just winds up. There's a left hook followed by a right to the body by Isaac Cruz. A left hook to the body by Isaac Cruz. We're coming up on the 50% mark of the seventh. There's a left hook that caught the attention of Isaac Cruz. 
You know, for Isaac Cruz, learning experience when you're dealing with a veteran who's as crafty as Francisco Vargas. You know, Vargas knew well, there's no ran right there by Cruz. And Vargas willing to stay in the pocket. He wisely ties up. It's interesting because typically Vargas was of the ilk that I'm willing to engage in a firefight. He did that against Burchelt. He did that against Takashi Miura. He did it against Orlando Salido. Now, I think the focus is preservation, fighting smarter and not harder. But when you're dealing with someone like Isaac Cruz, who is just an aggressive, hungry fighter who wants to tear your head off, well, I mean, this is the time to implement that strategy. But Vargas isn't winning rounds in many rounds. If he has, maybe one round at best. So what do you do to try to turn the tables to where you find that happy medium where you're boxing well, you're preserving yourself, but you're also letting your hands go? Final moments of the seventh. On to the eighth. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet five to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? From the seventh, there's uppercuts there by Cruz and then shots to the body he was just unloading as Vargas holding up one of his arms and there's that left hook bang and Vargas took it well right in the button and now Vargas threw a nice uppercut here the right uppercut got through the guard of Cruz Cruz eating it well Throw, throw, The air that you're making is that you're not, you're staying in the pocket too much. You throw and then you sit there. They want Isaac Cruz to move more, to stay at mid-range, throw punches, and then get out of the way and then go back to it. Round eight, this one's scheduled for 10 between the number two ranked Isaac Cruz in the IBF, Francisco Vargas, former super featherweight champion of the world. Here's a jam right to the body by Isaac Cruz and a left hook that backed up Francisco Vargas. And now body work by Isaac Cruz. And tying him up is Francisco Vargas. And you see total punches landed, 131 of 377 for Cruz, 117 of 428 for Vargas. A 34% connect percentage for Cruz, 27% connect percentage for Vargas. Vargas unloading. He eats an overhand right from Cruz. Cruz has his back on the ropes. I know if he's slowing down a little bit. Right! I got you. One hundred seconds to go here in the eighth. There's a right to the body by Isaac Cruz. Vodka's complaining about it being below the belt. I have Cruz ahead by a comfortable margin. Maybe give one round to Vodka's at best. There's a straight right hand there by Isaac Cruz. We'll see if Cruz, there's a left hook to the body. If Cruz has that ability to kick it into his second and third gear and try to turn up the heat in the ninth and tenth, but again, charging right into Vargas. And a lot of holding in this fight. Under a minute to go here in the eighth.
Isaac Cruz. Just one defeat, he suffered that years ago. There's a left hook to the body by Francisco Vargas. Isaac Cruz slowing down a little bit. He's the one now who's inviting Vargas to come after him. There's a right to the body, followed by an overhand right from Isaac Cruz. There's a, another right to the body by Isaac Cruz. He's just been pounding away. There's a left hook that caught the attention of Vargas. A loopy left hook, smashing right into the jaw of Vargas. We head towards round number nine. Good body work to end the round by Isaac Cruz. And coming up, it'll be this man, the WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jermaud Charlo. There's his brother, Jermel, as well. They are twin brothers. They both hold world championships, Jermel. And there is Juan Macias Montiel, who is looking to become a world champion and fulfill his lifelong destiny. Two more rounds. Use your left hook. One, two. Good crowd here at Toyota Center, home of the NBA's Houston Rockets. Isaac Cruz, the last time he lost was back on February 6th, 2016. Over five years ago, that being a unanimous decision defeat. We are on to the ninth round, and in my estimation, big overhand right that caught Francisco Vargas, a left hook as well. And now Cruz picking up his aggression, and that's what I was wondering as we head towards these final two rounds. Will Isaac Cruz try to step on the gas to try to finish off Francisco Vargas, which would be extremely significant here in this fight. And actually in the career of Isaac Cruz. It's another high profile opponent. He wants to be able to finish him off. But Francisco Vargas is durable indeed. You see the total punches landed, 146, 422, 34% connect percentage, 126 of 481, 26% connect percentage for Vargas. But Vargas has been finished off. Miguel Burchelt did it twice. Left hook there by Cruz. Cruz, a couple of left hooks on the chin of Vargas, followed by a left hook to the body. And now Cruz letting his hands go more. Now they are just going at it on the inside. And the fans enjoying what they are seeing here at Toyota Set. Vargas cut early over both eyes. 70 seconds remaining here in the ninth frame. Under a minute left here in the ninth. There's a left hook by Isaac Cruz. Right. Wrestling on the inside. Nice right hand by Isaac Cruz. Now Vargas picking up the pace a little bit. Under 30 seconds remaining. Double jab followed by a right hand by Francisco Vargas. The big right hand by Isaac Cruz to end the ninth. That was a seismic shot. How Vodka's remained upright, unbeknownst to me, as we head towards the 10th and final round. Let's... 
He doesn't have the conditioning nor the wherewithal to stand up to your shots. Watch the throw. Change up your one, two, right to the body, and then move. One, two, then move. He doesn't have anything. Throw. One, two, and then move. Use your intelligence. Tenth and final round in what has been an interesting but exciting co-main event between Isaac Cruz and Francisco Vargas. You heard the corner, the father of Isaac Cruz, telling him, go to the body and then move out of the way and then throw more. Pick up the pace. This guy doesn't have anything left. He said you're letting him off the hook. There's a right hand that might have buzzed Isaac Cruz by Vargas. I wonder if Cruz knows that he is, or that Vargas knows that he buzzed Cruz. I thought that Cruz got buzzed, which is why if you see, Cruz isn't coming with as much ferocity as he was in the previous rounds. Now tying up. At this point, if you're Isaac Cruz, I think you're in a conundrum. One. You want to go and get the finish, and if you can get a finish over Francisco Vargas, that leaves an impact on the rest of the division and amongst the boxing world because Francisco Vargas is a former champion, even though it was a weight class below, and is, he was a name. But if you decide to be a little too aggressive, this is boxing. You can get caught, and you could put yourself in a position to be in a dangerous spot and maybe get caught with something that you don't see. So that is, I think, the mindset and the conundrum that Isaac Cruz is dealing with as we have 91 seconds to go here in the 10th. There's a nice one, two punctuated with the right hand on the jaw of Francisco Vargas. Right. Well, I think there's a question of could Francisco Vargas take the punch and the power of Isaac Cruz, and he has answered that with a resounding yes. Now, has he won many rounds? In my estimation, no. I think maybe one or two rounds at the max. But for Isaac Cruz, it's a learning experience. He's only 23 years of age, and he's ranked number two in the world in the IBF ranking, so a win would certainly keep him there, maybe even elevate him to the number one spot. And now blood streaming outside of the right eye of Francisco Vargas, but thankfully that the both cuts up above his eyes, the left, oh boy. Now that might have been a clash of heads and this could be an issue and oh, how bad. Final 30 seconds. Time being called. Well, this is unfortunate. Oh, that's nasty. Oh my gosh. I think you have to stop the fight at this point. That is a nasty cut. That is awful. We'll take a look at it from above. I think it was from a clash of heads. Yep, a clash of heads. This fight might have to go to the decision, but that's nasty. Could he continue? That's in such a bad spot. Yeah, he's got 30 seconds, but you don't want it to be. I mean, it, I mean, he can't even open up his eye. I think this fight has to be stopped, and you have to go to the scorecards. That is such a bad cut. They're going to let the fight continue? Wow, I am perplexed. And now Cruz going right after Vargas. He's bombing away on him. Final 25 seconds, Cruz bombing away. The fans here erupting here at Toyota Center. Look at Isaac Cruz go. Vargas, oh, is that a knockdown? Yes, it was a knockdown. He's calling it a knockdown. He called it a knockdown. The first knockdown of the fight. Literally, blood streaming outside of the eyes of Francisco Vargas. That ends the fight. Vargas upset that it was called a knockdown. What a wild conclusion to this co-main event.
there they embrace the Cruz family. That was wild between those two. And we'll take a, we'll revisit the clash of heads. And this is from our overhead look, boom, the clash of heads happens and immediately blood starts streaming outside of that right eye of Francisco Vargas. Absolutely unfortunate. I mean, as if he hadn't been cut enough. Look at it, boom, oh, just horrific. He's gonna have to get that stitched up and worked on after the fight. I mean, Francisco Vargas is known to be a blood and guts warrior, and again, he lived up to that moniker. And here was the knockdown. We'll see. There's a headbutt. Okay, they're going ahead and they're tying up two headbutts again. Oh my goodness, a left hook, followed by a right. Body work. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Vargas, let's see it again. Another clash of heads. It's like three or four headbutts. Four headbutts. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. I don't think that was a knockdown. I thought it was from like four or five headbutts. And Vargas is like, what, what else can I do? I've been hit with four or five headbutts. Well. It's unfortunate, but I think it's academic. Even with that 10th and final round, punch stat numbers, 188 of 548, 34% connect percentage for Cruz, 148 of 586 for Vargas, 25% connect percentage. Power punches, 165 of 384, 43% connect percentage for Cruz, 135 of 360 for a 38% connect percentage for Vargas. Jabs, 23 for Cruz, landed 13 for Vargas. Body shots, well, 62 for Isaac Cruz, just two for Francisco Vargas. And now here's Jimmy. Should we have a unanimous decision? Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jesse Reyes scores about 97 to 92. Randy Russell sees it 99 to 90. And Eva Saragossa scores about 100 to 89. All three in favor of the winner, Isak Pitbull Cruz. So Isaac Cruz with a unanimous decision win over Francisco Vargas. A big victory for the 23-year-old out of Mexico City for Francisco Once in a generation, the time has come. a fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, the most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up! Beat him up! Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. Exciting night, the fans are here. The champions are in the ring. Errol Spence and Danny Garcia for the welterweight championship of the world. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the spectacular AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, Texas, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, promoted by TGB Promotions, Man Down Promotions, and DSG Promotions, as sponsored by proper number 12 Irish whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. And O'Reilly Auto Parts, order your parts online at O'ReillyAuto.com and get free curbside pickup. This bow is sanctioned by the WBC, the president in attendance, Mauricio Suleiman, along with the IBF, the president is Daryl Peoples. Judging at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Barry Lindemann, and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the highly anticipated showdown between the battle of pound for pound greats 
for the unified WBC and IBF welterweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with white trim, fighting out of and representing his home of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He weighed in at 146 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 36 wins, two losses, with 21 wins coming by way of knockout. In his 10th world title appearance, and having captured the unified super lightweight and welterweight titles, tonight he attempts to regain and reclaim the welterweight crown. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the renowned top-rated world contender, the acclaimed former two-division champion of the world, introducing Danny Swift Garcia. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with pink trim, fighting out of and proudly representing Dallas, Texas. He weighed in at a ready 146 and one half pounds, truly one of the stars of boxing and pound for pound greats. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 26 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in a remarkable return to the ring, he is making his fifth world title appearance. Defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, here is the former U.S. Olympian and current sensational reigning and defending undefeated WBC and IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing the truth, Errol Spence Jr. And referee in charge, now to give instructions, Thomas Taylor. Marker. Okay, corner. Trunks are a little high, so I'm going to give him to the middle of the letters here. He's also going to get to the middle of the letters here, okay? Trunks are a little high. I gave you instructions in the back, gentlemen. Protect yourselves at all times and listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. Tonight's odds are provided by Fox Bet. If you bet $100 on the favorite, that's Errol Spence. You win $25. If you bet $100 on Danny Garcia, he's a big underdog. You'd win $250. The payout, $350. And we are trending number one in the United States on Twitter. Welterweight Championship of the World. Danny Garcia says, I believe I can hurt him. The first round, vitally important to see the effects of that car crash on Errol Spence and the strategy of Danny Garcia. We're underway, round number one. Spence pressing forward already behind the jab. Garcia fires a right hand back. Garcia wants to dictate the pace. He normally takes the air out of the ball and will slow things down. He is content to counter punch in most of his fights. Yeah, it's kind of hard to uh, you know, give a guy pressure in the first round when he's pressuring you. And uh, Spence is really doing the right thing. This is how he fought. This is how he fights. I agree 100%, Lennox. And Danny Garcia would be wise to take his time here and at least size up what Errol Spence has got and land when he can and defend himself when he has to. Spence already able to land that jab to the body, and he is active with that jab. It's an effortless jab. Right hands to the body from Danny Garcia, able to land a few of his own. Now, it's worth noting that Danny Garcia is 5-0 and against Southpaws. He's fought five Southpaws. He's 5-0 and against them. Now, he's never fought anybody exactly like Errol Spence, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a little feather in his cap right here. He's never lost to one. Yeah, the last Southpaw that he, he boxed against uh, was... Um, Ivan Redcatch. And, uh, you know, he was practicing the right hand to the body, so I'm expecting the right hand to, the, to uh, Spence's body right now because he's been practicing that with the last Southpaw, so he's going to do it with this one. You know, Garcia able to block that, that left hand to the body. 
uh, Errol Spence is the most accurate body puncher in boxing. He is able to land with that left hand continually, and Garcia able to block that. That could be significant in this fight. There's a shot that landed from Spence. Good combination. Well, Spence landed, but Danny Garcia connected with a counter right hand left hook. So, you know, this is what Danny's good at. You touch him, he'll play tag with you really well. Spence. He doesn't want to sit on the ropes, I can tell you that, Brian. Spence coming in with that left hand charging hard but you're absolutely right Garcia will do subtle things that are sometimes difficult to see comes in with that right hand to the body but he is able to respond and counter punch effectively he'll counter right hand drive Spence back there's another example of it Spence landed the straight left of the belly and, and and Garcia countered with the right hand up top do you think he can hurt Errol Spence I mean everybody can hurt everybody Joe but you know do you think he can actually land and hurt Spence it's hard to hurt Spence he's been hit by you know some of the best guys in the division I've, I've really never seen him hurt a lot of tension in this building, I can tell you that. Yeah, but Danny Garcia, like any time he's showing his punches, he's showing his punches with his body behind him. He knows how to use his, his weight. He does. He does. That's why Thurman said he's the hardest hitting guy he's been in the ring with. Garcia able to land with the jab to the body. The left hand there from Spence. Spence is usually content to slow. And there's a right hand from Garcia straight up the middle, able to land. And, you know, Garcia's right hand is not coming straight. It's coming, it's like a whipping right hand. And he throws it very well. Yeah, he knows how to fight a southpaw. And, and uh, Spence is, uh, again, trying to put on that pressure. But he's got to be careful not to get put by a counter punch himself. Final seconds there of round number one. We'll take another look, and we'll try to get Sean Porter's prediction now, right? We've yeah. seen one round. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 Errol Spence with a jab. Danny Garcia parried it and missed with the counter right hand. Here goes that body shot. Garcia throws that little chopping right, and then a left hook that landed on top of the head. So that's what he'll do to you. And there's that little sweeping right you were talking about, Lennox. But see, Danny Garcia knows how to fight a southpaw. And, you, you know, you got to use the lead right hand at the right time, and he does it. And the other thing that Danny Garcia does is he'll move to the left hand of a southpaw, which is completely opposite of what you're taught normally. And, uh, you know, southpaws expect you to go to their right-hand side. And if you change that up like Garcia does, it's a little confusing for southpaws. Spence is totally committed to the body. Ten of his 15 landed punches were to the body, and sometimes they're hard to see. But even in that exchange, you can see Spence is able to snake in a shot and land a good body shot on Danny Garcia. You're right. When he goes to the body, he usually lands. It's rare that Errol Spence misses with a body shot. And he outlands against everybody, Joe. It's remarkable. Like, what he did against Mikey Garcia was, was incredible. But he, is able, he's, he just outlands everybody. He's probably going to outland Garcia. It's just a matter tonight if Garcia can do damage to the shots he lands. You're right. Yeah, but, you know, Garcia is a very tricky fighter, and he, he moves well, and he, he tries to set traps for his opponents. He, just when you think you have him, and you're getting him, he comes out with a with a punch, a left hook or right hand. Or a body punch. Uh, we will find, by the way, I hope Kate Abdo is up there uh, recording the predictions now for <laughs> Sean Porter, because we, we believe Sean is ready to make his prediction. So that's it for round one. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure there there is information to be processed after round one. So Lennox, you first. What did we learn in round one from the fitness of Spence and the strategy of Garcia. No, I expect Spence to come out like this, and I expected Garcia to come out like he Ooh. did. Like I said, he's going to pick his moments. He hasn't he hasn't reached that moment yet. He's still checking out uh, Spence and, and seeing what he can do, but he's just, you know, warming up into the first couple rounds. But Spence looks like Spence, doesn't he, Joe? I mean, that looks Absol like Errol Spence. Ab absolutely, right. and, and that's kind of what I said going into this thing, and I agree with Sean. Give him a round. Let's see what... What, what Errol Spence ex looks like exactly. And he looks like just that nice left hand right there. He looks like his old self. He's putting on pressure. He's taking chances. He's looking to win this fight. I, I don't see any hesitation in his style or his demeanor at all. You know, you know, Spence, if you watch Errol Spence against either Kell Brook, Mikey Garcia, uh, Sean Porter in the early rounds, you'd say, hey, this is competitive. He has his hands full. And then in the later rounds, he busted up Brook, made him quit, befuddled Garcia, and knocked down Sean Porter. So if this is what we see with Spence now, he usually gets better and better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's true. But, you know, again, Danny Garcia is probably in the best shape of his life. He'll be good down the stretch himself. 
that doesn't mean that Errol Spence can't, uh, you know, put some real hurt on him and stop him later on in the fight. That could happen. Oh, cut caught in there. A little off balance with the jab after he threw the haymaker right hand. Yeah, he was but, able to drive Spence back a little bit. That could be significant. Yeah, right. that was a good haymaker left hand by Spence. Now, uh, the probability of Spence knocking stop, stop, Danny stop, Garcia stop, 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 stop. out, I might add, I don't think is is high. I, I think this is a is a long distance fight. These both of these guys are very savvy and very experienced. I thought that was and, interesting in the last few not seconds. Prone to though, get knocked out. Right, like I just to see Danny Garcia able to get physical, land a shot, drive Spence back. Again, that's a little more information to take here. And oh, that's clearly after the bell. I believe Danny Garcia outlanded Errol Spence in that second round. Uh, er Errol Spence uh, is rarely outlanded on the CompuBox stats as we watch here at the end of the round getting physical. Now it's late. That was nice. See, Danny Garcia is smart. He's crafty. He's cunning. And uh, he hits hard. And I, I like what Sean just said. And who better to tell us what's going on in the ring between these two guys uh, since he's been in with both. And look for Garcia's point, right, not to go away quietly. Indeed, there it is, 8-7, and punches landed for Danny Garcia after getting outlanded 15-9. to nine. Not that that means that the winner of the CompuBox numbers wins the round, but it can be indicative of what happened. And if you're a Garcia fan, I think you could be slightly heartened, Lennox, possibly, by what you saw there for at least that 30-second stanza. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, he's going to pick his, his, his spots. The only problem with that, what he did, he hit him after the bell. You know, he tested the chin after the bell. You got to test the chin while the round is going on. I was going to see it goes down. No, that was a trip over the Oh, yeah. Front. Yeah, I just oh. got awkward and went down, of course. Which happens all the time, most of the time, with uh, when you got an orthodox boxer and a southpaw boxer. Uh, they always mix, mix their feet up. See, Danny Garcia has been real clever here right now. And look at him. He's coming in with the 1-2-1. One, one. He's starting off with the jab right stop, hand stop, and stop, finishing stop, stop. with yeah, the jab. Yeah. And that's kind of bothersome for Errol Spence right now. Yeah, they're both going to the body. Again, Spence is the best in the world at throwing body shots. Look at that jab. It's beautiful as well. And he's such a complete boxer. But there's a hard left hand by Errol Spence who drives Garcia back. To the body. He hit him to the body for sure. And, Errol, and Danny tried to counter and fell off balance. Errol has deceptive power, doesn't he? I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't have that body where you think he's going to hurt you. It's a hard right hand by Garcia. But he is able to really lay the wood to you. Yeah, he, he's putting his body behind his punches as well. He's, he's, he's launching that, that left hand from far and is, and is coming far and it's landing. Spence, yeah, is dig yeah, Spence is digging in. Yeah, I don't, think here. I don't think there's anything deceptive about Errol Spence's power, to tell you the truth. I think it's a proven commodity and that you, uh, anybody that's going to be in there with him, if you're a coach on the other side, you know that he's a dangerous guy at all times. Well, it's an accumulation of power. You know, it's not Tommy Hearns on Pequino Cuevas. You know, no. it's not he got starts you with one shot. But obviously, well, he look, can, he, 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 put, will, he can put you down. Oh, look, he did, he did it to Sean Porter. Uh, he did that late, but it was an accumulation of punishment. I mean, look at the physiques of the guy. You, you could say that. See, I like what Eros Spence is doing right now. He's close to Danny. He's got his hands up high, yeah. and he's, yeah. he's basically yeah. putting, you know, pressure on him. Forcing him to either throw a punch so he can do something off of that. Good jab work there by Errol Spence. He spins Garcia around and he continues to punch. Hey, that's fair game. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, Spence was good. He didn't hit him behind the back. He aimed for the front of the head. Yep. Absolutely not a dirty fighter. Again, he was hit after the belt, too. So he could try to return the favor. Danny, Danny, as they get into a wrestling match here. In the final seconds of round number three. Spirited action here in the first three rounds of the welterweight championship. And we are going to go into the corner and listen to Angel Garcia here after three rounds and see what he says to hey, his Jim, son. Top of the nose. Not the rope, Jack. The one on the rope, not the rope. You hear me? Not the rope. Like breathe. No, a little cut, like a scratch. It's a little baby scratch. Little Listen. Scratch Just so you know, he's got a cut on top of the nose. I ruled it from a punch. Okay? okay he's dipping and slipping, make him pain, though. You're giving him too much confidence. Back him the fuck off. Be smart, Danny. Don't jump out. You guys out. know this cut is from a punch. I'm yeah. On the nose, okay? Danny, it's not a cut, Danny. It's a baby. It's, Don't worry about it's yeah. a baby it's nothing. But, but, but let's stop on that. I got it. What are you waiting for? I know. I got Danny. It. It's in here. Danny, don't jump straight back. Right. Okay? Keep circling on him, Danny. You got to make him pay when he, when he throws go under him. Work with him. 
Okay? Don't you give him too much respect. Keep your hands up. Huh? Fuck this pussy up, man. Order my fight against Errol Spence Jr. on Showtime pay-per-view now and be ready for fight night. Yeah, that cuts nothing, Bri, and, and Angel's right. I don't think it's a factor at all. Yeah, there's but still I, a lot of talk about cut. There's a yeah, cut, there's a cut. cut. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, where? where, where is it? Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what. What's what's more threatening than that cut is the way Errol Spence is putting on pressure right now. Yeah. And look, uh, Errol Spence outlanding Danny Garcia, only 10 to 9. And again, that, that's not the norm. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Larry Hazard right now, see how he scores the first three rounds. Larry, how do you have it? Well, you guys are doing a great job analyzing this thing. I got Spence ahead 30 to 27. Danny Garcia is going to have to take a page out of Sean Porter's book and jump on top of Spence and take this fight into the trenches if he expects to win. Right now, Spence is having his way. I got him three rounds of zero going up. Larry, thank you very much. Yeah, look, that, that could be definitely the way. Possibly second round could go to Garcia. Joe Lennox, would you have any rounds going to Danny so far? No, not now. Like I said, you know, Spence is controlling the fight with his jab and he's controlling the distance and he's throwing good combinations. When, when you, when you step in with the jab like that, Danny Garcia is just moving around. He's, he's, he's trying to find a way to counterpunch. Good hook there by Garcia, at least uh, landed slightly uh, on the side. And there's a body shot, a little right hand to the body and then the head. To answer your question, it's, it's hard to ever argue with Larry Hazard and I completely agree with him it's look it's uh, right now with Sean Porter or, or sorry Porter, it, it's Errol Spence that is really pressing the action here that's taking the fight to Garcia and uh, he's the one that looks like he's winning the fight and Angel said look you got don't give him so much respect right so he's asking him to get in there close oh, right he, he understands what he's looking at right now yeah, you know, the size difference, on the, the height difference really makes a matter uh, difference as well because, you know, with Arrows throwing that jab, you know, it, and Danny boxing against a guy that's a great jabber, plus he's taller and he throws a lot of punches, you know, it's kind of difficult for Danny to really uh, focus on what he needs to do. What he needs to do is really come back with the punches like his father was saying. Don't give him those free shots. Don't step back too much. Better off stepping to the side, which he did. And Errol Spence just, Lennox makes that so difficult. He's so active. That jab is long. It's strong. It's snappy. There it is right there, bouncing off the head of Danny Garcia. And at any moment, he will throw that left hand to the body. There it is. A good uppercut as well. Then Spence is number one in the welterweight division in punches per round. Punches landed per round, jabs landed, power punches. And body punches. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's, he is number one. His accuracy in his body shots, also number one in a star-studded division. But yet you see punches landed, 43 to 35. That's not a wide margin. Garcia tries with the right hand. Spence comes firing right back. Excellent work rate by Errol Spence. Right hand was blocked. And that to the body. Garcia stays active. Let's go to the corner of the champion. Listen, when you throw the jab, don't push it out there. Keep it, keep it popping. Don't get too comfortable with it, all right? Keep shooting the stick. And listen, step over and start shooting that. Around here. He's number five, coming up six, coming up. I don't know. Coming up on five. Coming up on listen, five. Listen, listen, listen. Now I gotta be six. Listen, He's keep that, keep that stick popping, right? And then this, he's looking for the jab, start sneaking that hook around the side. You got to shovel, shovel to him, or you got to throw a wild one, one of the two. You make the decision. Well, listen, and also yep. when you get on the side, he make the move. So just step around. Don't shoot the shot when he's there. Step around and hit him on the side, all right? You're making him dip down, so when you get, shoot the shot when you get to the side. Don't shoot the shot over his head, all right? So I think like six. Six is six. This is towards the end of the round, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this, is a, this is a little looper around the guard of Spence in Atlanta. And then he goes back down to the belly and hits him really solid. I mean, he's got to do more of that if he wants to, you know, win rounds here. Because right now, Spence is out working him. Yeah, but not, it's amazing, Joe, to me, what the copy box numbers are, are always so widely in favor of Errol Spence. Even against Sean Porter, where Porter was throwing bombs. But the punch differential, the last three rounds has been by one punch. 8-7, 10-9, 13-12. And that means Garcia is in this fight. Now, I'm, I'm just, well, that doesn't you, mean everything. I mean, you can see the numbers, but what 
when you're watching the fight, you're calculating who's winning. Yeah, but also, look, Garcia's landing those shots, Joe, is what I'm saying. He's landing meaningful shots. I know that, but I'm just saying, you can make an estimation by the end of the round who won that round, whether you look at a punch stat or not, can't you? Absolutely. Oh, but what I'm saying is normally, even in a close round, like against Sean Porter, oh, that's a good hard left hand on Garcia. It, Spence would have this wide discrepancy. I mean, he just outlands everybody. And here, Garcia is able to stay in the fight. Now, I don't know if he's taken any rounds, and I think Spence is getting the better of it, but Garcia is very much in this. At least by the copy box, that's a little... The punch has landed. It's a bit surprising. Yeah, well, you know, the judges don't... Uh, aren't privy to the punch stat numbers, so they have to actually make an opinion-based scoring. Right, but wouldn't that favor the puncher, right? And there's a good hard shot by Garcia. I think, I think that favors Spence, because if you're a judge looking at this, it looks like Spence is winning round after round, okay? I don't disagree with you, All right. but I'm saying some of the harder shots are being landed by the counter-punching of Danny Garcia. I agree, and he's just whistled one right back. And, there, and there's two right there that just landed from Garcia. I agree. Lennox, bail us out. Yeah, no, they, they're attacking the body very well. I mean, both guys are, are scoring points. And, uh, you know, oh. I think, oh, great, great combination by Spence right there. You know, Danny needs to move that head a little bit and not get caught. Like That's that. a whistling left hand right there. And Lennox, what did you say to me between rounds? This is fine. No, 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 we're yes. in the fifth round. Yeah, we're in the fifth round. I can't believe this. There, there, is, there is tension in this building, as I mentioned. There's intensity in the ring. It's an interesting fight. Uh, Errol Spence, number one, looks like the Errol Spence that we saw oh. last September. Oh. Wow, right hand over the top well, by Garcia, but it missed. Well, no, I'll tell you what. Spence landed one, and Garcia countered, and it looked like it wobbled him right there against the rope. Uh, unless my eyes are deceiving me, I'd like to see that on the replay. We'll take another look at that. I thought it whistled over the top. Yeah, I thought it whistled over the top, too. All right. Double up on the jab. Stop, stop, stop. He no caught point. him. He caught him. He did a little bit of a Texas two-step there near the rope. Yeah. That's See, that, right that's hand. the punch, the sweeping right hook. And he's got the sweeping left hook as well. It's a natural punch by Danny Garcia. Another interesting round, and in this case, the punch has landed in the fifth, 20 to 9 in favor of Errol Spence. And that is the norm in an Errol Spence fight. Let's go back now and look at the end of this and see where did that right hand go. That was the right hand that went over the top. Well, Spence throws, and boom, oh. there, it, it hit him. Of course it did. That's a 10 9 round for oh, Joe Goose. It was a glancing uh -huh. shot. Well, you know, with a whole bunch of knuckles in that glance, all right? Joe, you won that one. Good job. I tell you, at your age to see that, that's well done. Where are you, bro? <laughs> you near me? <laughs> that wasn't that flush. <laughs> All right, so live this way. Yeah. Okay. Tell him, Lennox. All right. Okay. No, I All thought right. it whistled over this the top, and that, that did graze him. Yeah, yeah. So now, would you give her any rounds to Danny Garcia, Joe? Just unofficially, what are your thoughts on this? No? God, I just, right now, I just, you know, it just on, on appearance alone, it just looks like Errol Spence is, is winning these rounds. Yeah, he is winning these rounds, but uh, Danny is very much in the fight. Oh, line. without a doubt. And, and yeah. look, he's going to have to do more of what he needs to do and that's he's got to land his own punches and maybe hold his ground a little bit more we're in round number six we are flying here welterweight championship of the world and look larry hazard just gave that last round to danny garcia interesting good hard body shot there by garcia that's all good stuff right there that's Gar garcia's doing and he's got to keep it up and uh, really make an impression on the judges that, uh, you know, he's not just doing it for a couple of seconds here and there, but that he's doing it during the course of the round. You've got to make it emphatic that you win a round. Errol Spence had said that, you know, he wasn't looking to try to avoid any of Garcia's shots in particular. He said, we'll see what kind of power he has. He just wanted to flow, kind of get the computer readout on Garcia in the early rounds. And again, he has such a high boxing IQ. He usually comes on stronger and stronger, and his form holds throughout the fight. A lot like Floyd Mayweather in his patience and his acumen throughout the fight, his determination. He stays consistent round after round. Good body shot by Spence. And Spence is just ripping these shots. He's putting everything behind it. He looks like he's just starting to even get more warmed up. And... You know, you know, we know Errol Spence. He's really hot down the stretch. Yeah, Errol Spence wants to put him against the rope, but Danny Garcia is not st not standing for it. 
Garcia tries with the right hand. Another jab falls short from Spence. But you see, that, that fa Danny Garcia's eye is getting marked up, not closed just yet. But that jab has found a home right on the eye, the left eye of Danny Garcia. Joe, what, what should Danny Garcia be doing? Well, you know, he's, he's, he's doing what he normally does, which is block and counter, slip and counter. He just landed a nice uppercut hook out of that corner before he got off the ropes there. But Spence comes right back and gets everything back. So everything you touch him with, you know, and Garcia tries to counter, Spence comes back and gets it back again from you. So it's a give and take this round. But what, what should uh, Garcia be doing more? I think he's got to hold his ground a little bit more and try to land some thudding hard shots, see if he can put some real damage and hurt Spence with something. Well, pulling jab out there for Errol Spence as he has now outlanded Danny Garcia, see, 76 to 52. See, right now, you know, Danny's holding his ground right there. Errol gave up some ground and is backing up a little bit. That's where, you know, uh, Garcia should really take advantage of that. You know, punch when, when Spence gives you the, the opportunity to do it. He yeah. tried to get those body shots in on Garcia. He was able to block one of them, but a lot of those Ooh. shots are getting through. Right hand counter and a left hand counter by Spence right away. But Danny landed a good straight right. Yeah, no doubt. And then he landed one a little loop around the uh, around the gloves of Spence. And then ate one. Yeah. And they're good exchanges here. That's what makes this a great fight yep. right now. I'm Earl Spence Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford. On July 29th, I, I will be the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Well, here goes Spence right here. And it gets blocked by Garcia. And then he lands that little short left one that he threaded the needle with. And again, right off the uh, right off that eye with that left hand by Spence. But Angel Garcia said something in the corner. It's kind of what we talked about the last round. Danny Garcia's got to hold his ground. He goes, you can't back up against the southpaw. It just won't work. And he, he's got to jump on him like we were talking about. He's got to do more and hold his ground more and land something of consequence. We're in round number seven, and you see the punches landed right there. Let me just, I want to get this out, Joe. I'm not some slave to copy box like that's how you decide to fight. I didn't. I, I'm, I'm just, I want to set that straight. But this is a guy who outlanded Mikey Garcia, who was a lightweight champion, 345 to 75. I'm just saying, Listen, Spence really outlands his opponents. I, I, okay, we announced that fight, and, and I was there, and Mikey Garcia did not do a quarter of what he normally does in any fight. He, he was very intimidated by Errol Spence, and he fought a very defensive fight. That's why he didn't throw a lot of punches like he normally would. Well, yeah, but I agree Spence with Joe is, there. But, well, what? If, Don't yeah, Spence, do that. Out, <laughs> Spence outlanded him like five to one, is what I'm saying. It's fact. Uh, Let's go to Larry Hazard. Larry, how do you have it? I have it 59-55. I gave uh, Danny Garcia the fifth round. Hey, look, guys, what Errol Spence is doing. If Danny hits him twice, he hits Danny three times. Right. This is what Errol Spence knows how to garner the judge's attention. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. If Danny can't get on top of Errol uh, Spence and take him into the trenches, he's going to lose this fight on points. Yeah, well, it's just a situation where, you know, uh, Spence throws a lot, a lot of punches around. And he's not stopping it. He's keeping up the volume. The volume is, is what is allowing him to win this fight. Yeah, his work rate has been terrific, especially given the car accident, the year off, the shutdown, all of that. And he is right back to work. And he is aggressive, dedicated, right hand there from Garcia. Uh, but he is relentless. And again, usually it gets more and more in his favor as the rounds go on. And, and might I add, you know, Larry Hazard, I think, summed stop, that stop, up stop, perfectly. Stop. That's why I call him the Professor Larry Hazard. It was right on point, and it's what the judges yeah, are seeing. He was a judge, he was a commissioner, right no he's clock. done it all. And he knows that. that the judges are going to be okay, duly impressed by Errol right? Spence hey, and his Errol, pressure and his output okay? right now. You good? Heads clashed right, there. Go. Tom Taylor taking a, a good long look at both fighters, no cuts. Again, we're flying. Round seven, we're yeah. in the final minute already. So this fight, it's, it's dramatic. Uh, yet, yet it could be a clear points win, but we don't know just yet. Garcia. Oh. Uh, we wonder if he can slap it into another gear. We're getting into that territory where he, he might have to. And, and is he capable of throwing caution to the winds and coming in? Yeah, Danny's. this is where he should be doing some work, right here. Why not? The other stuff ain't going to work for you. And you can hear the desperation on 
Angel's, uh, his dad, Angel's voice in the corner. He knows he doesn't like what he's seeing here, and something else has got to change for Garcia. And that's what he's doing right there. Danny is staying in the pocket now, and he's able to land that shot in a body shot. Two right hands to the body in the final seconds of that round. We're through seven. And here we see a great combination by Spence throwing five punches. One, that's two. Three. Four. And that's it. Five. Garcia, Garcia here throwing some combination at the end of the round. Good combination. But, you know, he stopped at two punches and needed to throw more punches. But he elects to go to the body. That's been working all night for him. But use your feet to do it. So by using your feet, you're not in front of him, all right? Taking pose, he's still alive. He's still got some shit he's trying to throw. Keep the focus. Well, they knew it wasn't going to be easy. No. You know, when, you, when you're going up against Danny Garcia, you knew it was going to be tough. Uh, the good news is now we're through seven. And Errol Spence Jr. looks like his old self. No ill effects from the car accident, from being thrown from his Ferrari. He has outlanded Danny Garcia 92 to 61. And he has just shown again that, you know, active jab, controlling range and distance, and an outstanding work rate as well. Garcia in the fight, but it appears he's being outboxed by Errol Spence. Well, Errol Spence is just shadowing Danny Garcia along the ropes there. Garcia got off the ropes. He just turned around and came right at him. He's uh, he's really applying the pressure in this round in particular. Uh, he's just getting a full head of steam right now. Even though Danny Garcia tried his best in that last round to offset some of this pressure, he's going to have to do more. Garcia tries with the jab. Yep, goes in with the hook, lands a hook to the body. Errol Spence looks like he's trying to get close to Danny Garcia to, to throw some type of um, uh, left hand or left body punch. He's already in range right there, and I don't know why he isn't letting his hands go a little bit more. His arrow's right there. Well, it's a, you know, it's just not his identity, I guess, Joe. I mentioned earlier, right, like with Sean Porter or Pacquiao or Thurman, like volume is there, pressure fighters, but that, that's not Danny Garcia's game. Yeah, but Danny Garcia is waiting for Arrow to, to, to commit himself. He's waiting for that, that one mistake so he can take advantage of it. I but he can be, be waiting all night and it never happened. Yeah, he needs to create some openings for himself. I mean, Spence is just too smart. I mean, I, that's that's right. That's not going to happen. And that was the big question coming in. You know, would you know would you be able to take advantage of this guy? That's unlikely if he's 100. percent And Spence looks 100. percent Look at that chair. Beautiful work. Neither fighter has been knocked down as a professional. These guys are both mentally and physically tough. Spence, though, has made guys quit in the ring. Yeah, look, Spence is, is really, really starting to put a lot of leather on Danny Garcia. That was a good body shot as he exited. You can see that eye, that left eye for Danny Garcia starting to close up a little bit, taking a beating, and now he's pinned up against the ropes. Let me tell you a, a, a mistake that Danny's doing. He's allowing Spence to be first. Every time they, they come out of a clinch and go back, Spence is the one that's, Errol Spence is the one that's starting the action and ending the action you can, and starting the action again. You can see Spence Lennox, like, just building momentum. You know, if Danny is going to stay stationary and not throw, uh, Spence will just take over. He'll, he'll just smell that. Yeah. Doubles up on the jab and then throws a left to the body. Yeah. yeah. When somebody's throwing a lot of combinations at you, mentally, you just go into a defensive mode, and Danny's right into that defensive mode right now. Able to clip it with the right hand and tries with the overhand right. That was just a lot of superb work. I was going to say, Spence. Angel Garcia's got to be really sweating in the corner right now. Damn. Can't be happy. In the ropes, he's letting you pity pat him. He's pity patting you in the ropes. Stay in the middle of the ring, man. You gotta, you gotta pick it up, dude. Okay, let me see the puzzle. Let me see that. Let me see one. Let me see one. Let me see one. Let me see one, Bill. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see, Bill. I know. Give him water. Give him water. Gentlemen, I've got a cut over here on the other corner by a punch, just so you know it's been ruled by a punch. All right, thank you. Damn. You gotta let you gotta start letting pity pat you in the fucking corner. You hear me? Hit it with the end yeah. Hit it with don't the end Don't let him beat him, Patrick, you, Dan. You hear me? Mm -hmm. 
He's pity painting you, dang. Don't let him pity paint you, dang. Get the truck off the road. Dale duro, que no está dando duro. Hey, dale duro. Joe, Joe, I got to ask you. Yeah. With the ref coming over and telling each corner that the, the other guy's got a cut, is that right? Well, what he's telling them is that it was caused by a punch, not a headbutt, so don't complain about it. it it's 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 a legal punch, legal, you know, the cut's not uh, caused by a headbutt, basically. We're into round number nine, and Jordan Plant is there uh, near Errol Spence's corner, and Derek James Jordan. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Derek, are you liking what you're seeing from Errol so far? I am liking what I'm seeing. He's breaking him down. He's, he's like, he took the fight out of him, basically, but he still has some fight in him. He's going to keep trying with the lucky shot, but just got to stay composed and stay focused. Is there anything Danny's giving you guys that maybe you didn't expect? No, we knew he had a heart. We knew he had the skills, but he never was able to get into the fight. The jab was the key to everything, and just keep popping with the jab. Listen, but listen, you got to... Thanks, Coach. Brian, back to you. Jordan, thank you. Look, and I think in the last round, we saw... Danny Garcia's energy on the wane for the first time, where he ju the energy level just seemed Yeah, he was lessened. subdued. He was subdued. Right. You know, he's thinking about it. You know, there's a lot, lot on his mind. Yeah, he's not, he's not hearing what he needs to do. Things are not happening for him that he wants to happen. You know, obviously he wants to catch Arrow uh, with, with some good punches, and, and he's not. The only, time, the only way he's having success is to the body. And Spence is just relentless. And, just so, and, such a good work rate. Errol Spence has sapped a lot of energy out of Danny Garcia by the pressure he put on, by putting him on the defense, by making him sweat it out because he's really a very dangerous guy in front of him, and he's landed a lot of punches on Danny Garcia. So, you know, there's a reason why Danny Garcia uh, is a little hesitant, a little tired right now. Good combination there by Garcia. It would land with at least one right hand. And Spence right back to work with a, a jab and a left hand. And you can see that that eye is closing. I mean, he's doing damage to Garcia's face. And, and look, I, you know, if I were Errol Spence and I were in his corner, and, and I think Derek, uh, Derek James told him, I would just keep that relentless pressure on like he did the last couple rounds. Don't even slow down here a bit. And, you know, try to go for the knockout. I mean... Right, I tell you what, he's capable of it. Yeah, I mean, I was. I, that's what I said. I said he's going to pressure him and he's going to go for the knockout because he learned a lot of uh, different things, especially from the Mike, Mikey Garcia fight, where he looked back at the fight and said, "Hey, oh, he maybe let him, I, he let him off the hook." Yeah, he let him off the hook, and he was supposed to, you know, do a lot more damage than he did. Yeah. Well, against Sean Porter, that 11th and 12th round, he put the pedal to the metal. I mean, he just he got after it. He knocked down Sean Porter in the 11th and in the 12th. He was going for the knockout. So he, was, then, he, know, he, going, he got after it. He was going for the prize. The prize is the first one to knock out Sean Porter. That's what he was going for. And look, that, that's why he's a pound for pound star. Look, and Terrence Crawford's in the audience. Right? You've got everybody watching. The world is watching. And so far, it has been a marvelous performance for the welterweight champion. Can you please stop looking at what Just mentioned like Terrence Crawford comes off a, a win. Against Cal Brook, and he's already throwing jabs. <laughs> Say this, this is what he's got to do. This is right. what I would do. Well dressed. You got to remember, Crawford can go left-handed and right-handed. So, look, and Terrence is saying, "What? Are you booing me? Are you really booing me?" <laughs> hey, boxing fans! It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet five to instantly get 150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? So there goes a little reach around right under that elbow of uh, Danny Garcia. Is that straight little left hand? I mean, when you land stuff like that, you know you're really doing well. And let's see about Danny right here. Okay, he got a nice right hand in finally. Those are too far and few between. If he'd landed more of those, he'd probably be in this fight. And you know, I don't think I've seen Danny Garcia's face like that before. Yeah, no. You, I, I, I was going to say, you know, when you're halfway through the fight and your eyes are a little puffy, that kind of, you know, yeah. he looks, hurts you a little bit. He looks beat up. I, I haven't seen him beat up. And look, Keith Thurman almost hey, took his head off water. early in that fight. But I haven't seen Danny beaten down like this. Round 10, now in the final three rounds. Errol Spence has looked terrific. He's outlanded Danny Garcia. And a lot of the starch has come out of the challenger. 
Let's go back to Jordan Plant. She's with Angel Garcia. Go ahead, Jordan. Angel, you were telling him he's given Spence too much confidence. What does he need to ta do to take that confidence back? Well, I think they need to pick it up a little bit. He's not, he's not. I mean, he's doing good, but he could do better. What do you think it is that's making him not go as fast as you want? Danny's a counter punch. He's waiting for the right shot, but I tell him not to do it. I just hit him wherever you catch him. Are you worried about the eye? No, yeah, the eye's okay. The eye's just a little bump. The eye's good. All right. Th boxing. Thanks, Coach. See, he, his father knows that yeah. he's a counter puncher and he's waiting for that opportunity. But sometimes you got to make that opportunity happen. Yeah, look, they, had, they knew that going in. I mean, they had to know that going in. Against the guy, the level of Spence, that you weren't going to be able to just sit back and, and make him pay. Errol isn't going to sit there, you know, and take a picture after he lands on you. Now it's on. Well, I don't know why Errol's backing up there. I mean, he, he's got a lot of energy left. Uh, he hasn't taken a lot of punches in this fight. And I just think he should be present, Danny. Why let him back in the fight to do this to you? I, I'd be a little irritated if I were Derek James in the corner. Why give him a break? Why give him any chance to get momentum going? When you're just yeah. breaking him down, right? And his, yeah. and his only shot is to land something really hard and yeah. maybe stun him, put him down. Uh, we haven't seen him really close to that in this fight. But you could tell Angel's very disappointed right now. He's had, he knows it's been a difficult fight. Errol Spence has really brought his A game tonight. And, you know, Danny's got to be in great shape to take some of the punches he's taken and to hang in there as much as he had. But, you know, if Danny uh, wants to do anything, he's got to land something very substantial, something that will turn the fight around. Like that. Oh, that's a right hand. That landed flush on Spence. Quick right hand from Danny Garcia. Yeah, but Danny, yes, here. Danny did the right thing. He took a step over to the left and, and threw the right hook. Did it again there, partially blocked perhaps. Yeah, when you do things like that, you know, you, you catch, you're throwing a punch where a guy doesn't real. Right, you're throwing a punch where, uh, you know, it's coming from a different angle where a boxer's not expecting. Garcia trying to turn this around, but he is he's gonna have to do much much more yeah. Just thought we had a chance there is to see Spence covering up and again normally and you watch a lot of Errol Spence fights it, it gets worse and worse for his opponent as the rounds go on and he just doesn't change a bit It's a beautiful look right there at AT&T Stadium and the fans still buzzing fans back in this building and a virtuoso performance so far by the champion Final seconds here. Let's go up top. Kate Abdo and Sean Porter. Thank you very much, Sean. Of course, you know what it's like to be in a fight with both of these men. What are you seeing so far? I see Errol Smith Jr. doing what he's what he's used to doing, and that's taking off near the end of the fight. Now, however, I do have him losing the last two rounds, and that's because he's taking his foot off of the pedal a little bit. But it, first time back, you're going 12 rounds. Maybe you, you, you're saving something for the end of the fight. But his consistency throughout the fight is what's having where he's had his most success and he's been the most consistent, and that's why he's winning the fight. How clearly do you have him winning this fight? I have him clearly winning the fight. I, I, I've only given Danny Garcia, I believe, uh, four out of the now 10 rounds. So, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't write that one down, but um, consistency from Errol Smith Jr. is key for Errol Smith Jr., and that was what I wanted to see from the real Errol Smith Jr., who we see tonight. Brian, back to you guys. Okay, Sean, thank you very much. Now, again, the strategy going in, what, what Angel Garcia, what you know, Sean was talking about before the fight. Now, Angel Garcia saying, hey, we're not running. You know, we'll do everything in the pocket. We'll control the pace. And we all, I think, collectively wondered, hey, do you think that's going to be enough to beat this guy? And take a look, Larry Hazard has only given, well, two rounds. All right, seventh round as well to Danny Garcia. So that's two rounds. Sean might have four. Um, so that's a little bit closer. But it has been Errol Spence's night tonight. Yeah, Errol Spence has been consistent and persistent with his punches. You notice Arrow isn't backing up this round. He came out because he probably heard something from uh, Derek James in the corner, like, what are you doing, you know, letting the guy back in the fight, even winning a round there, maybe, possibly. You, you go back out there, you got six minutes left, two rounds, six minutes, finish the fight strong, and see if you can take him out or just win it decisively. Good combination by Spence there. It's a hard cutting left-handed shot. As he resets his feet, circles over to his right. Gets the angle he's looking for against Garcia. Right hand lands by Garcia. That was a hard shot. Now a hard shot. That's a hard right hands. They were they were blocked and and you know Errol Spence is doing the right thing, keeping his hands up. It's always dangerous in these last rounds. Right on the belt line from Errol Spence, able to land to the body. 
I mean, he's just so consistent with his shots. And Errol Spence is a machine tonight against a really, really good counter puncher, smart, high IQ fighter in Danny Garcia. And he's really, he's really taken away all of his best tools from Garcia with his pressure, his relentlessness, and his combination punching. Errol Spence is back. Joe, you think uh, uh, Danny Garcia should be jabbing with Spence at the same time? Well, you know, look, it's 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 always difficult to jab with a southpaw. You know, sometimes it's it's hard enough just to kind of stop it and parry those jabs from a guy like Errol Spence. But yeah, I mean, usually advantage goes to a southpaw when it comes to the jabbing duel. Desperation time now for Danny Garcia. Only four minutes left in this fight. We're going to go into the corner and listen to both corners, but also Angel Garcia and see what they try to do again. He is staring at an 0 for 3 at the welterweight champions. Is that a career defining fight? There was so much at stake, so much to gain for Denny Garcia. But it is a it's a tall order against Daryl Spence. Just goes to show you how great Sean Porter was because he was neck and neck with the with the with the pre the whole night. And, yep. You know, and, and 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 it really came down to that 11th round. And uh, let me just tell you something, Sean was in that fight and could have won it himself. Yeah, and even could have gone either way, even with the knockdown. You're absolutely right, Joe. Final seconds here, round 11. And let me tell you, Sean Porter threw a lot of punches in that fight, you know. Man. Errol Spence really got Sean Porter to really throw everything. Body shot landed there by Garcia. Blocked that right hand from Garcia. Yeah, he did. Spence well, he went down to look at his feet or something. Not sure what that was. What happened to the something? Pop, did the mouthpiece pop out? Yes. Okay. Because he went up to look for something. Well, uh, let's go to the corner and see what they say. Danny, why are you not flush? Stay focused. Keep your hands up high. Go ahead and spit. Listen. Okay, last round, gentlemen. We're gonna touch gloves in the center, all right? Listen, listen, listen. The only reason why he did that was because you were playing with him, all right? Do not play with him. This is not a game. This is not a game. Keep the dang, dang, dang. Listen to me. Danny, when you're in the pocket slipping, you give him too much respect, Dan. When you're in the pocket dipping and slipping, try it once. Flush him. Dip under like that and come over the top. Keep your right hand up, your left hand up. Danny, flush it, please, bro. Let's go, coach. Danny, you got three minutes. Let's go, coach. Let's go. Final three minutes. And in the corner for Errol Spence, Derek James saying, do not play with him. Yeah, keep it nice and clean. Right, in other words, go back out go. there and, and from the, uh, to the last second, keep on working like you are, like the pro you are, like the champ you are. Don't uh, mess around and, and, and play any games because it could be dangerous. But Joe, I didn't hear anything from Angel Garcia that would, you know, anything specific that would work. No, you? no, he hasn't, he hasn't yeah. given him any no. specific. Well, I think all the information was given ahead of time. Oh, good right hook by Spence. Spence coming in now hard. That landed, and uh, Garcia probably more difficult to see with that eye closed. In, in all fairness, in, on Angel's part, um, look, he's given it his best shot. Given Danny instructions, they just aren't working. Errol Spence is too much. You know, they need a grand slam, not a home run. But I thought, again, that's why, Joe, I was saying at the beginning of the fight, Garcia would have to do something different. Otherwise, it would be just, hey, a close loss. We tried. We did our best. And against Spence, you had to do look, more the than counterpunch. The best laid plans of mice and men, as they say. Look, you can have all the plans you want, but when Errol... No, but they didn't plan it, Joe. What I'm saying is they well, didn't plan that. They planned to do their thing, well, and this is their thing. You don't know. You don't know. They could have tried it, and it didn't work, and they gave up real quickly. I didn't see it. Well, well, I mean, there's only a couple things you can do. Go forward or go backwards or a blend of both. Okay? I didn't see the I, I think it's different. I think it's different when you're in there. You know, you, you, you have all these plans, like you said. That's right. You know, and punches and a guy's skill level changes all of that. Well, do you think he had the right game plan, Lennox? No, I didn't think he had the game plan. No, I didn't think so either. Well, I mean, we saying. already... Well, we well already what saw. is the best game plan? I mean, the, the best game plan is throw a lot of punches. Okay. You, you got to throw more punches than the guy throwing punches at you. But the, you can't go through a whole career not doing that. Right, right. I agree, I agree. You know, I agree. That's what we're saying. Here, Errol Spence going back to work. If Garcia tries to flurry, and now they tangle up on each other. Final minute of this fight. And let's see if Danny Garcia has one last gasp in him, a last stand. He needs something miraculous to pull this out. Hoping that Spence comes toward him for something meaningful. 
Spencer, look at the energy level, able to bounce it, oh, faint. Yeah, yeah. Fainting is, is, is so important when you're at this level. And, the, you know, he's doing it right now in the last round. That's incredible. That's good. Yep. And his hands, are, his hands are fluid. It's effortless. He's looked terrific here tonight. And again, he was off a career high beating Sean Porter last September. And then coming off the car crash, this has just been an outstanding look for the welterweight champion of the world. Final seconds, let's listen in. Listen for the bell, gentlemen. Errol Spence, triumphant, gives a hug to a game challenger and the tough former champion, but Errol Spence is indeed back. He says, I am the best welterweight in the world, hands down, and he proved that here again tonight. Coming off the car crash, thrown from his car, and he just looked physically, mentally, like the same champion he was yeah. 15 months ago. But, yes, but did you see what Danny Garcia did there in the last 10 seconds? He should have been doing that That's over the whole fight. and over and over. Oh, absolutely. Fight, and he didn't do it. He's not, really not capable of doing that. No, he's not built that way. That's no, not he the way he fights. And by the way, let's tip, uh, give a great uh, uh, tip of the uh, hat to Tom Taylor, the referee. What a great job. Oh, we, yeah. didn't even, we didn't even notice him tonight. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. Mean, he was really, really did a great job. Let these guys fight. I tell you, rounds one through four, I was making a lot about the punches landed because it was very close. It was 45 to 38 punches landed one through four in favor of Spence, who is, again, that's his game. He's, he is that good. He's a pound for pound star. But after that, rounds five on, it was 142 to 79. So almost two to one in favor of Spence. He's just better. It just reflects what we're watching in the ring. But that's what we expect from Spence. Okay. That's what we were noticing from Spence. I don't think it was it was hidden. I think it was quite obvious that he was out punching him two to one. Yeah, and, and you know what? But early on, it wasn't. So I thought, hey, maybe there's a chance. But after that, it just, he, they needed to do something different, Joe, is my point. But, but again, you know, the, the fight has to play out a little bit in the early rounds before you get settled in. And you you find your rhythm, you know. And, oh, and from Spence. Oh, he does that every fight. Yeah, he gets right. better and better. And we'll take a look at some of the copy box numbers just to give you an idea of how it turned out. And again, Errol Spence is, is, leads the division in punches landed, and we're talking about some of the top stars in the, uh, in the sport at 147. 187 to 117 in favor of Errol Spence. They both threw over 700 punches. Take a look at some of the power punches. Oh, that was even, 103 to 103. Uh, but that jab is so active for Errol Spence, and it just dictates everything. So we will get the decision. Tim Cheatham, Barry Lindenman, and the experienced and excellent judge Steve Weisfeld okay. will have the call in this last, one. Last question. Did it look like Errol Spence only threw seven more punches than yeah. Danny Garcia? No, that, that, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> you're, you're asking me, I'm saying no. I would have thought he threw 100 more punches. Is that what you thought? I can't hear you. The glass. It'd be <laughs> it's a plexiglass. Suddenly he's mute hey, for let the me first tell you, time. Let me yeah. tell you, the elephant left the room quickly. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Yeah, he's riding horses, not Ferraris, and he is back on top. We believe. Let's get the decision and go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Steve Weisfeld and Barry Lindemann scored about 116 to 112. Judge Tim Cheatham sees it 117 to 111. All three in favor of the winner. And still, the undefeated unified WBC and IBF welterweight champion of the world, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. So eight rounds to four for two of the judges or nine rounds to three. So actually they gave, they gave uh, Danny Garcia more rounds than I thought. What took four rounds? Two of the judges anyway. Isn't that a bit surprising? What do you thought of it? 10 2, 9 3? Pretty much. I mean, yeah. Sean, Sean said he could find four rounds I, you know, earlier on, and I was a little surprised here. Four rounds. 
No, no, that's what they had it. 9-3, 8-4. This one was wider, though. Again, from Danny Garcia's other losses, right? Uh, those seemed close. This one didn't feel close, did it? No, it, I, it felt like maybe two rounds to me, to tell you the honest. Yeah, me too, Joe. Okay. If I'm being honest. And, and we, we would encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> but against, uh, you know, oh, look, honest. it was a split decision to Keith Thurman. It was a close decision to Sean Porter. But this seemed like yeah, there's no dispute in this one. There's no yeah. any there. That's Errol Spence. Listen, I'm not disputing it. No. I'm not disputing The undisputed it. is not disputing it. No, no. Uh, Danny Garcia didn't really get on his game today, but, you know, he was there. He was still in the fight, and, uh, you know, Spence really was persistent and, uh, you know, threw a lot of punches. And he did a great job tonight. Great champion. Once in a generation, the time has come. a fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up. Beat him up. Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. Now, when Cruz weighed in for this match, he originally came in over the 135-pound limit, a pound and a half over. But he re-weighed in after that when he went to his hotel room and lost some weight, and he got in under the weight. Um, now, 40 is the numerical elephant in the room <laughs> for Gamboa. Uh, and, you know, we've talked about the career layoff, the injury, the losses. So he is really testing the the uh, the terms of time for this fight with the official introductions here once again is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, from AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, Texas, Premier Boxing Champions presents the co-main event of the evening, brought to you by Man Down Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO. The president is Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Gino Rodriguez. Our judges scoring from ringside, from Texas, Javier Alvarez. Also from Texas, Jesse Reyes, and from Puerto Rico, Jose Roberto Torres. Introducing our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Mark Calloy. All right, fans, here we go with the co-main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in at 134 and one quarter pounds, with a record of 30 wins, four losses. He has 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the acclaimed former unified champion of the world, known as El Ciclón de Guantanamo, introducing Yoriorki. Gamboa! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with black trim, hailing from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at 134 and three quarter pounds, with a record of 22 wins, two losses, and one draw. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the exciting former world title challenger and the current WBO and WBC number four ranked lightweight in the world, introducing uh, Isak Pitbull Cruz. And once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Mark Calloy. Guerreros, ya hablamos de los reglas. We've already talked about the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Most importantly, protect yourselves at all times. If I say stop, those martillos stop working, all right? Touch gloves, buena suerte. Huge crowd on hand here at AT&T Stadium, Arlington, Texas, set for a scheduled 10 rounds at 135 pounds. Hazte para atrás. 
Hasta para atrás, ahorita. Hasta para atrás. Hasta para atrás. Hasta para atrás. The bell and the opening round, and immediately Cruz goes to the jab, lands an overhand right. Gamboa fires off a jab, but immediately it is Cruz putting the pressure on Gamboa. Yeah, we all knew that was going to happen oh. in the early rounds. Oh. And he's already tagged Gamboa, and he saw Cruz. Gamboa, the veteran, holding on and doing exactly what he needed to to try to stay on his feet. Gamboa's been down 17 times in his career. And remarkably, <laughs> has only been stopped three yes. times. He's hoping not to have number 18 here. And in fact, in the fights that he's been knocked down, Gamboa's 10 and three, but Esau Cruz does not want to let Gamboa escape the opening round, much like he did against Diego Magdalena. Magdaleno, excuse me, in San Antonio. Yeah, you definitely don't, especially when you know you got Gumbo already hurt. And we talked about it, you know, he's been down many times, especially he's going to be cold in this first round. And Gamboa's had a point deducted from him in the past for holding. He's going to go a lot of it here. The referee's going to have to maybe deal with that as this fight goes on, if it goes on. It happened against Devin Haney. Yep. The most recent infraction, and man, he saw Cruz walking down Gamboa. Gamboa trying to flash the jab, but having issues with his balance as well, and gets tagged with that right hand, but took it well. Oh, man. Yeah, he's pulling straight back with his hands down. Speaking of Gamboa, he's trying to get back into his fight, trying to box a little bit, use that jab, but again, pulling back with his hands down. And Cruz not over committing, not, not, in, a, not in a rush to get it done. Continuing to show the wrinkles that he adds under the tutelage of his father, Isak Cruz Sr. Meanwhile, Gamboa working with Pedro Roque, the former Cuban national amateur team and Olympic team coach. Cruz is trying to land that overhand right. He landed it before, and that would be the punch for Gamboa to really worry about right now. Yeah, 100%. Especially, again, he's throwing the jab. He's moving straight back in the line with his hands down. So that, that overhand right is there for Cruz. There, he tried it right there. He barely missed. Yeah, Gamboa's had a lot of injury woes recently. We talked about what happened against Javante Davis, and while his chin may not be as, as strong as he would like, you can't question his heart. No. no. And it looks like Yuri Orcus Gamboa is going to survive what has been a horrible start to this fight for El Ciclone de Guantanamo. You can't go punch to punch, you gotta be a nice and calm, okay? Wait a while though. Let me let me give the instructions here. Keep with the left. When he comes in, then you go with the haymaker, with the right haymaker. Okay. Well, twice in that first round, the power of Isak Cruz uh, made itself apparent. Uh, he would land his left hook here. That the, was the first punch that created issues for Gamboa. He was trying to hold, and then he got really wobbly and almost went down, but was able to somehow keep his balance. And later on in the round, it would be Cruz. This time, I think it was the right hand. Yeah, that was the right, the overhand right. And uh, Gamboa did a great job of staying upright in that instance. I mean, this is a guy that fought how many rounds? Six, seven rounds with the torn Achilles. Almost ten, you know, almost eight. So that is not bringing him down. In, yes. even hey, what round. are we talking about? He fought almost ten <laughs> rounds with yeah. a ruptured Achilles against Javante Davis. Oh, and a fire fight here and wow. now it's Gamboa sitting down, and he's having some success against Isak Cruz. Good and remember points when Gamboa. of overwhelming opponents, and then, well, his chin began to betray him. Yeah, uh, Gamboa has scored only one knockout win, one stoppage win since 2014, but he showed a little pop there. Yeah, 
Yeah, he definitely, again, the pop is there, the, the experience, the combinations from a Gamboa. And, and I think Gamboa is like one of the few fighters that would get, need to get knocked down in order for him to wake up. Remember, yeah. Tino treated that? Tino treated that will go down and yes. automatically just become a monster. Great defense there by Gamboa. Felix Trinidad, by the way, supporting Yuri York, uh, your Denis Ugas in the main event. Zab Judah supporting Earl Spence. Hmm. So the luminaries, a lot of, uh, you know, so many great champions at welterweight throughout the years. That's why it has been the glamour division. And what a main event we are expecting. But what a fight this is turning out to be here with a minute and a less than a minute and a half remaining in the second round. Yeah, in, in moments we're getting a glimpse at, at the old Gamboa that we used to, that we used to see back in the days. So explosive, he comes in with this combination, pulled back and starts boxing. Under a minute remaining here in the second round. You know, when you look at the average age for a lightweight, it's 5'8". Cruz is today's shortest 135-pound contender. And when you look at lightweight champions who've stood only 5'4", uh, luminaries like Ray Mancini and Tony Canzoneri. They did pretty well, especially Tony Canzoneri in a long run, man. Of course, Ray was a great fighter. You know, in this round, Gamboa has thrown more punches than Cruz. Uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily expect him to be winning the volume battle in any round, and, and he, he got off to a great start in this round. And Cruz has been a little wild with his left hook in this round. A good bounce back round for Gamboa. Definitely, he's made Cruz miss a lot, and, and, and found a way to kind of neutralize him. Oh, Wow! Ah, I was saying <laughs> <laughs> a good uh, bounce back round. Well, it didn't end very well for Yuri Orcas Gamboa. Listen to me. You got to keep your hands up. This is a war. Come on. Your your arms are still low, and you got to move to your right, please. Keep going to the right. Well, after, a, as Morrow said, a decent uh, comeback round, right toward the end of the round, Cruz would get there with the left hook, and, and then another left hook and the right hand, and uh, that was when Gamboa went down. He did also land a punch when Gamboa was down. Ref uh, Mark Calloway the, pushing him back there, but uh, the 18th time for Gamboa to go down in a fight. Yeah, spending more time on the canvas than Picasso. 18 times in a career in which he's gone 10 and 3. That still is the stat that sticks out to me. He yeah, is exactly. victorious the yeah. majority of the time. This fight's not over oh, yet. Oh, and Cruz going to the body, dropping Gamboa again. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Dame lo guantes, dame lo guantes. I keep jinxing the Gamboa. Every time I feel that he's coming back, he gets knocked down. And this is simply now a firefight, and, and it's Gamboa who is being rattled. He's being rocked, and the veteran trying to hold on for survival. Cruz coming forward, using good movement as well. All shoulder strikes, watch out. <laughs> Yeah, he's got no legs underneath him anymore, Gamboa. Cruz is getting so wild, he's trying to uppercut from way outside, but he isn't worried about being countered at this point, I guess, by Gamboa. Oh, another oh, devastating body shot and the, the takedown by Gamboa. That's going to buy him a little time. Cruz has gone the distance in five of his last six fights, but tonight he's looking like he wants to try and get out of there early. Dropping Gamboa twice already in round two, and again here in round three, and swinging for the fences is Isak Cruz backing up Gamboa. And Gamboa can only hold on. Yeah. 
Cruz just swinging for the fences, really just trying to look for the for the perfect shot as he did just there. He's got a yeah, jab. Ball's jab. Real, real chance here, I'm sorry, yeah, Adam, is to land a solid right yes. hand that would hurt Cruz. A straight right hand as he's coming in. He's trying to land he's that. Trying. He did a few times, but I mean, Cruz, I think he's, he's got trying to right chin. tire Cruz up by just leaning on him and holding on to him. Well, that's right. I said he was trying to neutralize the uh, the volume from Cruz by doing that. But he chose to exchange, and that's when he went down. Final minute of the third. Cruz bobbing and weaving, going to the body with the right short, right uppercut on the inside lands for Cruz. And for Gamboa, he just wants to make this a, a wrestling match. A it's, he's not throwing many punches, and, being, and he's not able to. Yeah, I think he's already for peak for all this. And it's crazy how you, a Gamboa can fight on skates all night. He could, he could do that. It, yeah, he does for long periods of time when you think he can't. What about we saw Again, we saw him with a ruptured Achilles go an extra almost 10 rounds with Javante Davis before being stopped. Final 15 seconds of the third. Gamboa needs a dramatic reversal of fortunes. I'm Terrence Crawford, and on July 29th, I will be undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Order my fight on Showtime pay-per-view. More drama that did not benefit uh, Gamboa in the last round. Left hook by Cruz. He didn't even, he, he let off with the hook. He fainted to give himself a chance to land that punch and then got in and Abner. It was a great effort by him. Yeah, great punch there. You know, that's one of his mon money makers, uh, which is the, the right or the left hook, Get really. Got both of them. And against Gamboa, you want to keep doing that. Especially again, because he, he, he has his hands down all the time, or well, most of the time. And then uh, this was the awkward action in which uh, they took a spell. Oh, oh, my big right hand hurt him. Huge right hand to kick off the fourth, and he saw Cruz swarming. Yuri Arcus Gamboa just trying to push Cruz off of him. And Gamboa tries to deliver the jab, but is just getting hit at all angles, uppercuts. Cruz wanted to get a knockout in this fight at some point because Devin Haney was not able to knock oh, out. Stop, stop. Um, Gamboa, and it took Davis a while to do it, so he'd like to at yeah. least make a favorable comparison by getting him out sooner. Yeah, it took some rounds for Davis to, to stop him to get the TKO, and, and Haney went the distance, so oh, the was definitely trying to make a statement. And right hand again connects on the noggin of Gamboa by Cruz. One minute has elapsed here in the fourth, and when you look at the show stats in terms of punches thrown there, they're almost even. Yeah, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, but uh, Cruz is at, you know, he's landed he's, the point in And yeah, two to one, he's outlanding them in terms of connects. You know, the, the interesting thing, though, is that uh, in terms of body punches, uh, Cruz has landed 10, but he has, he has brought to the body as much as we normally see from him. Yeah. No, he's head hunting right now, speaking of Cruz. And I guess we get a glimpse of Gamboa, you know, what he does well, the combination punches, stepping back, yeah. but it's, he does not have his feet underneath him anymore. That's, that's a problem. Left hook to the body lands for Cruz. There's a jab, another jab by Gamboa, but it's... Stop! It's been a terrific start for Gamboa, having gone down already multiple times in this fight. And the jab for Cruz is kind of a rumor. <laughs> He's not, doesn't even need to jab his way in. He's just coming in and saying, well, I'll lead off with the left hook or the over and right. I'll take my choice. But that would make it a lot easier. It would, yeah. yes. I, rather, yeah, I was going to say that, but I don't know. Stop, stop. But this is what happens, it's you get excited, you see yeah. that in, you know, overhand rights like crazy. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you just get happy with that, you, you continue to do it. But if you're a cruise corner, you want to tell them, all right, set up those hooks yeah. with the jab. Oh, that left hand was a cruise missile, and somehow Gamboa pops right Six. back up to his Seven. feet. Someone should test hey. that man's Don't DNA. How did he survive it. that shot?
Keep the hands up. This guy is putting the arms, everything on you. You come, you have enough for, to win this fight. Let's go. What are you doing? Well, another round in which uh, Gamboa would hit the canvas. Just a lead-off left hook. We talked about the fact that he's been leading off with that punch of the overhand right. That was maybe the best left hook Cruz has landed in this fight. And as Morrow pointed out, astonishingly, Gamboa able to get up very quickly from that punch. I, I mean, he's remarkable in his re recuperatory powers. I mean, it's staggering. Seconds out. I know we've seen Gumball go down many times in many fights, and it almost became, you know, normal, I guess, to see him down. But at this point, it, you got to be careful. I agree. Gumball is 40 years old, and, you know, he gives shots like that to make it seem that he's still in the fight, but his feet are not underneath him. It only takes one shot, and I think Cruz might land it. Man, it's incredible the amount of shots he's taking Gumball right now. A walking Chumba Wumba song, but it's Cruz that's doing the thumping. You know, Gamboa in this round came out with a purpose. He's throwing a lot of combinations and, and, and straight right hands, knowing that's the only yeah. ticket he has to win this fight, to hurt Cruz as he's coming in with one of those. But you know what's going to happen. It's going to make him want to, yeah. get, to get hit even, Precisely. Even, even harder, I would say. The more he opens up, yes. the more opportunity he provides Cruz. Cruz attacking the body with three four punch combination. You want to do it another way? Another day, a great knockout for Cruz. He is what people are talking about. He impressed a lot of people against Tank Davis, and tonight he showcased that again. And you know, back in the ring, only four months after that fight, he fought three times in 2021. He's being active, and he continues to develop as a fighter. Son embrace what a long, hard road it has been for the Cruz family. In five of his last six fights, he has not been able to have this moment uh, with a knockout win, but he gets it tonight. And an incredible family pedigree, mentioning his father, who fought champions Vernon Forrest and Junior Witter. His granddad, Mimo Cruz, beat world champions mm -hmm. Pepino Cuevas and Alfredo Escalera. His older brother, Diego, is an active fighter, but it is Isak Pitbull Cruz who is definitely not in Cruz control. What a fight by the youngster who turns 24 next month. Talked about the DNA of Gamboa. His boxing DNA is special, and we will look at the end of this fight, uh, it's an overhand right. He he ducks down while well, he lands the left hook. Then the overhand right comes in. And th those two punches were the story of this fight. And he always had just enough head movement dipping down ever to create the openings for those yeah, punches. Yeah, he, he dodged a, a punch there. He was able to dodge uh, Gamboa's jab, came over with the overhand right, and then the left. And then let me tell you, it was the ropes that held Gumbo up. But if it was if it wasn't for the referee, referee stopping the fight, Gumbo, he would have wanted it to continue. But great what stop. A for him. Cruz soaking up the adulation of the crowd here at AT&T Stadium, and now sharing a moment with Gamboa's corner.
And for Yuri Yorkus Gamboa, now having lost three straight fights at the age of 40 and, and taking an incredible amount of punishment in this fight. And the numbers will uh, demonstrate that um, as we take a look at them. You know, the, the power punches, uh, I direct your attention there. It, you know, Cruz landed 56, that's everything other than the jab. And so many of those were big left hooks or overhead rights. And in fact, those two punches is what did in Gamboa in that last sequence. All right, let's make it official with the inimitable Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 32 seconds in round number five. A referee in charge, charge Mark Colloy stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is now the WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion, Isak Pitbull. One person in the Philippines smiling ear to ear right now. And that is, of course, Manny Pacquiao, one of Pitbull Cruz's idols and a man who has been instrumental in helping Isak Cruz get to this point. Once in a generation, the time has come. a fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up! Beat him up! Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view. And he's going old school. Six, as you see the head movement, you know, the body punches. 28, and there is seeing what could be behind Crawford for the moment. There's the overhand right, and another combination. Beautiful work by Crawford. Kenny was all. Right. Told you, Sean Porter makes too many mistakes lunging forward like that. Boom! Hit with an uppercut. Terrence step right. To and then the extra shot that Terrence lands, he missed that, but he came back with the right hook and it landed flush. Down Porter stopped the fight, not necessarily. Look at the celebration with Miss Deborah. And Crawford! Who do you want next? Well, you already know who I want. I I've been calling them out all day, you know what I mean? Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for Errol Spence to reign or Terrence Crawford to snag the W, your action is undisputed. New customers can get $150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to instantly get $150 in bonus bets. Action so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? And as we look at them, we'll see that there isn't that much to choose from. They're very similar. The one difference, of course, is Errol Spence we know is a lefty, but Ugas is 6-1 and one against lefties, so not a big deal to him. And the rules for this monumental main event. No three knockdown rule in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or a headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. From AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, it is time for the main event. It is time for Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, Texas as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Man Down Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. Sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app, use promo code GLOVES, and make it rain. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day, and there's no time to lose. Memory from the director of Casino Royale and starring Liam Neeson only in theaters, April 29th. This unification bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the president Mauricio Suleiman, supervisor Rex Ross Walker, 
The WBA President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, Supervisor Jose Oliver Gomez, and the IBF President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor Pete Podgorski, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations Combat of Sports Program, the Chairman is Rick Figueroa, Executive Director Mike Aris Mendez. Introducing our three judges, scoring our main event from ringside, from Nevada, Tim Cheatham, from Connecticut, Glenn Feldman, and from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, Lawrence Cole. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the Unified Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the WBA World Champion fighting out of the red corner. Entering the ring wearing white trunks with red trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Santiago de Cuba in Cuba. He weighed in at 146 and three quarter pounds, with a record of 27 wins, four losses. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his fourth world title appearance and making the second defense of his title, Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current defending WBA welterweight champion of the world, introducing 54 Milagros, your Denis Ugas. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, the WBC and IBF world champion, wearing black trunks with green and pink trim, and proud representing Dallas, Texas. He weighed in at 146 and one quarter pounds. His sensational record includes 27 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome one of the stars of boxing today, tonight in his seventh consecutive world title appearance, Ladies and gentlemen, here's the popular and acclaimed, reigning and defending, undefeated IBF and WBC welterweight champion of the world, introducing the truth, Errol Spence Jr. Once again, a referee in charge, Lawrence Cole. Things early in the dressing room. I want you to obey my time. To be, respect myself at all times. Play Olympia Bueno Suerte. Good luck. Touch him up. Spence fighting his fourth consecutive championship level fighter in his sixth in his last seven fights. He doesn't want tune ups, he wants to fight the best. And Ugas, he's facing his second consecutive Southpaw opponent after upsetting Manny Pacquiao. He's six and one against lefties with three knockouts. The bell and round one of the 12th welterweight unification fight in history for Errol Spence. He's involved in his second. And should he win tonight, he will join Donald Curry and Floyd Mayweather in winning two unification fights and will join just Mayweather in defeating two reigning titleists to do it. And Donald Curry, of course, from uh, Texas. And then now a Hall of Famer. They're exchanging jabs to the body. Spence's numbers are really good. 21 punches per round, uh, landed first among welterweights, throws 67 punches per round, second among welterweights, and lands 46% of his power punches, third among welterweights. So he, his numbers are very good. And both of them, Abner, love to rock the body. Their body work is exceptional. Yeah, when they asked Ugas what was his game style coming into his fight, is he going to box a counterpuncher? He said, I'm going to stand in front of Spence, I'm going to look for the fight, and right now we're seeing a little bit of a 
think, you know, think around. Both of them choosing their punches. It's a study round, really. And Ugas doing a good job of blocking, parrying the, the jab of Spence. There's a triple quadruple. Pumping the jab was the truth. And of course, Ugas known for that high guard, which could create some opportunities to go to the body for Spence. Instead, it's Ugas going to the body with a right hand. They actually both land almost the same amount to the body. Uh, 6.3 for Spence and 6 for Ugas. So both men are good body punchers. That was a nice left hand right there by Spencer early on. And both of them are st establishing that jab really well. At moment, Spence obviously. Oh, good counter left to the body by Ugas after Spence missed with the left. Finish your thought. And that's, that's something that Ugas is really good at. He's really well at counter punching. And we, we, we saw that right there with that body shot. Hard to do, actually, to, to counter punch a jab and throw a body shot. Really hard to do. The last time Spence lost was in the 2012 Olympics. Ugas won a bronze medal at the 2008 Olympics and launches that right hand to the head of Spence. This is his third fight at AT&T Stadium in his last four outings. And Ugas lands the jab, and yeah, Jerry World, home of the Dallas Cowboys, as we take a look on this sensational Saturday night in Texas. And the Lone Stars are shining bright here tonight. They are indeed. And what do these men need to do for them to shine? Uh, Spence doesn't want to lunge with that left hand. He could get countered. But it needs to invest in the body. He did go downstairs early. The double right hook. He's got a great right hook, for uh, which not all Southpaws have. He should double with that punch. And he's being told that by Derek James right now. As for Ugas. Uh, double the jab. Uh, he did that sometimes in round one. The volume, he must keep it up, and he didn't throw that much. He normally averages only 46 against the lefty. Curl in the right hand. He can throw that right hand and, and roundhouse in a way to get it in. Round number two. And immediately they start to fence with the jabs. Spence looking to get inside on the bigger Ugas. You know, round one was interesting. Uh, Ugas threw less than half the amount of punches as Spence, but going to show sets landed a couple more. Now, that, you know, you can argue yeah, yeah, nay, whether mm -hmm. they landed, but Ugas was accurate with his punches. He was really accurate, really being a counterpuncher in that first round, and he's doing so here also. Pulling back straight, one, two, waiting for Spence to lunge in. Like you said, he don't want to do that, and he's doing that at moments, and Ugas having his moments with the countering. Errol Spence won his first title traveling to Sheffield, England, in a stadium to beat Kel Brook. And then he defeated Sean Porter, the common opponent here, via 12-round split decision, September 2019, to add another strap. Ugas lost a highly contentious split decision to Porter in March 2019. The thing they have in common is that both those fights with Sean Porter were razor thin, and Porter gave a great effort in both fights, and as did these two fighters, and they both created really good welterweight uh, matches. Spence landed a left hand upstairs, goes downstairs, and now they clinch with a minute and a half left here in the second. There's a sharp one-two combination by Spence. Really trying to establish the jab, Abner. Yeah, really sharp shooting right now from Spence. Straight punches, jab, straight to the body. There we go, body work, back to the jab. I mean, basics, but it's really good for Spence. If that's what you want to do. And Spence looking to put Ugas on his back foot. Ugas looking to bully Spence, but with the high guard and smiling and trying to avoid the attack of the truth. 
One of the questions for Ugas, now he's only thrown 32 punches in this round. He's oh. been very economical. Exactly. Can he win rounds by being this economical with his punches? Spence launched a lead left hand. And that was really, that was a setup left. That was really beautiful. How he was throwing the jab and then he came over. Overhand left, really well placed by Spence. Really smart thinker in there. Spence has to be careful, has to be leery of dipping down and perhaps giving Ugas a chance to land an uppercut. Well, very interesting that you said that. It's an underrated punch of Ugas, and he's created several knockdowns in his career with that uppercut. Well, they are out in full force tonight to support this welterweight unification fight. A part of the 40,000 on hand. There's a Dallas Cowboys legend Michael Irvin and Steven Jackson. And that is Errol Spence's high school classmate, Von Miller, who's won two Super Bowls, including one with the Los Angeles Rams. There's the aforementioned Sean Porter, always styling and profiling. The common opponent that Spence and Ugas share. And heavyweight Luis Ortiz. I'm sure he's supporting his Cuban compatriot, your Denis Ugas, here tonight. And we heard from David Benavides, and we will see him in action against David Lemieux, May 21st on Showtime. And the Charlos brothers representing Texas. And of course, speaking of unification fights, undisputed fight coming up in Dallas Cowboys' own. Getting the biggest pop of the night, Mr. Parsons, as we begin round at number three. And it really is becoming to who's making mistakes right now. Errol Spence really setting up oh, that wow. job. Yeah, he's really setting yes. up that left hand. That left hand to the body. He'll, he'll throw it to the body here and then they'll yep. put it right back up there. That's a way to get his attention, throwing it downstairs. Yeah, Ugas a moment ago trying to land that uppercut. Lost it from too far out there. And he's tried to score with that right cross. Two high-level operators. We anticipated high-speed chess between Spence and Ugas. And Spence now beginning to unload with the left hand. Again, the high guard of Ugas blocking some of these punches, but not all of them. A short left uppercut got in on the inside. When Errol Spence punches in combination, he is a tough man to deal with and that's what he's doing right now and right there is when you know what he's thinking he's really setting up his punches because he threw an overhand left he saw he didn't land he said guess what i'm throwing an uppercut and that one did land changing his punches really well errol spence in this round things are heating up here in the third again spence leading with the left straight left and then the left hook behind the guard and again ugas from distance looking to land the uppercut You know, Ugas sparred with Albert Puel, a, a top-ranked 154-pounder, uh, uh, number, number one ranked in one of the organizations. Good sparring for this fight, and uh, he hopes that that pays dividends. For oh, right hand by Ugas that scores. Left hand lands, another left, and another left. Yeah, Spence is doing a good job with the left, but he's also got to be careful because Ugas timed that left. Mm -hmm. If you throw it excessively, that's what happens. He's going to read it. He's going to wait for it for you to throw it. And really, Spence doing a good job of muting Ugas' offense here in the third round out. Getting off first on almost every occasion and not being countered too, too much. And there's that right hook. And yeah, I said a double right hook. He did a right hook, then did an uppercut. So that's a version of that. Ugas again gets popped as Spence splits the guard. Ugas fires back with a combination. Then throws a thunderous right hand. And another Ooh. right hand that bounced off the face of Errol Spence. Spence has never been down as a pro. And this third round proven to be a thriller as Ugas and Spence go a to toe. -to I'm 
Errol Spence Jr. Don't miss my fight against Terrence Crawford, July 29th, live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Start, start working with the right. Start working with the right. You're okay? Are you taking advantage of this? You're having fun? You're having fun? And keep going working with the jab. And then you work with the jab and then you come with the right. Nice job. Come on, coach. Show me someone who loves his job like uh, yeah. Danny Suga. That smile still on his face. Hey, we're having fun yes, watching right, right. Hey, There's more indications from the coaches that go out there and have yeah. fun. The right hands that landed for Ugas toward the end of that round. It, obviously, Sal is saying do more of that. And really, for both of them, it can't be overstated. Mm. What it what they had to overcome to get to this point here tonight, and now they gotta go through each other for even more glory. Yeah, it's a very good point. Ugas, you can tell already, trying to throw more of those rights. Spence is throwing so much more volume, and it's helping him because not everything's gonna land, but he's giving himself a better chance to, to land. Way better chance, really, when, when the Spence is the aggressor uh, throwing volume punches, like you said. It almost has Ugas stuck for a moment. He does right. not right. come back with anything, so Spence has to keep that volume. And Spence doing a good job utilizing his footwork and blocking that right hand and avoiding that left. But Spence beginning to really find a rhythm here. That right hand was a, 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 an example of, of Ugas who can curl in the right hand behind the guard. It didn't quite get there, but you'll see more of it. Oh, that was a little low, but right to the face and now Spence going back to the body. Really an eye catcher that punch that Ugas is throwing in has been able to land here and there, but it's Spence inside work that I'm liking right now. Yeah. And Spence high work rate, devoted body punching, smart aggression, and has that sufficient shot for shot power. 21 of 27 wins inside the distance for Ugas, 12 of his 27 wins. Be a form of knockout. Well, they, uh, Derek James wanted a 12 a week camp with Spence because of the layoff and everything he felt. And he said, as they got close to this fight, he said, we got everything done that we needed to in camp. 12 weeks, uh, that added time really helped them. Speaking of 12, for Spence, his last three fights have gone the 12 round distance. Correct. His last knockout, in fact, was at the Cowboys facility, the Star in Frisco, Texas, against Carlos Ocampo. We were there a, a few years yeah. back in June of 2018. That was the last of a career long 11 fight KO streak. That's why you're the master of the segue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been a very good round for Errol Spence. Uh, working good to the body and the head. It's those opportunities right there that Ugas has to take. Yes, yes. counter Make opportunity was right there. And there he the, goes. There he goes. moment where Ugas was trying to go downstairs and uh, this punch strayed pretty far low. One of the throw, well, no, you know what? Not that far low. That's it, what I didn't say, because I've heard of it. It actually kind of was off the belt line. It seemed lower when uh, when we saw it live. You hit him, you your body. Don't, don't worry about the strength. You feel good? You tired? Yeah, I'm not good. Yeah, look, look, look. Listen, I need you to start stepping around. You're taking ball, guys. Right? Step around it. You're now sitting in front of him. Yeah. Shoot the shots. Keep that stick popping. And you just like, boom. Shoot, shoot the hook to the shoulder. You shoot it too hard. That's how you dip in it. Yeah, water in the rain. Oh, when you shoot the hook, man. Got it, got it. Towel, towel. Towel, towel. Towel. 
Two high-quality trainers in the yeah. respective corners. Ismail Salas for your Denny Zugas, and he drew the ire of Errol Spence, and his trainer, Derek James, when said, you know, the, the Spence isn't the same since the car accident. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, coming back from the surgery to for the torn retina on his left eye, and and that, Abner, as you mentioned, you, you thought that Spence was going to be an even better version of himself. What do you think so far? Uh, I'm seeing it. I mean, when was the last time he fought? It's been some time, and I'm not seeing any, any, any signs of him, you know, having that effect. And also something we have not mentioned, the new conditioning coach that he added for this fight. You can see it in his physical body. He is prepared. He's ripped. He's ready for this fight. So those are little things that you add. First time using a nutritional. Yes. Yep. Left uppercut, right hook, and again, Errol Spence with some sweet combinations. So the condition is going to be there. You're going to see Spence throwing a lot in this fight. And Ugas getting, oh. absorbing the shot. Oh, and there's a right hook to the face, left uppercut, and Ugas finally backing up. And of course, here in Texas, even if Spence misses by a Texas mile, they're going to they're going to applaud. And those were three good yeah. punches. Yes, they were. <laughs> and, look, and look at the rhythm that Spence got right now. It's a really nice rhythm. I guess not so subtle foreshadowing at stuff we've seen here in yeah. Texas when it comes to, <laughs> True. to scoring. A minute yeah, and a half left in the fifth. You know, Ugas is fighting a chest-to-chest, -chest, head to wow. That may not be the best answer for him. Well, this is the best round oh. for Spence, but now Ugas firing back. But Spence beginning to break down Ugas. And I keep saying that if you're Ugas, you want to counter Spence. He throws one, you throw one on top of his. Despite the fact that, yes, Ugas has a belt, comes off the signature win of his career. We know that there are levels to this, and Ugas now trying to fire back, but he allows Spence to unload another combination. The geography at this moment does not benefit Ugas. He needs to be in a position where he can throw that long right hand, and he's not there. Yeah, where's the jab? There's the jab there. Yeah. Set up your punches. He's choosing to fight on the inside like a phone booth. That's not his best place. It's not, but if you're going to choose for that oh, thing, there's a right hand on you got to let your hands go. Yeah. Yeah. Ugas. Errol Spence in rhythm. Fully focused. And the lack of a jab for Ugas, mm -hmm. a big issue right yes. now. There's a right uppercut left hook combination by Ugas. Spence digs to the body. Left uppercut lands for the truth arrow Spence. And now Ugas tries to fire back and does so to the body. Mm. Fantastic fifth. On the inside, Errol Spence has been just excellent. Throwing a variety of punches, the uppercut, the right hook, and he works the body very effectively, although in this sequence he's concentrating on the head. And the uppercut's been just a very effective weapon for him. He he has a great right hook, and that was a beauty. That may have hurt Ugas a little bit. He kind of stepped forward, also throwing the uppercut. Errol Spence is an excellent inside fighter. When Ugas lets his hand go, hands go, he can land some shots. This, I think, is a, a nice uppercut. Mm -hmm. We talked about the Ugas uppercut. It's a good punch for him. He just hasn't been letting his hands go enough. Spence has thrown over 100 more punches than Ugas. Ugas credits his trainer, Salas, for literally saving his career. He was in a state of deep depression away from the sport for a couple of years. Tried to get that hunger back, tried to get the opportunity back, tried to get success back, and look where it's brought him. Yeah, he went on a 12 and 1 run, only the, the very close a loss to uh, Sean Porter mixed in there. And tonight, he is now at a, at a pivotal point. He has got to start making something happen in this fight to change the narrative. And he's trying to do that here in the opening minute of the sixth. Yeah, he's trying, but this is not his fight. I know he said, I am going to stand in front of him. I, I'm going to be the same Ugas that I always, always am. You can't. You got to change your game plan. You got someone different in front of you. Well, he's, he's cutting the distance. He's getting too close to shoot close. But again, Ugas is an experienced fighter. He's been here before. You, you got to know how to change the, the game plan, especially in the sixth round. 
just standing right in front of each other. That right hand. fight against Errol Spence Jr. on Showtime pay-per-view now and be ready for fight night. This is where Errol Spence was pushed back. Now the mouthpiece comes out and Moro and see, is he, correct. Yeah, see? He thought, well, are you going to stop this mm. and get the mouthpiece? Instead, Ugas correctly kept punching and Lawrence Cole didn't see the mouthpiece go out and, and you see Spence kind of motioning. So the mouthpiece would come out from this kind of right uppercut. And while Spence is fixated on the mouthpiece, he will get nailed by a right hand by Ugas. Now, was Lawrence Cole coming in to yeah. try and stop the action? That may have added to the confusion. And then later in the round, Spence got his wits about him after a short break for the mouthpiece. And then oh. he went to banging away on the Ugas body and came back in that round to make it still a close round, though likely Ugas would have won. Fascinating so, uh, sequence. Yeah, fascinating first six rounds. Yes. We begin the second half of this championship fight. Errol Spence Jr. undefeated. He has two straps. Your Dennis Ugas has one. Terrence Crawford has the other. Let's bring in our unofficial scorer, the Hall of Famer, Steve Farhood. Well, uh, that round, that sixth round with that controversial uh, punch that hurt, really hurt Spence. The first round, I gave Luka some fight. And, uh, the referee did not rule with the most Spence up, or it could have been a 10-8 round. First round, almost nothing happened. I gave it to Spence, can't do it like that. And he was winning each round since. Oh, a bigger margin. Oh, oh. Uh, here, guys. Spence is delivering some uppercuts and some left hands that are bothering your Denny Zugas. The crowd erupting here at AT&T Stadium. Face 
beginning to swell up due to the offensive onslaught of Errol Spence Jr. Wow, what a way to come back in this round for Errol Spence, really. The last round, he wasn't happy that he got hit the way he did. And for Ugas, it's incumbent upon him to do something yes. offensively to change his narrative. Down in front of Ugas, I mean Spence. And it's interesting because Spence told us he doesn't stand in front of opponents, but he is standing in front of Ugas right now and bringing the fight to the Cuban. A nice battle. Enjoying every second of this action. In that round, Errol Spence landed 39 punches, according to show stats. And this uppercut, one of the most important ones, it hurt Ugas. You could see him reacting. And from that moment on, the round belonged to Errol Spence, and he was able to, for the most part, dominate every second of the round. But Ugas did come back with a couple of left hooks. And there's a right hand after this. The right hand yeah. was the really big punch. Errol Spence took it very well. Then later on in the round, Spence coming back again, giving himself good a positioning to punch on the inside. The uppercut's been a huge weapon for him. And of course, the body work, very important for Errol Spence. In between rounds, Dr. Kelly Frazier checked on Ugas' right eye, which nearly swelled shut in round seven. Errol Spence Jr. now beginning round eight again, walking down Ugas landing the left uppercut right to the body and I mean Harold Spence Jr. is tattooing Ugas Abner. Yes he is he's doing a good job he's you got to keep doing that if you're Spence work the body rip the body uppercuts I mean the punches are going in as good of a guard that Ugas has those uppercuts are going in Ugas has simply not thrown a lot of punches, and he's not giving himself a good chance to land anything of note because he's not, he's, he's dormant offensively. Meanwhile, they've combined to throw over 1,000 punches here as we are in the opening minute of the eighth, and Spence walking down. U Ugas left hand over the top, right to the body. Ugas right eye becoming a mess, and referee Lawrence Cole admonishing Spence. <laughs> and breaking his momentum and rhythm. Well, the crowd didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. The spin is going back into his rhythm. He didn't care. That left uppercut, right yeah. hook. The variety of yeah. punches and the variety of the combination Spence is throwing yeah, is special. It's the, it's the way he changes his punches. Uppercut, body shot, hook, body. I mean, this guy, is he just can't see those punches coming because they're coming from all angles. Errol Spence Jr. showing explicitly why he is able to put this kind of crowd in a venue this size. He is putting on a show. Jr. I'm Terrence Crawford. On July 29th, I, I will be the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Longer with 
this kind of assault by Errol Spence Jr. Uppercuts. Spence has landed 38 punches in this round, and, and, and it's over 45% of what he's thrown. And he's landed 100 more punches than Ugas. Under 30 seconds left in the eighth. It is all one-way traffic. Right now for he has been in the, for the couple of rounds. He has not here. He punch. comes back with a right hand. But it's only one punch, and guess what? Spence comes back for four with four or five punches. You gotta do more than that. Michael Urban on his feet. Supporting Errol Spence Jr., the Cowboys legend. How are you feeling, okay? What are you feeling? You're tired? You're tired? How are you doing? Are you seeing, feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. Come on, come on. Come Here's on. a little water. Let's go. Well, it was an amazing round. Uh, we said uh, Errol Spence landing toward uh, upwards of 35 punches in that round. And working on the inside, we, we talked about it. The variety of punches, the uppercut's been a huge weapon for him. And Ugas has not been able to keep range in this fight, and it's given Spence a chance to do that. This is round nine. Welterweight unification fight between two belt holder, the undefeated Errol Spence Jr. And your Dennis Ugas, whose belt is in a tenuous position at this moment as Spence just strafing him with strikes. We mentioned how well Ugas has done against lefties at 6-1 and one record, but tonight uh, it has not... And I don't even know if that's the major factor. It's just Spence has been so good. This is going to be a really interesting round for Spence. If he continues to land the larger punches that he has so effectively, and especially look, in that eye. Look at the headshots landed two to one mm, in favor yeah. of Spence. I hate to say, but if you're Spence, you want to continue to work that eye. Clubbing right hooks by Spence, left down the middle. And he continues to tee off while Ugas, every once in a blue moon, throws a punch, trying desperately to fend off the brutal assault of Errol Spence Jr. Spence in this round is actually throwing more jabs to work his way in. It's just interesting. He hasn't needed to do it, but this round he's using it to kind of work his way in better. And those right hooks are amazing. It just comes natural, really, for Spence. Three of your Denny Zugas four defeats were by split decision. He's been in close fights, but he desperately needs to mount some kind of a comeback here. He just landed a Ugas a great right hand mm -hmm. against Spence in the body. But, you know, those have been few and far between. Final minute of the ninth. And back comes Ugas with another right to the body. But as you mentioned, Al, yeah. just once. And I want to point out something about Spence. He's not just throwing punches and landing. Yes, he is, obviously, but it's the angles he's making. Yeah. The way he moves with the, with the punch, the body, really creating spaces and gaps for him to land. As he's, he's, he's been a staple on the pound-for-pound -pound list. Calls himself Big Fish at 147, and he is doing big damage to your Denis Ugas here in the closing seconds of the ninth. Spence Jr. and on July 29th I will be the undisputed 
welterweight champion. Order my fight on Showtime pay-per-view now. Much better, much better, much better round. <laughs> a, a much better round, why? You started throwing and you hit him down, it hurt. When you hit him down in the body, it hurts. So keep on and then you come back with the haymaker. He told you up. Remember, we're going to control his hand. Recorded a knockout as late as round 11. As you mentioned, he's been 12 the last three fights, and so it's not unfamiliar territory for him, and he's been effective. He's landing 41% of his power punches, which is everything other than the jab. He normally lands 43%, so, um, you know, very, he's right in the range of what he normally uh, does. Oh, 46%, I'm sorry, he normally lands. Right to the body by Spence. Ugas has not recorded a knockout past round of seven. It is looking more and more likely that he is going to have to land something major. And again, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's yeah, hurt. Yeah. And a reminder to people. Just how much more the corner the referee is going to allow for your Denny Zugas to absorb. I don't think much by now. Well, Ugas well, fires up the right. But he's shelling up, he backing up. The eye almost come the right eye almost completely shot. Errol Spence Jr. intent on shutting down the title reign of your Denny Zugas. And boy, referee Cole wants to make sure we don't forget about him tonight. Punches the well placed uppercuts. The volume of punches from Spence was just brilliant. Great performance tonight in his hometown. What a way to close the show. Uh, and what we did get an answer to from this man is that yes, he is just as good as he was before uh, his car accident mm -hmm. or before the detached retina. He showed us he is exactly on that same caliber. And I thought this performance better than the one he gave against Garcia in his, the previous fight. Uh, he did everything right. Ugas made it a little simpler by strategically staying on the inside too long, but a bitter disappointment for him. Uh, he was so hoping he was going to be able to do it. I want to remind fans of something. Lest they think that Ugas got here because he happened to beat a faded Manny Pacquiao, he beat 
Sean, he fought great against Sean Porter. He beat a lot of top welterweights during his 12-1 run. Let's take a look at the numbers uh, of this fight, which will demonstrate what Spence did, which was fairly remarkable. Landing 40% of his power punches. He was much busier than Ugas, gave himself a much better chance, and so many of those power punches were uppercuts and right hooks that he landed time and time again. In his strap season, and Errol Spence Jr. just added a third belt to his collection. And yes, there are far too many belts in boxing, but there's one left. And well, that could be... People are hoping they'll see yeah. a fight for that. And for Errol Spence Jr., putting the finishing touches on another incredible performance here at... I mean, how, how happy, how excited can a, a young guy be growing up wanting to play for the Dallas Cowboys and was a prodigious football player. But when he found the sport of boxing, this, it was his true calling. And boy, he is lived up to every advanced billing here tonight. We'll go back and look at one of the punches that was so important for him, which was the uppercut, and it landed repeatedly. Um, both men have, that was one that really hurt Ugas. Both men had good uppercuts coming into this fight. We thought they might be important, and for Ugas, for Spence it was. And part of the reason it was is because Ugas fought so much of the fight chest to chest with Spence and gave him opportunities to land that punch. And he never launched it from too far back, Spence, to allow himself to be countered. No, you're always right in, in the right position, making angles, like I said. Great uppercuts, great combination from Merrill Spence. Let's make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Hey, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 44 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Lawrence Cole, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated. And now the WBC, WBA, and IBF Unified Welterweight Champion of the World, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Morrill, thank you very much. Errol, congratulations. You've got the three belts. Thank you. It means a lot, man. It means a lot of fighting in my hometown in front of my family, my friends, and everybody else who support me. These are my number one fans right here that came out and supported me. And they continue to support you. You had the 17-month layoff. You had the eye surgery. So there were a lot of questions coming into this fight. Did you have any doubts? I didn't have any doubts at all. Like I said, I believe in myself 100%. I trained 100%, and I just knew I was going to come with the victory, so that's what I wanted. I didn't want to tune up fight or fight somebody I know I could be. I wanted somebody who was going to bring the best out of me, and I knew Ugas was going to bring the best out of me. You were in terrific condition, and you had a new conditioning coach and a nutritionist. How much did that help? Uh, my nutritionist helped a lot. Um, you know, he made sure I was eating right, made sure I was drinking water, no junk food, and I lost the weight properly without using a sauna suit, sitting in a sauna sweat room. I, I lost the weight, like how I was supposed to lose the weight, scientific. And he did a great job, and I got down to 147 pounds, and I was looking strong. Thank you. Thank you. Your combinations were so effective tonight. What enabled that? Um, just my work in the gym. Um, I felt I felt a little off, like my timing was a little off. But I knew I was gonna catch on later on in the rounds. So um, you know, I just kept working. I kept uh, throwing punches, and and then sometimes I was being overpatient, and then I was like just throwing punches instead of just picking my shots. But I think you know that was due to the to the long layoff, and I was you know super excited to get back in the ring, and I was trying to push the pace more than I needed to. Looked like you got caught in the sixth round. Your mouthpiece went out. You turned away, and then you took a couple of shots. What happened there? Um, well, I thought I thought the ref had said stop, so I stopped. 
and then, and then you still hit me with like three or four shots. So, you know, that's my fault. That was a rookie mistake on myself. You know, you're supposed to protect yourself at all times, and I didn't do that at all. Were you out on your feet for a moment or two there? Uh, no, I wasn't out on my feet. I was. I turned and looked at my mouthpiece, and then he hit me, and I was like, oh, shit. Well, it, it, they just kept hitting me. I was like, oh, damn. And then when I kept, when I tried to put my hands up, he had stopped anyway because the ref had jumped in. So it was, it was all right. How is it that you have managed to become a better fighter through all of the adversity, through the car accident, through the eye? How is it that you've improved? Um, just I believe, I believe in you know you gonna go through trials and tribulations. You know I went through a lot of trials. You know I got tested, and you know I passed the test due to you know just my upbringing, my mother, my father always you know telling me not to quit, not to give up, and just believing in myself and my family, and not wanting to prove them wrong and know I could come back. So I was like, man, why why would I just quit now? And I could come back and I could still be at my best. I just gotta train hard, stay focused listen to my coach and you know just stay out the way what's next oh well, er everybody know who i want next i want terrence crawford next you're gonna make that happen huh you're gonna make that happen oh definitely that's the fight that i want that's the fight everybody else want like i said i'm gonna get these straps and i'm gonna go over there and take his shit too all right Errol, congratulations. Terrific fight this evening. Thank you. Man down. Strap season. I know what time it is, baby. Terrence, I'm coming for that motherfucking belt. Once in a generation. The time has come. A fight makes history. It's champion versus champion. Before anyone steps in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford. The most anticipated fight of the decade is here. Beat him up. Undefeated, undisputed, unprecedented. Spence versus Crawford for the undisputed world title, Saturday, July 29th, live on pay-per-view.